Well, hello everyone. Happy Friday and welcome to another live Blanc Air Q&A. My name is Ron Henry and I am your humble host. The way this works, super simple. You drop your questions down in the chat and I work through them in the order that they come in. Sometimes I have the answer, sometimes I don't, but either way, we have an awesome time talking about turf grass. If you guys happen to be new to the live stream, also new to the YouTube channel, first of all, I want to give you guys a special welcome. Always awesome having uh, new new people come in and ask questions. Tonight, you know, it's it's always, um, it's open form as far as any questions you want to ask. Uh, but initially, I'd like to really focus on questions around top dressing, around lawn leveling, since this tis, since it is the season for that type of work. So uh, let's get into it. Let's see who we have in the live stream tonight. I see Papa Moslow, I see Jerry Espinoza. Let's just get going. So Jerry Espinoza has a question about mowing, man. He's roughing me up to begin with. He says, debating between celebration and tip tough. I cut it three eighths, bless your heart. Wow. Um, any help or insight between the two? I'm in Dallas, Fort Worth and I have clay soil and my house faces west, thanks. Okay, so celebration, I don't know uh, as far as mowing celebration that short. I believe Tiff Tuff um, should tolerate being mowed that that um, that low without any issue. Uh, so between those two, even though I'm a bigger fan of celebration by the way it looks, I'd, I'd lean towards Tiff Tuff if you really think you're gonna be able to maintain mowing at three eighths all season. That's that's a big challenge, that's a lot. That's, that's, that's a, that's, we'll, we'll see how that, how that works out, Jeremy. I mean, let me know. Uh, how long you're able to maintain that for because it takes a, a ton of dedication even with plant growth regulator to maintain a lawn at three eighths the entire season especially now that it's starting to get a little hotter it's going to become more challenging to be able to do that uh, but between those two given that you said three eighths I'd, I'd lean more towards tiff tough i'm sure there's people with celebration that are cutting it that short but i just not, have not come across anyone mowing that low so i would lean more towards tiff tough if you have to if that's something you're definitely going to do Great question. Hopefully that helps. If you have any other questions, let me know. All right, next up is Papa Moslo. This is a great question. He says, debating between celebration, um, no, he says, um, hello, Ron. How many aspirins does it take to recover from leveling? Um, I don't know, Qu quite a few. I I'm more of an Advil guy myself, but uh, but yeah, it's uh, it's a workout. So for those of you guys who know, some of the viewers sent me pictures into this evening and Papa Moslo is no exception. He sent a picture in of showing that he's starting his lawn leveling work. I think it's gonna show up right here. So you see he's got the leveling rake out there and he is working that leveling mix in, doing a great job if I must say so myself. Plenty of grass blades exposed. I like it. I like it. It's a ton of work, Papa Moslo, but as you know all too well, it's totally worth the effort. It's totally worth the effort. Uh, I, you know, it's the thing is, for me, the pain doesn't really start the day after. It's two days later is when you really feel it, mainly in your legs. So eh, it'll pass. And then your lawn will look awesome, and you'll you know you'll you'll know that it was all worth worth doing. I wouldn't sweat it too much. Good stuff, good stuff. All right, next up is Heckler's uh, 2020, 2002 says, "Hey Ron, I think you've covered this on the live before, but I'd like to ask again. I've got Poa in my Saint Augustine, but I'm not sure what's the best approach. I'm afraid of using Image. Yeah, so Poa this time of year really should be dying off as it gets hotter. It's gonna it's it's it will go away on its own." Um, Heckler's uh, t uh, 2002. So really, if you if you want the cheapest approach, just be patient. But as far as what you can use for POA, um, ain't St. Augustine, you're saying, no, I don't want to be patient. I want to spray it out. I want to get it gone. Um, I would go with Certainty. Certainty is a great product. Um, it's, you know, as far as temperature restrictions, you can spray it um, in warmer temperatures without it dinging the, dinging the lawn. And it's devastating against POA. Does a really, really good job against POA. So if you want to see what I'm talking about, I'll show you real quick here. We'll go to the golf course lawn store and go to shop and weed killer. And on the top shelf is certainty. So if you already have surfactant and marker dye, then you don't need either one of these. Uh, but if, but I'd, I'd highly recommend using a surfactant with it. Marker dye is kind of optional depending on, you know, how good you are remembering where you sprayed and where you haven't sprayed. But if you want to you know, go full tilt and make sure you have everything you need, uh, certainty, the marker dye and the surfactant is what I would use. And it's, it's, it's going to absolutely get rid of the PO. But again, Given that temps are getting warmer, uh, you know, some would even say hot, that POA should, uh, not should, it will be dying off here fairly soon. So it's kind of your call. I mean, certainty is also great for other um, problems in warm season grass as well. So like it's, it, against sedges, it's an excellent, excellent product. So if you don't have any and you just want to have a great product, in my opinion, one of the best products for sedges and for Kalinga in warm season turf anyway, uh, certainty is a great choice. So uh, your call totally, whether you want to wait or not, uh, if you want the POA gone, 
then go and pick you up a bottle at the Golf Course Lawn Store. We have it in stock and shipping now. So hope that helps. And uh, let me know if you need anything else. Off the X is next. He says, um, hello from the natural state. What's going on off the X? What is the natural state? Which state has, which state is called the natural state? I don't, I don't know. I should know that. I don't, I don't know which one is the natural state. I'll have to look it up. All right, next up is Obadiah. Sir, I'm going to try my best not to butcher your last name. Obadiah Camerling. I think I did it. He says, I live in central Texas. Is it too late in the season to use the Celsius and certainty combination? I have a mixture of weeds and I don't want to injure my Bermuda lawn. Absolutely not, Obadiah. So the thing, the reason why I went with uh, certainty and Celsius last year, if you look at when that video was released, it was late July, early August. So I, I picked, I tested a, a couple of different herbicide combinations last year and certainty Celsius was the one that I, I settled on to actually make the content on. Because if you guys notice on my on channel, I mean, I have videos on fungicides, insecticides, but as far as videos on herbicides, or at least on the professional grade herbicides, there's really not that many, especially compared to other YouTubers. So when I put together something that I wanted to, um, to say, you know, if you have warm season grass and you want a combination that is going to take care of most of the common problems, this is what I would recommend. And, the, and specifically, the reason why I chose those two is because you can spray them as temperatures get warmer. Um, if you look at that video again, um, temps were in the, in the 90s, um, at the time when I was making that video last year in July, and there was no damage to the turf, no discoloration, no no issues at all, and it worked very, very well. So to answer your question, yes, the Celsius Certainty Combo you can spray, especially now, it's not even really that hot as yet. Uh, so uh, yeah, that's 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 literally a, a big part of why I, I chose that, because here's the thing, at, at this time of year already, certain parts of the country, I'm getting emails from people that have had, that are spraying their lawns, which is spectricide, which that you are not supposed to spray uh, when temps are over 90 degrees. And um, I'm getting pictures from people already with them injuring their lawns with that with that product. Now, again, here's the thing. Any any herbicide is going to stress the turf some, and it has the potential to do some temporary um, discoloration. But as far as you know, permanent damage, I mean, none of them are, unless you go crazy on the application rate, are likely to do anything to, to permanently damage the lawn, especially Bermuda. So, but if you want, again, what I would use, what I use on my lawn, what I use on my neighbor's lawn, um, and what you can use as temps get warmer, like to, for all the concerns that you've mentioned, Celsius Certainty is exactly uh, what I would go with. And again, we have it on the Golf Course Lawn Store. If you go to the Weed Killer section, if you don't have either of them, there's a kit that we have that has Celsius Certainty, uh, Surfactant, and Marker Dye, and it saves you a couple of dollars. There's not a ton in, in those, so I can't take too much off, but it saves you some, and it saves you from having to add a bunch of stuff to the cart. So... Hope that helps. If you need anything else, let me know. Great question. And again, yes, you can use those. That's specifically why I chose that combination to make the content on. Next up is Mr. Robert Rainey. He says, good evening, everyone. How's it going, Robert? Hopefully you're doing well. Hopefully the lawn is doing well. I know we've been going back and forth on some things and hopefully it's, it's beginning to recover nicely. We need some water, guys. We haven't had any rain. Remember when it was raining all the time a couple of months ago and we were like, oh, we want it to get warmer. We want the heat to get here. Well, now it's here and now there's no rain. And we need some rain, but I, I got to tell you, before I go on to the next question, I'll show you guys really quick that Hydra Chain and the Miramichi Green, uh, you know, biosimilants are doing their thing because the lawn has not gotten any rain like you guys know in Georgia. We haven't had any rain here at all, and the color is still holding on fairly well. So if you've not gotten Hydra Chain, consider getting that. It the stuff does work, <laughs> and it, it does help for situations, especially like what we're experiencing now. But we are supposed to get some rain this weekend, so we'll see if that actually ends up happening. All right, next up, actually, before I do that, let me go down and get a super chat. Got to make sure I take care of those first. I'm trying to work through questions faster tonight so we don't go all the way till midnight tonight like we did last week. All right, first up is Ben Raham. Super chat received. He says, Ron, still working on my mystery weed. Maybe my emails did not go through. Well, creeping bent over power Bermuda. Can't kill the stuff with certainty, Celsius combo or conchloric. It keeps coming on strong like a carpet. I'll have to look for your for your email, Ben. Um, hmm. So it's bent grass, but it's so you're saying that um that quinchloric is not injuring the bent grass? Huh. Because it's I mean, it's it's labeled to do that. I mean, are you have you tried it with um like um like a methylated seed oil, like an MSO? That should help. I mean, that that should um help it injure the uh the you know the the bent grass in your lawn unless you've got some other variant of bent grass but i mean like creeping bent grass can chloric is labeled to cause injury to it right especially at the higher the higher application rates um if you don't mind if you don't mind because i get a ton of email if you don't mind like just take the what's in your scent box 
and just forward it to me so it'll be at the top of my inbox and I will look at it tonight when I get off the live stream. Um, you know, I'll, I'll try and answer it tonight as well too, given that, you know, we, depending on what time we get done. Um, but yeah, Kim Clark should do the trick. So if you, if you don't mind, send me the email. If you have any pictures of it, that would be good too. And I will get an answer for you. So uh, sorry, I haven't gotten back to you. Not trying to ignore you or anything like that. I just literally, I, I must have missed it. So appreciate the question and I will get you taken care of, sir. It's interesting. Interesting that Kim Clark is not doing it. All right, next up is Mr. David Lee. He says, good evening, everyone. Welcome to the Ron Henry channel. How soon can I start mowing Bermuda sod? Happy Friday, Ron and viewers. So once it's, it's established and rooted in, um, David, look, so I, I give it three weeks, you know, three weeks, four weeks. It really depends on how the sod looks. It's, it's a difficult question to answer. Um, I wouldn't get out there and mow it right away. Um, but if you're watering it, it's establishing, it, it's established um, to where it looks like it's it's beginning to grow and do and do well, uh, you can begin mowing it. The only thing that I would say is don't, like, let's try not to introduce too much stress to it. So don't, you know, get out there and start cutting it at half an inch. Uh, you know, if you want to start mowing it, keep the kata cut a little bit taller. And then as the as the grass fully grows in, roots in, gets established, you can, you can work your way down just out of an abundance of caution. Again, Bermuda, you're highly, 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 highly unlikely to do anything that's going to, that's going to kill it or permanently da damage it, but I would give it a good two, three weeks, let it get rooted in, um, you know, make sure it's, it's kind of got its legs and is, and is doing all right before you start mowing. And even when you start, start a little bit taller and then slowly work your way down, just just to, to ensure that you don't, you know, you don't stress, a, stress brand new turf. But again, it's Bermuda, you're probably not gonna hurt it. Hope that helps, sir. Next up is Mr. Frank Huang, he says, Hey Ron, I bought Primo Max from the golf course Lawnsaur and I'm eager to apply to my Southern Bermuda grass. There's rain in the forecast the next couple of days. Do I wait? Thank you. Not really, not unless you really want to, Frank. So really with Primo, I'm trying to think of the label. I think the label says uh, an hour or two. Um, I always tell people just to be safe, give it four hours. So if you're going to spray, let's say tomorrow morning and it's, we're supposed to get rain in the forecast, say tomorrow evening, you're absolutely fine. You know, once you put the Primo down, once you apply the Primo and it dries, you're, you know, you're, you're good to go. I, you know, it's, yeah. To answer your question, um, I would apply. I would still apply it. I mean, I wouldn't apply it if it's gonna if it's gonna rain like at like 15 minutes after you put the product down. But if you get it down in the morning and it's gonna rain in the evening, it shouldn't be any issue at all. No, no, no problem with that whatsoever. It does not take long to become rain fast. Go ahead and apply it. All right. Next up is Timothy Smith. He says, "Hey, Ron and everyone, thinking of going back to half an inch. Man, you are a glutton for punishment, sir." Mm. Mm -mm -mm. Raised to three quarters after leveling. With the rain coming to Georgia, we hope. <laughs> um, also hoping to put down, put an end to seed heads. Any advice? Already put PGR down. Okay, so as far as going from three quarters an inch to back to half an inch, totally your call. If you have the time to do it, uh, you have the time to mow it, your equipment's sharp, you're gonna make sure, make sure you maintain it, um, and you have the time to do that, then by all means. Half an inch does look pretty awesome. I personally think for my lawn, it stripes better and the color looks a little bit better when it's five eighths like where it is now, uh, but it's totally up to you. You know, you can look at your grass and see what it likes. You know, every lawn's a little bit different. As far as seed heads, you know, if you've got enough nutrient in the lawn, so you know, it's got the macros are there and it's getting enough water, seed heads should be in mo on a healthy lawn, a three week problem, you know, two to three week problem for the most part. Like my lawn really had them, had them bad last week. They're still there, but I can already see they're beginning to taper off. They're beginning to fall off a little bit. Granted, I also did my mid month um, PGR, my primo application, uh, when was it? Last weekend, whenever I, right after I aerated. So that's helping as well too. But, uh, but seed heads, I would not I would not stress too much about that. I mean, if you're using plant growth regulator and you're meeting all the other things that I've, I've, I've spoken about, Timothy, they're going to go away. You know, it's just a thing we have to go through. It's a normal thing, total natural thing. The grass is supposed to do it. And you're doing all the right things to, to limit it as much as possible. Like using PGR is one of the things you can do. And uh, yeah, I think that's pretty much it. No other advice I'd give you other than if you are going to uh, put down your, your plant growth regulator, you're going to apply it. You know, make sure you mix a little bit of liquid fern in with it. That's really good for preventing any tip burn or any, uh, you know, uh, discoloration. And if you want, if you're at all worried, because you said you top dress, I think you said, right? Um, yeah, after leveling. So if you want to go a little bit light on the first app, just to be just to be a little bit kinder to the grass, you can absolutely do that. You know, um, what I've been doing is 0 0.20 right at, actually just a little bit under, but right at 0 0.20 every couple of weeks. And the grass has been tolerating that really well. So you guys saw the lawn, the video of the lawn there a second ago. That's what I've been doing every couple of weeks. So far it's been tolerating that fairly well. So 
I'm gonna do another app at the end of the month, another app in the middle of June. And if overall I see the grass still looks good, no discoloration, then I'll say approve, go for it. On my lawn, that seems to work well. But again, um, I am reducing the rate. I'm not applying full rate twice a month. I'm cutting the rate in half. So I can get away with you know, 0 0.38, 0 0.4 on my lawn. So 0.2 every couple of weeks seems to be working well so far. So we'll see. You guys will know. You guys will know. Follow the YouTube stories. You'll be, you'll be able to see what happens to Lon as I get up there and I mow it and do everything else. All right, next up is Mr. Robert Wallace. He says, happy Friday, everyone. Just got my Yard Mastery Backpack Sprayer. Nice. Good choice, sir. Very nice. Uh, the battery's on charge. Can't wait to use it. Very, very cool, Robert. That's awesome. It's a great sprayer. Not inexpensive, but as far as one that you will buy and likely not replace anytime soon, that's the one to get. So... I know there's, uh, for some reason, guys, there's, there, you guys are not going to believe this, but if you look at the comments on the Yard Mastery Sprayer, the look at that video I did, there's a lot of, um, how can we say this? People are very passionate about what they consider to be the best sprayer, right? And really, I, like, I go back to what I said last week and the week before that and the week before that and the week before that. It is very much the Indian, not the Arrow. It doesn't really matter which sprayer you use. The Yard Mastery Sprayer is, in my opinion, great value for money. You're concerned you get everything with it, but use whatever you want to use. You made a good choice, Robert. I love it a ton. Um, you know, I, I hardly ever use my flow zone anymore now that I have the yard mastery. All right, next up, and actually, you know what? I didn't put Ben as the show sponsor. Let me do that really quick because I didn't. Um, he's going to get me. Ben Raham's going to be like, hey, man, you didn't answer my question and I'm not the show sponsor, right? All right, so Ben, your name in lights. There you go. All right, next up is Mr. L. Actually, no, the next up is, is, uh, is Botros Marzuk. He says, how long should I wait after aeration to top dress? What first should I use before and after? Thank you. All right, so, so after aeration to top dress, um, I've done it within an hour. So literally, the, the process will be, if you're, if you're really going full tilt, like what I did in the video last year, you will aerate the lawn, and right after that, you'll top dress the lawn, like on the same day. If you pay a service, Botros to come out and do it for you, that's what they're going to do. Like if you um, hire um, like Sandman or Level Lawns or any of these guys to come out and top dress your lawn, that is literally what they're going to do. They're going to come out first. They're going to aerate the lawn. They're going to put down a fertilizer and then they're going to top dress. And it's going to be like one like one thing after the next. You know, in, in my lawn, they can do in about uh, two and a half, three hours. It's a little bit less than that. So they're really fast. So, uh, so yes, I would not, there's no, I would not wait. I would aerate and then top dress right after, if you've got the materials and the time to be able to do that. If you don't have the top dressing mix and you say you aerate this weekend and you want to top dress the following weekend, that's fine too. But putting them as close together as possible is what I'd recommend if you're planning to do that. Uh, great question. As far as fertilizer, really, uh, you know, your soil test results is really going to tell you the best fertilizer that you should be using um, that, that best fits your, your soil, what was your soil needs. But if you're saying, hey, I just want something to put down during the top dressing, just something to give the lawn a little kicker to, to get it going, just a, a starter fert, you know, any starter fert will work fine. Um, you know, a flagship, the, the triple 12, either of those will work. I would tell you Humic Max, but it is sold out. As I told you guys, it would be, so it's sold out. Um, we'll have to see about getting some more of that, but I can't tell you when that's going to happen. Um, but yeah, so, you know, just go go here. Go, I mean, if you have, unless you have a, a fert that you already have or you like, what I would say is go to the golf course lawn store, go to the fertilizer section. And then if you just, if you don't really care, like if you haven't gotten a soil test and you just want something to put down just to that's that overall is going to fit most lawns, just a starter fert is a great, a great option. This right here, the triple 12, you know, to apply it at the rate they say, you can be putting down eh, a little under half a pound of nitrogen um, and you're not going to, not going to hurt anything. That is, that is what I would do that. Or if you are, if you are using flagship, you can use that as well too. Either one of those will work well. Hope that helps. We got a super chat. Let me run down here and grab it. Looks like it is from, who is it from? Mr. Merrill Williams. What's going on, Merrill? Thank you so much, sir. Appreciate super that. Perceived. It says, happy Friday, Ron and everyone. Ron, can I water my grass more if our area is in drought? Um, Columbus hasn't um, had rain in 20 days. Thanks. Uh, yes, um, Merrill. So yeah, so yeah it, it, you can increase your watering because we haven't had any rain for a period of time. Uh, to your to your point, and if you are you know you know you don't want the grass to get to the point where it is um, beginning to dry out, beginning to discolor, beginning to um, you know I wouldn't necessarily go into dormancy, but just beginning to discolor really badly because uh, lack of water. So uh, yes, uh, if you want to water more, you absolutely 
um, can and should. I have increased my watering a bit this past week, the last 10 days or so, because we haven't had any rain. So there's no, uh, yeah, no issue with doing that. Uh, no doing, doing that at all. Again, an inch of water or so per week is what Bermuda really needs. But if you want to do a little bit more than that, given that the temperatures we've been seeing and that it's going to evaporate very quickly, then that is fine uh, too. That will work just fine too. And thank you, sir, for the generous super chat. You are now the show sponsor of the evening. So I appreciate that. Let me go and find out where I was. In the meantime, I'm not sure if LG, LG's here, but he can have his Tango Bolero while I find where I left off. All right. Okay, so it's LG's in the house. Found my spot. He says, hey, Ron, what's going on, sir? Hope you're doing well. He says, I missed a spot. So yeah, so what they're talking about, guys, is in the intro when I was doing my whip turns, because I was trying to be like you, Mr. Cool, real mower guy. In the morning when I was real mowing, uh, I, there's a spot, like, because it's hard to see. But where the camera is, right where I'm turning, the lawn falls off there. Literally, it, it's like the lawn, it's a, it's a pretty steep crest that falls off to like to the neighbor's lawns. So I was turning right there and the I didn't I missed a little spot because I just I just missed a spot, right? Because the lawn falls off a little bit. So unless I get it exactly right, you're gonna see a missed spot. So you got me, David. Good eye. And uh, it's gonna be there until I redo the intro. That's just gonna be a thing. So you can call me out on it. Good catch. All right, next up is Mr. John Williams. He says, hey, Mr. Ron, thanks for your time. I love the live stream to hit the like button, y'all. I did a soil test today and super excited about getting an irrigation system in today. How often should I water? Okay, well, first of all, awesome. Thank you so much for um, being a part of the live stream and for um, you just taking some time out of your Friday evening to hang out. That's awesome. And then uh, good job on getting your soil tested. As far as how much to water, since you got your irrigation system, um, really quickly, Bermuda requires about an inch of water per week, right? So that water can come from a total of all sources. So it could be from rain, it can come from your irrigation. Ideally, you want most of it to come from rain and you're just using your irrigation just to supplement. That's in a perfect world what you'd want uh, to see happen. Um, so with your brand new irrigation system, the, the thing that I would say is, let's say your lawn is flat, right? To where you don't have any issues with runoff, any major slopes or anything crazy, to where your lawn is gonna have an issue with holding water. The way to figure out how long it takes your particular system to put down an inch of water is to go out and get a tuna can or like a shallow um, a shallow baking dish and put it out in the lawn, you know, maybe 20 feet or so away from a, from a sprinkler head and run your irrigation, like run a cycle and then see how long it takes for you to get an inch of water or half an inch of water. If you're doing like two cycles per week, um, you know, in that case, half an inch, see how long it takes your system to put out um, half an inch uh, of water. And that gives you a pretty good idea of you know when you're when you don't, in a week when you don't get rain, how long you need to run that particular zone to be able to put down you know an adequate amount of water on the lawn. Every irrigation system is different because you know it's based on water pressure too. Like I have pretty high water pressure. I think it's like 70, 70 psi. So it's actually it's fairly high. So at least what the plumbers tell me. So I don't need to run the irrigation that long to put out quite a bit of water on my lawn. But your lawn is likely going to be different. You might be higher. Might be lower. So the best way to begin calibrating it is is what I've I've suggested there. Just getting out a, a shallow dish. And um, and working it out that way. I also have a video on watering that I will place in the chat for you. It has um, you know some some tips on how to figure out how much water to put down. Um, some websites you can use to, to speed up the process, and um, also talks about hydrotain, which is something you absolutely should be using because it's going to save the amount. It's going to reduce the amount of water you have to put on the lawn. So the video is sent to you now. You should be good to go. If you need anything else, let me know. I really do appreciate it. Congrats on the new irrigation system. It's pretty exciting, right? All right, next up is Mr. Robert Rainey. He says, already had two thunderstorms pass just south and north of us. So you got you have no luck, Robert, is what I'm hearing. You had one, like, so this is Robert's lawn. The rain goes this way, rain goes that way, right? Wow, that's that's uh, that's pretty that's pretty uh, that's pretty bad, Robert. He says, going on five weeks with no measurable rain. That that stinks. And what you're gonna find, guys, is like irrigation has limits, right? You can run, or let's say irrigation has limits and your budget has limits. So to, to run enough, your irrigation enough to really replace rainwater, it's kind of expensive, right? So we really, really do need rain. Hopefully we get some this weekend. The, the forecast, I think, says rain for the next, oh man, how many days are we talking here? It says rain Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. It says all week next week's supposed to be rain, which we'll see if it actually happens. It says thunderstorms. Let's hope. 
Next up, C Math is in the house. He says, "What's up, Ron? Can sand sold at the box stores be used to level? And would you mix topsoil with it? Thanks." Yeah. So at the big box stores, if they have a coarse sand, like a more of a masonry sand, uh, I would recommend using that. I mean, play sand. There are people that will that will level their lawns with play sand, but I really don't recommend that. You really want to use a coarser a coarser sand to uh, to to level your lawn with. Um, and can you mix it with topsoil? Yes. So I believe that they do, that they, I know they have the, the, the play sand, but I know Home Depot sometimes carries, um, I think it's under the brand Quickrete, but it's not, it's not so quick. I think Quickrete makes it, but it's not obviously not instant concrete or it's not pre-mixed. It's not concrete to just add water to, right? So don't get the concrete. Make sure you're getting the masonry sand. And that is more coarse than the bag that they have that's clear. The clear bag is the um, is the play sand. So you want more coarse sand. And if you get that, yes, you can mix it with topsoil. That's fine for like spot leveling, but I would not do that for your entire lawn. That's gonna be a really expensive way to go because what you're paying um, you know, for that sand, it's just, it's just a lot more expensive than just getting you know, um, a, a yard or so of uh, delivered from like a, a local place that can deliver you know, masonry sand or river sand. So. Uh, hope that helps, C-Math. Yes, you can. Yes, you can mix it as well. But I would reserve that really for only spot top dressing, spot leveling, because it is like I wouldn't do my entire lawn that way. It's a pretty expensive way to go uh, as far as leveling your lawn, uh, buying sand by the bag. All right, next up is Mr. Patrick, not in Georgia, but in Texas, where he says, evening, the yard is stressed and not looking so hot after aerating. Losing confidence, but I will stay the course. It will recover. It will recover, Patrick. I promise. I promise. We haven't had rain. I'm not sure if, if you're in Texas. I'm not sure if you guys have had rain in Texas. We have had none in Georgia. And, uh, you know, the lawns around here are starting to dry out a bit, starting to look a little bit rough. I mean, you know, my lawn, Alex's lawn, they're, they are not as vibrant as they could be, but they're holding on pretty well. So I will tell you that once you start getting some rainfall, it's going to bounce back. Aerating the lawn is a stressor to the, to the turf, as you're seeing, but it's going to bounce back. It's absolutely going to recover. You did not permanently injure your lawn. You didn't permanently damage it. There are more benefits to aerating. There are negatives. You know, it just happened to be that when we did it, like the, the timing around it, this happens we were not getting any rain, right? But hopefully a lot of the rain that, that I'm supposed to be getting this weekend and all of next week, some of that was going to pass through Texas on its way here and you guys will, will uh, get what you need to help the lawn bounce back. It will recover. Even when you want to hurt Bermuda, it's really hard to, so... You, uh, you did the right thing aerating because the only thing worse than aerating in May is aerating in June or July when it's really hot. So glad it's, glad it's done. All right, next up is Charles Taylor. He says, I have some lime green patches in my Bermuda lawn. What could it be? So um, it could be a couple of things. So not enough, um, not enough fertilizer. So like nitrogen deficiency, iron deficiency will cause Bermuda to be a little bit light, can be a little bit um, light colored. Excess water, like watering too much, can cause that. Um, those are the things that really come to mind. Normally, whenever someone sends me a picture and there's like a little patch in their lawn and it's a little bit, it's really, really light green, uh, and I can get them to fess up to it, either they have, um, in a lot of cases, they've been watering way too much. But in, in, in other situations, uh, an iron deficiency and a, and a nitrogen deficiency will cause that as well. So the way to find out if that's your case, Charles is one, you can just go out and get a starter fertilizer and put it down if you want, if you don't, you know, if you just want to just experiment, or you can do what I would recommend, which is to get a soil test. The one I recommend is the one from my soil. These are super easy to use. And within a week of sending you this off, you'll get a nice email from them saying, hey, Charles, here's everything that's great about your soil. And here are things about your soil that could use improving. And here's how you can improve it. And that will help you, um, you know, address that issue with, um, from, from a standpoint of knowledge is, is what I'm saying. So, it's, it's going to be temporary. I mean, once we figure out what it is, as far and it likely could be a nutrient deficiency, you didn't give me any information as far as whether you're fertilizing the lawn as yet, um, it will it will recover. So it's not going to be a permanent thing. It's um, In most cases, it's people that put way too much water on their lawn or uh, you know not enough fertilizer, no iron, no nitrogen, because Bermuda needs that. It's, it's, a, it's a hungry beast. It needs nitrogen to, uh, to go. So hope that helps. If you want to send me pictures of it or if you have any other questions, leave them in the chat below, but you can also email me at um, Ron at Golf Course Lawn, if there's anything else you think I should know to be able to answer your question, but I think that should do it. Next up is Mr. Fairway Bermuda. Daryl's in the house. He says, what's up, Ron? Got down my sand leveling done. Use, I use the r, r 48 inch rake. It's heavy. Dude, you went with a 48 inch? Wow, 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 wow. You, you have to send me a picture of that, and uh, uh, that's I'd like to see that. 
Um, you have to. I want you to send me a picture of you like holding it so I can get perspective of like what it's like because I have which one do I have? I think I have the forty inch. I don't have the, I don't have the smallest one. I have the medium one. So whatever that medium one is, I think it's I think it's forty inch. I believe. Um, and that one is already a pretty good workout. So I can't even imagine going even eight inches wider as far as the leveling rate goes. Your lawn is pretty flat, so you can get away with it. Assuming, you know, you're, you're a pretty strong guy. Uh, as long as you have the strength to be able to actually use it, your lawn is a good example of where a 48 inch rake would make sense because given it's, it's largely flat, there's not any, at least that I've seen, not any serious curves or undulations that were of the rake's gonna have trouble following that. So in your case, I could see, I could see merit for the 48 inch other than it's a serious workout. Send me a picture if you get a chance. I'd like to check out uh, how that uh, how the lawn, how the lawn looks, how everything else uh, turned out. Be very cool. Thanks for letting me know, sir. Hopefully, there's going to be a video on it. Hopefully, you videoed it. You know, because if you guys don't know, Daryl uh, Ferro Bermuda has a YouTube channel, so definitely give him some love and support. He's he just started out, but he's putting out some great content already. All right, next up is Mike Hernandez. And guys, if you're enjoying this so far, I know we're only 30 minutes in. I'm gonna take a sip of my coffee, but if you guys would not mind touching the like button, actually, let me get over here so I can look deeply into your eyes. If you guys would not mind touching that like button ever so gently, I'd really appreciate it. It's a free way to support the channel, gets more people coming here. It means I'm gonna stay on longer, which is a good thing, or maybe not a good thing, depending on your perspective. And it's a free way to support the channel. So if you guys would do that right now, I would really, really appreciate it. Thanks so much. Uh-huh. All right. Mike is up. He says, my lawn is extremely bad shape. How do I know I should kill everything and start over or try to recover what little lawn I have? It depends, um, Mike. If your lawn is Bermuda, I would highly encourage you to try and recover what you have because Bermuda will spread like wildfire once you get rid of the weeds. Once the weeds are, are knocked back, it will fill in and do very, very well. So, I would not be so quick to try and burn down your lawn and start all over, especially if it's a Bermuda lawn. So let's, I'd say let's start with um, getting the weeds in order, kind of like what I, I show here. So you wanna see my, how I'd recommend you go about like, you know, renovating a lawn is go to the golf course lawn store and just click on shop, just click right here. And I've got a little infographic that shows you that thing one I would say is eliminate weeds because weeds are no fun. They make our lawn look ugly. So eliminate weeds, that's what you gotta do first. And then after that, we can assess, do a soil test, Fertilize your lawn according to those to that soil test. And then don't forget your mowing. So really, let's say that your lawn is, you know, a salad bowl. It's got some Bermuda in it, but it's largely weeds. You know, go out and get yourself whatever herbicide you want to use to get rid of that. I recommend Celsius and Certainty. I think it's a really good combination. If you only have broad leaves, just Celsius will work too. Uh, I would recommend doing that. And then three days after applying um, the herbicide, start mowing it. Just start regularly mowing it, get out there Get out there every couple of days. The the weeds are going to begin to die off because the herbicide is gonna kill them. And then as you start mowing, that's going to stimulate you know new growth in the grass. So in your in your lawn. And I'm answering this question as if you have, uh, if you have Bermuda. Um, and that is going to cause the lawn to start filling in. Now, if you have, you know, a lawn, this is your lawn, and it's and you got like a little, like just, just this little tomato down here is the only grass you got and the rest of it's weeds, then yeah. I mean, in that situation, you know, burn it all down, get sod, start over, and, and that's that, that makes sense for a lawn renovation. But if there's grass, especially if it's Bermuda, sprinkled all throughout there, it can usually be salvaged once you get the weeds knocked back and you begin feeding the lawn, begin fertilizing it, begin mowing it normally. You're gonna, you'd be surprised at how quickly a lawn can turn around if you start doing that. Hope that helps. If you have any other questions, let me know. All right, next up is Mr. Papa Mo's Low. He says, when do you know when it's time to mow after leveling? Do you wait until most of the grass is grown through? I have a sacrificial reel for my swordman that I can use. So I tend to, here in the, in the most recent top dressings, um, Papa Mo's Low, I tend to start mowing within a week. So if I, if I, like last year, I top dressed, I finished up on a Saturday and I was mowing Saturday or Sunday. No, it was Saturday. And then I was mowing the following Thursday. This year on the front lawn, it was a little bit longer. So the front lawn, I top dressed um, and I did, I waited till like about 10 days, a little bit over a week before I put the mower on it. So it really depends. You have to look at the grass. I would not say it all has to be 100% grown through. But what I would say is, you know, you have a sacrificial reel, but just for the first mow, raise the height of cut up just a little bit. I mean, I know you don't, if you have a reel, you don't really care about 
you know, you can you can cut it, but I, I would raise it up just a little bit. That's gonna allow the grass to be a little bit taller coming out of the sand. Um, and you're gonna preserve the edge on your reel and bed knife a bit better if you do that. So it's it's a difficult question to answer. You know, if you do a very, very light top dressing, you could be mowing a couple days later. If you go super heavy, it could be weeks. You know what I mean? So it 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 you have to look at the grass and see for yourself. But to answer your question, I would not I would not wait until it's a hundred percent grown through because you're gonna have, you know inch and a half, two inch long at that point. Um, but I would say that, you know, a, a, a week, 10 days, two weeks, depending on, on how heavy you go, um, is when I would start looking into doing that. And the, for the first few mows, raise that high to cut up just a little bit and you should be good to go to town. Is what I'd recommend. A big thing that will help speed that up to um, Papa Mo's load now that we're on the topic of lawn leveling is if you have your leveling rake, and this is for everybody, if you have any questions about top dressing and if you're, or if you're leveling your lawn, once you are done putting the sand down, you, you're basking in the glory of your awesomeness and you're looking at your sand, the lawn all like covered, you know, and it's looking all nice and smooth, your work is not done. Really, if you want the lawn to recover quickly, every day, make time to get out there with a rake and drag it over the lawn. You don't need to get out there and like work it hard and try and, you know, like move the leveling mix around. Literally, you just lay it down on the lawn and just walk and drag it. That, what that's gonna do is it's gonna help the sand to, to work in a little bit better, to settle a little bit faster, and it's gonna allow those grass clippings, or grass blades to, to expose themselves a little bit a little bit sooner. So that's one of the that's one of the hacks you can use to help speed up how um, quickly your lawn recovers from top dressing so you can get there and mow it sooner. So hope that helps Papa Mo's low. From what I saw in the pictures, looking at your pictures here again, this does not look too heavy. Like I would imagine, you know, that's gonna be a week. I wouldn't imagine much more than a week that you're gonna be out there mowing that. You know what I mean? Especially once you get some water on it, it settles. And then every day for a week, you're out there dragging it with the leveling rake. It's gonna be good to go in, in not too much time at all. So great question. Hopefully anyone else that is thinking about leveling their lawn took notes of that because uh, that's an important point of getting out there and being able to use your lawn that much sooner. Next up is Mr. Tim A. Not Tim B, but Tim A where he says, hey Ron, how's it going? I'm doing well, cannot complain. Got some coffee, make, make sure I'm, I'm all fueled up. I got my lemonade, got my coffee. I'm good for the long haul. <laughs> he says, I'm gonna try and top dress my lawn next month. Should I scalp it, dethatch, fertilize, and then top dress? Okay, I don't know what kind of grass you have. You didn't, well, I can look here in your picture. I don't know, I don't know what that is. It looks, looks kind of rye-ish, I don't know. Okay, um, I don't know what kind of grass type you have. If it's Bermuda, what I would say is, you should, you can aerate it. If you want to verticut it to try and thin it out a little bit more, you can do that too. Um, dethatching, I am not a huge fan of dethatching Bermuda. I did it in the in the Swordman video and it worked out okay. I'll tell you, like I, did, I thought I was gonna make a huge mess out of the lawn and following their system where you run the um, the, the, the turf rake um, and then verticut it right afterwards and then mow after that, the lawn looks good when you're done. But I don't know that that unless you've got a lot of thatch in your lawn, a bit you know a lot of thatch built up, um, I don't I would not incorporate that as far as a, a core requirement for your top dressing. What I would say if it were me, if it were me, I would trade out the de the dethatching for aerating. So for so if you want how I would recommend doing it is lower your height of cut. You don't necessarily need to scalp the lawn down to the dirt or anything, but you can lower it a little bit because. To be completely honest, like the lower, a little bit shorter grass is easier to to work the leveling mix in than taller grass. So, if you have Bermuda and let's say you're normally at two inches, if you can get it down to an inch, inch and a quarter, that is going to make your life easier as far as working the leveling mix in. I would then aerate the lawn. That's going to help whatever leveling mix you use or top dressing you use to integrate faster or better with the existing soil. Fertilize and um and and then top dress on top of it. So it would literally be. Um, mow the lawn shorter, aerate, fertilize, and the last thing is to top dress. That is what what I would do. That's how I've done it, and it make, makes the most sense to me. And when I watch people that do it for a living, that's the process that they do. They they aerate, they put down any, if you wanna do essential G or any uh, biostimulants or fertilizer or anything else, that's the time to do that. You wanna do hydrotain, that's the time to do that. Then top dress, and you're good to go. So. Hope that helps, Tim. Dethatching, unless it's something you just have not, you've normally done, I, I don't consider that to be a core requirement as far as prepping a lawn for top dressing. Great question. Next up is Patrick. He's back. He says, going to top dress with carbonized PN and holy cow compost this weekend. Hopefully this will give it some life. Yeah, dude, that's gonna, that's gonna, that's gonna help it. I mean, if you wanna see um, 
you know, the results that just carbonized PN can have on a lawn, you know, go to the golf course lawn store and look at the carbonized PN product. Like in there, there's some pictures of um, the lawn 10 days after being top dressed with carbonized PN, and it does help the lawn recover. It does produce a really nice color. Um, it's it's, it's going to help. But really, Patrick, it's just a time thing. It's, it's time to recover from the aeration, and then it's also getting some rain on the lawn, which you're going to eventually get. It will bounce back. Everything else you're doing is going to help too, like using some, introducing some compost, some carbonized PN. That's not going to hurt either, but it's just, it's a time thing, you know, water, time, and it's, it's going to recover. It's Bermuda. It's not, you're not going to, not going to permanently hurt it. Next up is Mr. John Williams. He says, my dirt seemed really hard. Should I be concerned if I'm starting, I'm starting from bare dirt. My dirt seems really hard. Okay. So I'm trying to show back up here really quick and see what your original question was okay so uh john if your if your soil is really compacted or hard you're a prime example of someone that i would recommend um you know doing an aeration now i'm trying to see here if you have i'm trying i'm not sure i'm not confusing you with someone else so you have a lawn yeah i mean if you're if the if the soil is very compacted and or then you choose your words it's really hard uh aerating is something that i would recommend this time of year uh, you know, if you, now that your irrigation's in, run a, a good irrigation cycle um, once, you know, like I say, the day before you plan to aerate, that is going to make it to where are going to help the tines penetrate deeper. What you'll find sometimes is people that have highly compacted soil and they get out there with an aerator and all it does is it pretty much just tickles the surface. It just kind of bounces along the surface of the lawn because it's so compacted. So really getting a bit of water down prior to that, the day before, the evening before, is going to do a lot for helping you to get the most out of aerating. And that is going to help. That's going to help with compaction. If you can also swing top dressing, that's going to help too. You know what I mean? So as far as helping your lawn hold more water and um, just, you know, just in general reducing issues with compaction, introducing a good top dressing mix, a good, I'm a fan of a 70-30 mix. Uh, is a, is all those are great things. All those are great things uh, to do. Okay, next up is Mr. Jonathan Daza, who just says, hey, Ron, what's going on, Jonathan? Hey, Jonathan, hope, how are you doing well? Hope you're doing well. Actually, I see your other questions, so we'll take that right now, where you say, which sprayer tip would you use between the T-Jet Turbo and the T-Jet Air Induction for um, liquid fertilizer and fungicide application? Thanks. Okay, um, so TJ Turbo, I mean, I know, I know we have the, the Foliar tip. I don't think, I mean, that's, that's the name of it. Um, so what I typically use for Foliar apps, Jonathan, is the 110 degree tip, this guy. I don't know if the actual name for that is the Turbo tip. I've never heard of it referred to that way, but this is the one that I, I, I typically use for, uh, for Foliar apps. Um, if you want, um, and if you can use using fungicide as well, if you want to use something with a slightly larger droplet size for your fungicides, then the air induction tip um, will work too. So either, either one of those can work for foliar apps. The one that I would not use for foliar, um, for liquid fertilizer applications is this guy. So this is the, this is the flood jet, right? This I would not use for liquid fertilizer applications, um, uh, at least unless they're soil based. For, for foliar apps, I would not use this one. And um, as far as a mid ground that will work either way, the air induction tip or this guy here can work for both foliar apps and for you know situations where you want a product that can get down into the soil as well too. So this is kind of a good middle, a good middle ground. So you can use either one. It's your call whether you want to use the foliar tip or the air induction tip for your uh, liquid fert and fungicide applications. Either either one will work just fine. Great question. Okay, next up is Higgy Pop. He says, "Hey Ron, happy weekend. Happy weekend to all." Happy, thanks for coming to hang out, Higgy Pop. I appreciate you having you in the live stream. And as you guys can see, I'm trying to work through the questions a little bit faster tonight so we don't stick out here till midnight. We'll see. You guys will probably keep asking them and I'll be here anyway, right? We shall see. All right, next is, uh, so John, yes, your house is in Savannah, Georgia. All right, cool. Thanks for coming to hang out, John. And then next is uh, Moto Therapy he says, what's stopping me from continuously top dressing uh, once it's down in the grass and no longer uh, visible, stress. So I guess you're asking me, okay, so if the, um, so you top dressed your lawn and it's settled, so the lawn is, I guess what I'm hearing is it's largely recovered, what's preventing you from continuously top dressing? I don't, I'm not sure I understand the question, um, mototherapy. I mean, 
you can do multiple top dresses per season if that's what you want to do. You know what I mean? So if you want to, um, you know, if you want to top dress now and then do it another, again six weeks from now, there's not really um, an issue with doing that. No issue with doing that um, at all. It just it just depends. I guess uh, nothing really, nothing really, other than that most people tend to not want to have their lawns, um, you know, just like constantly in a state of, of having sand on it the entire time. So most of the time people will top dress their lawn and they want to enjoy it. And if they see a few small areas that need a little spot top dressing, they'll go and do that. But as far as just like, keeping the lawn in a constant state of sand on it, uh, yeah, it's a stressor. And then you just, you're not, you don't really, really get to enjoy it. You know what I mean? So I would, I would space it out two to three within a season or growing season for Bermuda is, is very easy to do. Um, but it's, it's really your call depending on what you're trying to accomplish. Okay, so hopefully that helps. Uh, I got Jonathan's question covered. And then next up, we have Ted Patterson. He says, hey, Ron and everyone, I leveled Zoysia last weekend. Congrats for that. He says, low areas are still beached. When I eventually put the reel on it, it's going to be pretty tall and will essentially be scalped again. Thoughts? So like, along the lines of what I said to the, uh, to the, the previous viewer, um, Ted, you know, once the once the lawn starts growing through the sand, you know, I know there are going to be areas that are heavier than others. Um, once it starts growing through any measurable amount, so again, you have zoysia, so it's going to be a little, a little bit slower. But let's say two weeks after you're done top dressing, you know, you can start mowing again. You can start, you can get out there and start mowing the lawn again. Just raise the height of cut up just a little bit, just a touch, to help. Um, you know, to 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 keep the reel out of the sand, which is the big thing that you want. You know, you don't want the reel getting into the um, into the sand, and um, um, you don't want the reel getting in the sand because it's going to um, it's, it's just going to put unnecessary wear and tear on on your your components. So just I would I would just raise the height of cut up. I would not wait for everything to grow through, and then go from there. So hope that helps. Uh, and again, Zoysia, you're probably going to be a bit longer than the seven to ten day for Bermuda, but I would not wait for all of it to completely grow through before I start mowing again, and that's going to help avoid you scalping it. You know what I mean? If you just start taking a little bit off, even though the height of cut is a little bit taller, that's gonna be that's gonna be fine. You know, I wouldn't wait for it to get like two inches and then say, okay, I want to get back down to an inch and take it all off in one in one go. I would not do that. All right, next up is Dalen Krause. And Dalen, I got some pictures to show off of yours. So we'll show that here in a little bit. He says, after top dressing, <laughs> after top dressing, I think it'll be my last time. I'm ready to see what it looks like when it recovers. I wish Super Solid was available here in Oklahoma. Lots of junk in the soil slash sand. Yeah, that's that's the biggest benefit I would say, uh, Dalen, to the um, to the Super Sod uh, or, or, to, or to other leveling mixes other than the Super Sod and why I think it's worth it. Like the hassle factor is very, very low with that product as far as having debris and other garbage in there, right? So, um, and as far as, if you guys want to see what Dalen was, was working with, what he's talking about, so I can make this happen, so here are the different phases of him top dressing. You see, he got a lot of sand. I'm not sure how many yards that is. Maybe, I don't know, was that four or five yards? Maybe, looks, yeah, some, something like that. I'm not sure how many you use there, but that, that's that my guesstimate. So he's got his sand, he's, start, he's starting to get going, got his r, &R rake out. And then you see him taking, breaking it out into piles, which is serious work. Like that's a workout in itself, man. Very, very cool. And then next up, we see he is starting to work it in. It looks like you live right next to a baseball field or something. It looks like a base or a track or something, Dalen. Uh, but it's, it does a really good job working that in. You guys see there how there's grass uh, blades of, um, you know exposed. It's not completely beached, which is nice. And then he's working it in. He dragged it in. That's looking really solid, looking really solid. And then we see that he watered it and it's settling in nicely. So really good job, Dalen. I mean, overall, man, I would, I'd say good job. Job well done. Pound it. Nice, nice work. It's going to, um, it, your, yours is not going to take very long to bounce back at all uh, before you get out there and start mowing it. So if you did it, let's say you finished today, I would imagine like middle of next week, Thursday or so, you're going to be out mowing again. So very, very cool. And yeah, that's just something you have to deal with when you don't have um, a blend whenever, you know, whenever you don't get a leveling mixer where they, they do a lot of work screening it. But it's like anything else, right? Like the Super Sod um, a product or leveling product is very, very good, but it's also more expensive than getting, you know, a sand soil blend from somewhere else. But the thing that you're doing is you're basically, you're basically paying them to ensure that what you get is just what you're paying for, sand and compost, not a bunch of other garbage, 
Whereas for the less the, the less expensive options, um, you know, you're trading your time for money. So it just depends on which way you want to go and which you got available. You know, you got to go, with, you got to work with what you got. And it looks like you did a really good job. The lawn looks great. And you got to send me pictures once it recovers, man. It's looking really solid. Next up is Two Trilla. He says, happy Friday, everyone. Is it just me or is it getting hot? It's not just you. It's really hot. It's it's very, very, very hot today. Uh, you know, I actually went out there with a bucket and spot watered a few areas like um, the, I can't, I mean, I can't really show you guys. Let's see if I can, I might be able to show you to where you can see. Let's see here. So if you look over there out by the rocks, well, let me pause it right now. Okay, so if you see where the rocks are out there, like at the, out in the, the far, the furthest part of the lawn, to the left of them, if you guys look really, really closely, you can see there's a slight amount of discoloration coming in there. That's one of the highest points on the lawn. So water just does not sit there. Even when I run irrigation, it just doesn't, no appreciable amount of water stays there. So I went out there with a bucket and just did some spot, you know, some spot watering to that for that area to, to help it out. And it's, that's just par for the course, man. We haven't had any rain for a while. So just trying to help those, those areas that struggle out a little bit. We should hopefully get some rain here soon though. Hoping for that, hoping for that. All right, next up is Dave Abuel. He says, hey, Ron, I've been looking all over for Arden 15 to buy, but I can't seem to find any. I saw a few sites uh, saying that it was discontinued. Is Arden out of the picture and is something else coming in? Yeah, so Arden 15 is out of the picture from a standpoint of, um, from a standpoint of, I think it is being discontinued. Like I, I, I heard that, I called uh, Hancock Seed and they said, yep, it's going away. And they did say there's gonna be a replacement. I didn't know what, the, they didn't say what the replacement was. What I've been hearing from, what I heard from them and from other viewers is that if you're gonna seed a Bermuda lawn and you want something that's somewhat similar, that that Yukon, Yukon Bermuda is comparable. I've never seen Yukon, I've never tried to grow it, so I don't know. I'm just taking it out based on what they're saying. Um, but the replacement for, um, you know, as far as for um, uh, Arden 15, to my knowledge, has not um, has not been announced yet. Has not been announced yet. So, so there is that. So yeah, I don't I don't have anything to, for you other than to tell you the same thing that Hancock is going to tell you, which is to if you want to see the lawn from scratch or you and you, you want to see this comparable, go with Yukon. I uh, hope that helps. All right, next up is JK. It says, any issues with Turfplex clogging your backpack sprayer? Looking to start a liquid fertilization program? No, I, I haven't. I have not experienced that, uh, JK. I ran Turfplex all last year, and I ran it, not just it. I used like Turfplex along with uh, PGR, with Primo, um, and I also mixed it with, um, let me see if I can show you here. I mixed it with these guys. So with also with Release Zero, and the and Nutri Kelp and also Biospectrum and I can't show you that in a liquid because it's you have to mix it with water to show it's suspended. But at any rate, I didn't even apply Turflex just by itself. I used it along with Plant Growth Regulator and two uh, biostimulants, and I also put a little bit of Nutrizolve in there, a little micronutrient as well. So if anything was going to cause issues with clogging, um, that should have done it. I had I experienced no issues with that. You know, all of last year, no one else that I've spoken to has experienced any issues with uh, with clogging. Uh, and that's using a variety of tips. If you use the air induction tip or use the foliar tip, I've not had any any problems with that. So you should not any see, see any issues with um, with Turfplex causing clogging um, in your, your backpack sprayer. You know, you should be good to go. I did not experience that and I used it all of last year. So hope that helps. It's a great product. It's a really, really good product. It's a really good fertilizer. You will, you will like the results you get with it. It's great. Great all-in-one product, got a little bit of everything in there, you know? All right, next up is Mike Harvey. He says, hey Ron, using a backpack sprayer is hard, LOL. Still trying to get my walking pace right. I sprayed a solar print today, but may have missed some spot. Is 90% coverage good enough? I mean, it's I mean it's better than 50% coverage, right? So it, it's um, it, it's hard to say without, without um, you know, without seeing what you what you did, Mike, you're probably going to be just fine, though. You're probably going to be just fine. It's one of those things you will get better at as you do it more. Like if you got a backpack sprayer, the first time you used it, it's going to be you know, even after you're doing the calibration, um, it's it's there's still a learning process, right? And that's why I recommend people that they calibrate their sprayer with just water in it first because there's no risk to the lawn, no risk to over or under applying anything if you do it that way. And that's going to help you get your your walking pace down, get everything going, and it's just going to it's going to help you get a better result. But I would not don't give up 
Like there's so much, there's so many benefits to having a liquids or having liquids in your lawn care program. Like from a standpoint of like PGR, like a celeprin, like what you're talking about, um, pre-emergence in general, there's a, you can mix and match and you can combine things. Like what I was just telling the, uh, the other viewer, like I'm able to do a lot of different products all at one time because I use liquids. So just keep working on it. It's going to get better. As you do it more and more, you're going to find, you're going to find your stride, your walking pace. And you can always, you know, you can always adjust the mixture um, to kind of, to suit your walking pace too. So if you're someone that walks really, really quickly, uh, you know, you might be able um, to go up in rate a little bit and get more coverage out of, out of the, you know, out of your sprayer. So the, 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 um, the guidance I give as far as one gallon over four, th four one gallon over a thousand square feet is good advice. It's a good dilution factor, a uh, good dilution ratio to where you're not going to, it, it, it reduces the chance of you over applying and damaging the lawn. Um, but once you get better at doing it, you know, you can go down to three quarters of a, of a, of a gallon. There's some people that, that I, that I speak with that use like half a gallon per thousand square feet. So it's really, but that is when you really are on your game and you, you know, you, you know exactly what you're doing. Um, so, but all I can tell you, keep working on it. It's going to get better. You didn't, doesn't sound like you damaged the lawn. You sound like you did a good job. 90% is better than, you know, than a lot less than that. So I'm sure you're going to be just fine and you're going to get good results. So good stuff. Keep working at it. All right. Next is Dalen. He's back. Dalen Krause. He says, wife uh, watching me while I was <laughs> moving, moving dirt. I don't know uh, if that looks like it's worth it. Uh, they will just never understand. <laughs> okay. She, she said, I don't know what, 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 if that looks like it's worth it. Uh, she, she'll she see once it grows in, which it's, you know, you didn't go crazy heavy, Dale. And assuming that with these pictures that I'm looking at here are, you know, within a few days of each other, you didn't go too heavy at all. It's already bouncing back nicely. And look at it. I mean, it, Oklahoma is a pretty flat state and that playground that the kids have is going to be really sweet, you know, given all the, all the work you put in there to level that out. So yeah, I mean, she might not get it right now, but she will like the way it looks once it's fully recovered. So Good stuff. Good job. Good job. All right. Next is Antoine or Anton Smalls. He says that makes two of us. Thanks for asking Poa in St. Augustine. So hopefully you saw the, uh, the response that I gave um, Anton. Uh, again, Poa is, go is going to die off. It's temps get warmer, get hotter. Poa is going to die off just on its own because it does not like um, hotter temperatures. It's a cool season grass or weed in our case. We don't want it. Um, but if you want to get rid of it, certainty will absolutely do it. And again, to, I, I was telling the other viewers, certainty is also great for sedges, for Kalinga, that kind of thing. So it's not like you're buying this product just for taking care of POA. It's, it's useful for, for sedges as well. So uh, if you absolutely got to get rid of it and you don't want to wait, then you can use certainty, but it's, it's, uh, kind of, it's your call. Your call, which way you want to go. All right. Heckers, uh, says, awesome. Thanks, Ron. You're very, very welcome, sir. No problem at all. Thanks for asking the question. And next, let's see what we have here. John Williams says, I'm a, if I'm about to bring in some dirt, what should I, a, what should I ask them to mix like? Um, I missed your question. What should I ask them to mix? Um, or should I ask for top dressing? I need about four yards. Okay. Uh, so if you want, okay, so if you are bringing in four yards and if they will mix it for you, if they're not going to mix it for you, what you could say is bring me three yards of sand and one yard of screen top soil or, or one yard of screen compost. That's like 75, 25, close enough. And uh, then you can mix them. Ideally, hopefully you can get them to mix it for you because mixing four yards of sand with, uh, with a yard of topsoil is a lot of work. That's a lot of work to do manually yourself. So if they can do that for you, John, I'd, I'd ask. I'd ask several times and see if they're willing to do it. Um, but if you're doing it yourself, again, if you need four yards of material total, just ask for three sand, one of the uh, of the compost, and uh, then you're good to go. That should, you know, that's going to give you 75, 25 mix. Again, close enough. Close enough. All right. Uh, Jared Alwyn says, Arkansas. What's going on, Jared? Thanks for, thanks for coming to represent for Arkansas. You and the lawn tools. I think the lawn tools are in Arkansas, too. So I see their lawns are starting to pick up, too. So which is, uh, it's cool to see some representation from further north. Right. All right. So next up is Lavendi. He says some animal, possibly an armadillo, was was digging up the backyard on spots. Should I put down bifin to kill whatever insects uh, uh, may be there? I mean, you can, but I mean, they don't. You know, I, I, 
I mean, I wouldn't unless you actually know there's a there's an if there's a, unless you know there's there's something you're trying to target. I wouldn't just go out there and just indiscriminately just spray insecticide on your lawn. You know, I'm not really a huge fan of doing that Lavendi. Like if you've not done like a preventative insecticide, like a celeprin to keep, you know, army worms and grubs out of your lawn, like you can do that. But as far as going out there and just blanketing the lawn with bifrin, um, bifenthrin, I wouldn't, I wouldn't do that. I wouldn't, you know, I might find out some way to chase the armadillos off or find out if there's some kind of repellent for them or something like that. But I'm not really a fan of going out and just, um, you know, blasting along with insecticides just for no, you know, for no good reason, especially since we don't know what they were, what they were going after. So maybe what you can do is next time you catch them out there, run, like go out and chase them off and see if you see, you can see, like you look down and see what they're, what they were trying to, 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 to find, you know? And then if it's something like, if it's like a grub, then yeah, then go and get a celeprin and put that down and knock them out. And perhaps that, that may help reduce your armadillo problem a little bit. So hope that helps. All right, next is Frank Huang. He says, hey Ron, when I spray Celsius Uncertainty on my Southern Bermuda, it killed the weed, but also turned the Bermuda yellow. Did I spray too much? Thank you. Uh, it depends on the rates that you used, um, Frank. So if you used, if you applied it at a couple of things, um, it could be the rate you used, it could be um, the, more than likely the, than the rate, it could also be how you applied it. So if you went too heavy, um, that can cause discoloration. And um, I'm trying to think what else. Uh, depending on how much surfactant you use, that can also cause some stress to the lawn as far as getting some, some mild discoloration. The big thing you gotta realize, guys, whenever you are spraying really any herbicide, and this, and this really applies to uh, Spectricide from the stuff at Home Depot all the way up to the, the more professional grade herbicides like Celsius and Certainty. If the Mysole test kit is a weed, right? And we are spraying this, when you, when you make a pass on it, even though I know it's tempting to do it, I know it's tempting to do it, and I show this in the video, when you make a pass at the rate, you know, when you make a pass over it, you're gonna just make one pass like this, just one, one pass, that's it, just one. If you do this, like even that, that's two applications. If you do this, that's three applications. And not only are you putting more herbicide on the weed, you're also putting more herbicide on the surrounding grass, which can stress it and cause it to be discolored. You gotta remember, like all herbicides are stressors for um, for grass. Even though that says, you know, it's safe for Bermuda, it just means it's not gonna kill it. It's not, it's not designed to kill. It's not designed to specifically target Bermuda. But if you get out there and you go, you know, the weed, this is a weed and we go one, two, three, four, you know, you, just, you try and soak it all kinds of ways. This area is going to get discolored. Really, you know, get a, you know, mix it per the, per the label rate and just one medium speed pass, just wet the leaf and just move on. Even if it looks like there's some areas and some parts of it that didn't get fully covered, it's gonna be just fine. It's gonna be enough to be able to, to either completely kill the weed or whenever you mow it, it's not gonna grow back. So I, I'm leaning towards uh, application, uh, Frank, because I use that, that combination, um, I've used that combination on my lawn. I've used it on, on a couple other lawns. I did my neighbor a couple of weeks ago, but then again, it wasn't, it wasn't you know, really, really hot yet. And he didn't get any discoloration or anything like that uh, from doing it. So I would say, it, I, I would lean towards application the way you applied it, assuming that you followed label rates. Again, the, the, the rates, as long as you, you don't need to go heavy, kind of like with PGR, you don't need to go any heavier than that. I actually show you guys on that video exactly how much of, of Celsius I recommend using, and that's not even really the high rate. So hope that helps. The Bermuda is gonna recover from it, even if it's if it's yellow uh, right now, it's gonna bounce back. So don't sweat it. You do not do any permanent damage to it. You just maybe dinged it a little bit, but it should, uh, it should come back um, from that. What would be interesting, Frank, if you're still here, uh, if you're still in the live stream, were there certain areas that turned yellow or did the entire lawn turn yellow? It'd be interesting to find out on, on that because if certain areas, then that points towards application. If the entire lawn got discolored, then that's when I would lean towards perhaps the rate was not exactly what we needed it to be. So hope that helps. Uh, and you know, again, if you don't mind, if you're still in the live stream, jet, drop that drop in there. Like you know, if it was just part, small areas or the entire lawn. All right, next up is John Williams. He says, my centipede looks like it doesn't like the heat. Should I water more? Um, should I water more? Should that take care of it? And can I apply a level mix to it? So your centipede does not like heat. All, you know, most grass doesn't really care for it, John. If you want to water a bit more, you can. I am a fan, in addition to watering, I'm a fan this time of year of uh, using a product called Hydrotain. It really does help 
with the grass not uh, not suffering too much from heat stress, assuming you apply it properly and you get it, especially if you get it down prior to like the conditions we have now. So, you know, yes, you can water more, but I'd also get out there and put some hydrotain down as well if you've not done that as yet. As far as your leveling mix, uh, yeah, I mean, if you wanna, here's what I would say. If you can time it, and I know this is kind of difficult to do, but if you already have it delivered, so you've already got it on your, on your driveway, if you can time it to where you put the leveling mix down and there's rain a couple days later in the forecast, that would be ideal because then you know, you're gonna do the, you're gonna do your top dressing job and then the rain's gonna come. It's gonna really help water it in. The the and that's gonna help speed up uh, the recovery of it. The big thing when it comes to leveling a lawn is how much stress you're introducing to the grass is a lot of that is really based on how heavy you go. If you get out there and you beach the entire lawn to where it's just there's only a few little grass blades poking through here and there, yeah, you're gonna have a problem. It's gonna you know even when the temps aren't high, you're gonna have. Um, you're introducing a lot of stress to the lawns. If you look at like what Dalen did here, like if I can find the picture, not that one, not that one. Uh, that's a good one. But this one, like that's a, like what you're looking at here, this is a great example of how to do that. Because I don't know if he's watered it as yet. Even if he has, you see that there's a nice blend of like the amount of sand showing up and the amount of grass that is still exposed even after top dressing. And this is, keep in mind, this is still like day one. This is like right after he did it. The next day when he goes out there with his leveling rake and just drags the lawn, it's going to settle even more and the grass blades are going to be exposed even more. So the thing I would tell you, John, is, is especially this time of year, if you're going to go out and you're going to top dress, go light, like a quarter inch, half an inch. Do not completely submerge the lawn in sand. I know some people tell you to do that. Um, and again, for Bermuda, you absolutely can do that and it, you're not going to kill it, but but it's going to, you're, you're, you're unnecessarily stressing the turf. And if you get like a thunderstorm and a lot of rain, it's going to make a big mess. So I would say yes to your question. Water a bit more if you want. Um, and when you top dress, go light, quarter inch to half an inch. Along the lines of what Dalen did is what I would recommend. That's that's exactly how I would go about doing it. Great question. Next is Fernando uh, Perez. He says, I have a lot of weeds uh, with thorns. What's the best weed killer and process to get rid of them here in South uh, Texas? So you suddenly have some stickers. Uh, so there's a lot, there's a couple different herbicides that will kill those Fernando. I'm not sure what kind of grass you have. You didn't say, but I'm going to assume that it's Bermuda or, um, or St. Augustine. There's a couple different herbicides that'll do that. Most, any, any three-way, like, like a, like a triad will, will take care of that. Uh, but if you want something that's going to, you know, has a much less, have, a, has a less chance of stressing the turf of, of discoloring it, going with a product like Celsius is what I would recommend. Uh, so it just, it just really depends. Celsius is a bit more expensive, but it's, it's more expensive for a reason. It's a better, in my opinion, it's a better product, right? Like if I could only have, if I could only have one herbicide for, for my, for my lawn, it would be Celsius. If I could have two herbicides, it would be Celsius and then certainty as far as post-emergence. And then for pre-emergence, if I could only have one and money were no object, then it'd probably be spectacle flow. But in your case, um, it, it's, there's a couple different products you can use for that. Celsius is what I would recommend. We carry it on the golf course lawn store. Uh, you know, if you decide to go that route, there's a video in the description in the description <clears throat> that will show you how to mix it or how I recommend mixing it, how I do it and I get good results with it. It's not the only way to do it. Um, you can that you can follow. And that is that is what I would do. So hopefully that helps. Tons of different options for, for, for getting rid of that that particular weed. They're not really hard to get rid of, but Celsius is what I would is what I would go with. Celsius is what I would go with. I think Robert was dealing with with those. Robert Rainey was dealing with those in his lawn with stickers, and he used uh, Celsius, the Celsius Certainty combination, and that that did a really good job getting rid of it. So hope that helps, sir. And again, that is for warm season grass. The only grass that you should not apply that on for warm season that's warm season is Bahia. It's safe for everything else, but not not for Bahia grass, and obviously not for cool season grass. So, I mean, being in South Texas, you probably don't have cool season grass, but I got to say that just to just to make sure that you don't you know you don't ruin your lawn if you happen to be the person in South Texas with a rye grass lawn or something. All right, next is uh, Brick Rehab. He says, "Happy Friday, Ron." <clears throat> Sent a picture of a weed I've been battling. Thoughts? I'll have to look it up once I get off the live stream. Um, uh, Brick Rehab. I don't. I can't see it here now. I think actually this might be you. I see the actually I see the picture. Yeah, I have, I have to look at that. Give me yeah. Let, let me look at let me look let me let me get back to you after the live stream. I got your I got your 
I have the um the picture up here and the weed up here. Um, and I will I'll, I'll I'll give it a good look here, and I'll get back to you after the show if that's if you're good with that. But I got it; it's already open, so I'm not gonna miss it. Not gonna miss it. We're good to go. All right. Okay. Next is Jamar um, McKinney. He says this process worked perfectly. I'm, he says I I'm in the process of scalping my lawn in preparation for some leveling tomorrow. Listen in, use, listening using uh, Bluetooth headphones. LOL. So the plan is to scalp, spray the carbon kit, and then level with sand. That will work. That'll work, Jamar. That will absolutely work. If you can work an aeration in there too, I know I'm asking for a lot. That would be even better, but not strictly necessary. So if you can, if you got an aerator, that would be a great time to do it before top dressing. But again, not super, super, super necessary. Not, it's not like you're committing some cardinal sin if you don't aerate the lawn prior to top dressing. But it is a good idea. Next is Rob G. He says, hey, Ron, is it true you should water Bermuda more frequently in sand than clay? I noticed when summer hits in the south, my lawn struggles watering one time per week. So is it true you should water more um, in sand than clay? Um, yeah, because the, the water, I mean, assuming you have clay soil that actually is absorbing the water, like the sand tends to, ten, water tends to move through sand faster or easier than it does through a clay soil. So what you might want to try, Rob, is if um, watering once per week heavily, like you're doing, let's say, I don't know how much water you're putting down once a week, but let's say you're putting down an inch of water one time per week, which would be pretty impressive if you were doing that. Instead of doing only one watering per week, try spacing it out into two waterings. Like do two waterings and just cut the, the cycle in half. So you're putting down pretty much the same amount of water overall, but you're just breaking up into, into multiple cycles and see um, how that does. See if that helps helps things. You know, I had a viewer that uh, that emailed me saying, hey, you know, I have a lawn that I um, I got really, I get really, really good success watering my lawn every other day for, I think he said seven minutes, seven minutes a day, every other day. And he says, am I doing anything wrong? I said, do you have any like fungus problems? Or I mean, he says, no. I said, you have a water bill? Do you really care about that? He says, no. I said, does the grass look good? He says, no. I said, well, continue and conquer. Good, keep, keep doing your thing. I mean, if the grass looks good, and you're not um, putting so much water that there, you, if there is disease that you're, you're creating conditions for to to fester, then by all means, um, by all means, go ahead. In your case, with you only doing it once per week, I kind of doubt you're getting an inch of water down all in one session. So you're probably underwatering it, Rob. Especially given the temps that we have here now. I'm not sure if you're in Georgia or not, but this, I'm answering it as if you are in Georgia. Uh, you know, once per week. Uh, is going to be a struggle. You really want to break that up in a couple of, of irrigation cycles if you can. So try that. Let me know how it works out. We're supposed to get rain here this weekend, so we'll see if that happens, and that will help solve a lot of these problems, help improve a lot of these problems. Okay, next up is Obadiah Kamerling. He is back, and he says, Hey, Ron. Thanks, Ron. I ordered that combo pack last night from your website. I was stoked to watch them in action. Very, very cool. Yeah, I think I saw that. If, if you are if you are who I think you are, your order already went out, uh, Obadiah. I mean, you can always check tracking. You should have you should have gotten an email with it if it did ship, but I'm pretty sure it shipped already. So that should be on its way to you, which would be, should be awesome. Next up is Troy Ridley. He says, hey, Ron, leveling a small front yard with two trees. Uh-oh, here we go. I hope he's not going to ask you a shade question, but we'll read on. We'll read on. He says, you have two trees, a flower bed, water valves, and sprinkler heads. Can you do a video on using a sod cutter around obstacles? I need to lower and level the ground. Ha! Huh, that would be a tough one, uh, Troy. I've never actually used uh, a sod cutter on my lawn. And I don't really want to you know, cut up my lawn. I really don't. I mean, I, I guess I could do a small part, part for you guys, but I really don't want to use a sod cutter. The thing I would say is... Um, Along the lines of what you would do when if you were irrigating or not irrigating, if you're, if you're aerating the lawn, get some flags and just mark the stuff that you don't want to you don't want to hit. You know what I mean? So a sod cutter shouldn't go more than a couple of inches beneath the, the surface of the uh, of the sod. So if you get out there with a couple of flags, like, you know, if you've not seen my aeration video, watch that. Like there's in the prep phase for that. I show I show doing that, getting out there and just marking all your sprinkler heads with flags and if there's, uh, your flower bed should be pretty obvious because you're going to see that. Um, and if there's anything else, water valves or any, you know, irrigation, um, like any um, valves, irrigation valves, like those little uh, little pots that, that get submerged that the, the valves are in, mark those with uh, with flags. And now you know like what how you have to plan your path as far as whenever you're running the sod cutter. So not, without even using one, that is how I would go about doing it. 
I would I would mark the stuff in the lawn that I do not want to hit with it, and you know then just make sure I just navigate around that as I'm I'm doing whatever work that I'm doing. So hope that helps. Uh, the same process I use for air, for aeration, the same thing really really would apply for a uh, for a sod cutter. So hope that helps. Let me know if you need anything else. Drop a question or drop a, a future uh, question down in the chat, and I will do my best to get to it. Mr. VMH, Mr. Crabgrass, no more. You know it's going to stick forever, right? Because last year you were all, like every email I got from you, and, and even when you were live stream was all about, I got crabgrass, I'm trying to get rid of my crabgrass. I've got like two less crabgrass now. So we'll call you Mr. VMH, Mr. Former Crabgrass now. Thanks for coming to hang out. You know, I'm just giving you a hard time. And uh, I'm glad that you're doing well and that you took some time to come say hi in the live stream. Okay, Ben Raham says, I used uh, Quinclorac with Super Sticker, did not even dent it. Wow, okay. So look at when you, so Ben, uh, in on the Quinclorac label, they also talk about using uh, methylated seed oil, MSO. Read that, there's specific instructions around how to use that, like as far as rates for mixing that with Quinclorac. That's like taking it up a notch. I would try that first. I would try that next um, against the um, against the bent grass and see how that does because quinclorac should do that. It should. I mean, in other words, if what you're spraying truly is creeping bent grass, quinclorac, especially with a, with MSO, should like seriously injure that if not kill it. So um, you know, you try surfactant that really should have done the trick. It should have at least discolored it or injured it some. But we can step it up another notch by um, by you know going going to an MSO if you want, but but read the label because it specifically tells you um, uh, for uh, like how to mix it, like what ratios to use with that to get a, uh, a good result, Ben. So again, also send me an email if you don't mind with um, with what you're dealing with so I can, I can actually see uh, the, the grass or weed you're trying to target. But again, if, if the surfactant didn't do it, let's take it up a notch um, as far as um, using MSO. Maybe if you were not, if you if you were like, depending on the rate you're using, if there's still a bit of headroom for you to increase the rate slightly, you could also could try doing that and seeing if that helps. Um, and, and just between those two things, you should get a good result as far as a response in the weed starting to die off. Okay, next is Exa the Alexander Lee, my next door neighbor in the house. He says, what's up everyone? I recently uh, aerated top dress yards recovering nicely. Next up, Verticut. Man, how are you gonna tell? You can't tell them all the stuff we got planned to do. You can come out here and just, just broadcast all the secret stuff. You can't do that. But yes, Alex is right. That's our plan for the lawn for the month of June. Uh, is the idea is that we want to, um, the first part of June, we're gonna do a light Verticut. Nothing like, along the lines of like what I did earlier this year, a light Verticut, thin the turf out a little bit. That's gonna give it you know, a good three, four weeks to recover before the 4th of July, and it'll be looking gorgeous by then. That's the plan. So we're gonna do a verticut at the beginning of June and a light one. So watch out for that. You guys can see another verticutting video if you are so inclined to see verticutting. It's gonna be kind of boring, but if you guys wanna watch, I will film it and post it on YouTube for you guys to see. But yeah, Alex's lawn is looking great and uh, it's recovered nicely. We did some spot top dressing on his lawn for the most part, mainly we focused on just the back lawn. If you guys have been watching the YouTube stories, you guys saw where I've been I'm showing the updates of how his lawn has been recovering as well too. So you guys can see some of that. If you wanna see um, tomorrow morning, I can go out there really quick and just say, hey, this is the area that he's talking about that's recovering, that's left. Everything else is already growing through pretty nicely. Thanks for coming to hang out, man. I really, really do appreciate it. And I guess we'll definitely catch up tomorrow. Definitely, be, I know we're gonna hang out tomorrow, so that should be a great time. All right, next is Timber589 says, can you seed before top dressing or will the top dressing stop the seed from germinating? I'm talking about an eighth to a quarter inches and using a leveling rig to get it all level. So what, so what I would do timber to prevent that, so can you seed before top dressing? Yes, if you're gonna go light. But the way to, to, to prevent the very problem that you're describing where you, you end up burying the seed and under too much um, you know, top dressing mix, leveling mix, whatever you happen to be using is to do your top dressing, put the seed down afterwards, and then just rake it in. Because an eighth of an inch, a quarter of an inch, it I mean, that's it's, it's that much. I mean, you can't even see it. It's like that much. It's, it's very, very, very small amount. So literally, you can your leveling rake will do a great job just, um, you know, will, helping to create that seed to soil contact. And then you're not really, you don't have to worry about putting too much material down and potentially burying the seed too low. It likely would grow through anyway, but for, um, I'm assuming the seed you're using is like a Bermuda grass seed because that's what they normally call for, you know, an eighth to quarter of an inch or, or zoysia or any, any really, really small seed. So for me, I'm a fan of doing the, the, the 
compost or whatever you happen to be putting down in the lawn for your top for your top dressing uh, first, putting the seed down afterwards, and then raking it in with the with the rake. So it's your call. Either way can work. The big thing is as long as you're going light, either way will work. If you're going heavier, which I don't recommend, then you definitely want to do the seed after the top dressing. Great stuff. All right, next up is Mary J. She says, hey, thanks for replying to my comment question, Ron Henry. You're very, very welcome, Mary. Thanks for asking the question. I think I remember you, you think it was, a, the, the, you're talking about a comment on one of the YouTube videos. So uh, so yeah, no problem at all. You know, if you ask a question, I, I, I try to answer most comments. So if you put one in there, I will do my best to, to get back to you. I can do it now. You know, if, if, if and when the channel gets bigger, it's gonna become harder and harder to do that. Um, but while I can, you know, I figure if you guys take time out to, to one, watch my content, which I'm super appreciative of, and then to also then leave a comment, that's even even cooler. So I, if I can, I will try and answer your question um, as long as I'm able to uh, to do that. All right, next of is, is Cobra Venom. It says, thoughts on lifting uh, large pieces of sods and filling in my lawn like that instead of doing multiple years to fill it in. I had a couple of trees removed in my backyard last season and the branches. So it depends on what you're doing, Cobra Venom. I have heard of people doing that, like um, you know, using a sod cutter or, or using some way to, to, to remove the sod, putting down material to build, the, build up a bit and then um, putting it back down. That can work, it just, it depends. It depends on how much you're trying to, um, how much area you're trying to build up, how much are you trying to raise uh, the surface of the lawn, you know, it, you know, I am, what I have done, I have not done that. What I, what I have done for low areas of my lawn is over multiple sessions, I have either leveled it or I have, I have, I've done enough top dressing that the low areas don't really matter when I mow. Like the mower kind of flows in and out of them without any scalloping or any problems at all. Like particularly in the swale area, that's where I've done a lot of that, that type work. So it's your call. That can be done. I've seen people do that. And it's hard to say, um, you know, how well it's going to work. So I don't know how much material you're talking about putting in. If you're talking, you know, two, three inches, sure, it's, that's probably going to be fine. If you're saying you're going to lift it up and put like six or eight inches in there, you're still going to end up having the top dress anyway, because when that settles, when you put the side back down, it's not going to be even. Regardless of how good a job you do, it's not going to be even. Um, and when it settles, it's really become, it's going to become uneven. So even if you go that route, know that you're likely going to have to top dress uh, afterwards to, to smooth, you know, to get things uh, looking the way you, you'd likely want them to look. So hope that helps. Great question. Uh, really do appreciate it. Good job of getting the trees out of your lawn. That, uh, that's a, that's a good thing for the grass. So let me know how, which way you end up deciding to go. And you're saying, I made some mess in some spots and can Winder Georgia get some rain, man. Yeah. You and me both, man. You Winder, you're just up the road from me. Yeah. Well, we should be getting some this weekend. We shall see. We shall see. See if it actually pans out. Next up is Robert Rainey. He says, seeing all these pics of top dressing as stock, <laughs> look at you, <laughs> you're a glut for punishment, has me thinking on doing some spot top dressing or spot leveling in some areas. It's tough on equipment when cutting at half an inch. It's probably gonna happen though. Yeah, I mean, so here's the thing, Robert. You know, what you can do is this. If you know you're gonna do some spot leveling, go ahead and get it done now. Scratch the itch, get the lawn the way you want it, as good as you can get it for this season. And then send your lawn, your mower in for a mid-season freshen up. You know, get it, get it sharpened up again because at half an inch, you know, unless you're going to really raise the height of cut, it's highly likely that you're going to you're going to get into some sand at some point. You know what I mean? So it's your call. I mean, it's I, I did exactly what you're talking about doing last year. I did a level, and then I did some spot leveling. And despite my best efforts, the I still had to take the mower into the nice folks at Jerry Pate for them to freshen it up for me mid season. And you know, it was a few hours worth of work. They got it back to me. They turned it on really, really quickly. And then I was out there and I was enjoying the mower again. So it, it's up to you. I get it. You know, I get it. While you're while you're already in there and the lawn's not fully recovered and you want to just fix a few small spots while you can, I get it. I, I it's I can see why that would be an attractive uh, option to go with. I did that exact thing last year. But I would say if you decide to do that, just plan for a sharpen on uh, on the mower once you're done. All right, I got a super chat. Let me run down here and grab that really quick. I got two, first of all, from CR, my very first channel member. Thank you so much, uh, CR, I appreciate it. Super chat received. She says, hey Ron, I'm getting a lot of burrweed. Is there anything I can use? I'm enjoying the live stream and being a member. Thank you so much, CR. Again, you are the first member, which is very cool. It's an honor that you will have, I guess as long as you're always a member. Uh, so that's very cool. Uh, there's a lots of different, um, lots of different herbicides that will do, that will take care of burrweed. 
I want to say Spectracide is labeled to, to, to tackle it. Uh, most three ways, like Triad, um, will we'll take care of Burweed. Um, and then Celsius will also do it as well, too. So it's really your call. Depends on, on budget. If it were me, um, I'm, if I had burweed in my lawn, I would use Celsius because one, I already have it, and it's just a it's a very it's a very good herbicide that is gentle on the grass, hard, tough on weeds, nice to the grass. So that's that is what I would go with. But it's also more expensive than some of the other options that I uh, that I, I also mentioned as well too. So it really depends on which way you want to go. If you're asking me, I'm going to use Celsius. So hope that helps. Get rid of the burweed. I mean, you want to take care of that sooner than later if you can, and really next year. If this is a if this is, becomes a thing where you have burweed in your lawn, um, try and treat it a little bit earlier in the spring because a lot of times what happens is they they don't start out really um, they don't start out hard to where they will um, stick you in your foot. Like this this problem really starts like in like late um, not in late winter but like really early spring is when this begins these this this problem starts and then when as the temps get warmer. They begin to dry out, and that's when they become they become hard and will stick you. So you can you can eliminate these earlier in the season, and then it just never becomes a problem. You know what I mean? So if, if it's a thing that if this is the, the problem, the weed that's in your lawn that becomes that's an that's an issue, uh, then you know next year I would one get your pre-emergent down, but also next year I would also work on treating it a little bit sooner in the season before it even becomes an issue. So hope that helps. Appreciate all the support. Let me know if you need anything else. All right, let me see. I got another super chat here um, from Mr. Uh, ben Raham. It says, super chat or seed. is too much Bermuda seed a thing or just cost prohibitive? I have to start fresh again. If I have to start fresh again, um, go heavy or bag rate? I would go bag rate. Um, or I mean, when I say heavy, if you want to, for example, Arden 15 called for um, I think two pounds per thousand square feet. If you want to do three pounds per thousand square feet, that's probably okay. But really two pounds is enough to get a good result. Like going heavier um, is not is not necessarily a good thing. Like going too heavy actually can, can, can create problems as well, Ben. So I, I would follow bag rate. So it, with our, I remember it was like one pound or two pounds. This is one to two pounds. Um, I opted for the two pound per thousand rate and I got a pretty good result with that, you know? So... I would not go super crazy heavy. I would I would follow the bag rate. I really really would because the thing you can always find you'll find too is if you you put it out if you do all your prep work properly and you water it you're going to get really good germination with that especially if you slit seed it and because um, we're so early in the season you still got time that if there's a few areas that didn't fill in which is kind of unlikely but if you that didn't fill in you can always put a bit more seed down to help that you know to help those areas begin to grow in as well too so. Um, I would not waste it. It's a, I mean, grass seed is expensive. I mean, good grass seed is expensive, and Bermuda grass seed is very expensive. So I would stick to that rate. You know, if you can still find whatever you decide to go with, um, Arden or Yukon or whatever it is, uh, go by the rate that's on the bag. You know, I mean, think about it. They, the manufacturer, it's not in their best interest for you to get the seed apply it and it not to grow in properly, right? Because then people are going to stop buying their seed. You're going to write a nasty review and say, this stuff is terrible and I bought it and I did everything right and it didn't grow in. Like it's not in their best interest to, to do that. So the rates that are on there, they've tested rates lower than that. They've tested rates much higher than that. And that's what they settled on as far as the nominal rate to get a good result. So I, I would stick with that. I would go with the rate that's on the bag if it were me. Great, great question. All right, and then um, while I'm here, I'm looking for the next super chat. You said, "What's the risk of introducing weeds when leveling and top dressing?" It is a, it is a risk. It depends on you know, it depends on the material, depends on where you get it from. I didn't experience any issues with weeds in my lawn from the super sod leveling mix. There's some people that have, that I've, I've seen online that have said that they used it and they got a bunch of weeds in their lawn. I didn't experience that last year. I did six or seven bags, I forget. I, I did a bunch of bags, I have to look at the video. I did a bunch of bags in the lawn last year on just the back lawn. I didn't have any weeds from that and I used a lot of it. This year I did uh, two bags of just their compost and then a bag of their le of their um, just uh, the level mix um, between the front lawn and a few areas on the, on the back lawn. And again, I didn't have a bunch of weeds on my lawn either, but that's a super sod mix. So it just depends on which one you, which mix you use. It is possible to answer your question. Yes, you can introduce weeds in your lawn, um, but I would just um, just plan for just treating those with a post-emergent once the lawn recovers. You know, that's that's how I would I would take care of that. All right, so we got two more super chats here. One from 
Um, Makish. Um, Super chat received. He says, hey, Ron, new to the channel from BYD. Thanks for coming to hang out. We had a good time with that. If you guys didn't see the collab that um, BYD and I did on um, Primo, uh, check out his channel. We did a cool video on that. It was fun to do, to go spray some, some product on his lawn. So check that out, support BYD. It says, your thoughts on Fahrenheit versus Celsius if you've ever used it. Um, I've never used Fahrenheit. I know that it is a, um, it's like a play on words. I think quality, was it quality Pro that makes it? But it's like, a, it's like their version of it. Um, I've talked to, I've never used it myself, but I've talked to, 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 to several friends that I have that work in industry that have used it. And they said that Celsius is better. Like there's a reason why Celsius costs more. Fahrenheit is not, um, does not work as well as Celsius. Um, and also from a standpoint of places where you can use it, I don't believe it's labeled for use in as many states as, um, as Celsius. Let me see here, make sure I'm not telling you a lie. Yeah, exactly. So there's a bunch of states where you can't even, where it's not even, um, you know, where, where it's not, you can't even buy it. So again, for, for um, Celsius, name brand product, the, I have not, I have, have yet to have any of my friends um, several of whom spray lawns for a living tell me to say, yeah, I, I, you know, the Fahrenheit, Celsius isn't on the truck anymore. And I got, I've replaced it with Fahrenheit and that's what I'm using on my lawns. I haven't had a single person tell me that everyone has, has told me the other way. So, uh, you know, like most things in life, man, you get what you pay for. Like I would, I would, uh, I would just stick with, with Celsius. All right. Next is perpetual student. It says, um, thanks for always helping us Super amateurs out. Received. I mean, we're all amateurs at some point, right? We're all we're all we're just a different different level, different stages down the uh, down the path. So, you know, you know, four or five years ago, I was exactly where you know where a lot of you guys are now. So just just keep keep learning, keep trying to do better, and try and and you're gonna you're gonna get there. I mean, it's it's grass, man. It's really it's actually really not that really not that hard. I appreciate the super chat and the support. All right, next up is Shelby Amos. She says, Ron, what's up, Ron? Dallas grass. Celsius to knock it out? I have plenty. No, uh, Celsius will not um, will not target, will not, it's not gonna damage da Dallas grass. You probably could give Dallas grass Celsius and it would like sip it and like throw it back at you. It'd be like, shit, I am Dallas grass. How dare you? This would probably happen. Uh, as far as um, a herbicide that can injure Dallas grass, certainty will, certainty will injure Dallas grass. Is it gonna kill it? No. Um, I don't know of very many herbicides that are labeled for use on residential lawns that will kill um, that will kill Dallas grass. The, the thing I tell most people is if you have Dallas grass in your lawn, the best and most like, economical way to get rid of it is just to remove it. Like physically get out there. If you spend, you know, an hour, a couple times a week getting out there and just digging it out, like that's that's the way to really get rid of it. Um, and that's, that's a good way to ensure it's not going to come back. Even if you use something like certainty against it, certainty is going to injure it, but it's not going to kill it. You know what I mean? So if you really want it gone, your best bet is just to physically remove it, especially if you're talking about a residential lawn, which I think is what you have, Shelby. So nope, Celsius will not do much against that. Certainty will, but again, it's just going to, it's just going to give it a, it's, gonna, it's a smack, not a smack. It's not going to, it's not going to, um, it's not going to choke it out. It's not going to get rid of it. All right, next up is G Free, and I appreciate that, man. He says, hey, Ron, Strap Action Gang, y'all hit the thumbs up, the like button. Guys, I'm gonna take a sip of my lemonade. I'm going, just for LG, I'm gonna put some Tango Bolero on. And if you guys wouldn't mind hitting that like button ever so gently while I, you know, prevent my throat from going away, I'd really, really appreciate that. Doesn't cost you guys anything. It's a great way to support the channel. Mm -mm -mm. And we're back. Next up is Ben Raham. He says, I'm just glad you take the time to do this every week. I'm, I appreciate you guys coming to hang out, Ben. If you guys don't show up, then I'll just be here talking to myself, which should be a lot less fun, right? Next, we have No Name. He says, happy Friday, Ron, and lawn enthusiasts. It's been so dry in Georgia that a few spots are trying to go dormant on me. I wasn't able to get hydrotain yet, and my lawn is feeling the pain. Well, get some hydrotain, man. Get it down. We got it here on the golf course lawn store, you can get the liquid, you can get the granular, get it down because we're supposed to get some rain here in the next, you know, few days, you know, unknown name. So if, if, if that's to be believed, if the forecast is to be believed, uh, it's a good time to get some hydrogen on order, get it down. The rain will water it in for you and you'll be good to go. Also just get it there and just water it. You know, you can give the lawn a little, a little drink, a little something to take the edge off to help it out. But, uh, but nothing beats, nothing beats rainwater, right? All right, next up is Alex. He says, hey, Ron, I aerated a couple days ago, applied triple 12, and we'll top dress next. 
What ratio of sand to topsoil do you recommend for a really bumpy lawn or should I just use sand? Thanks. I am still a fan of a 70-30 blend, Alex. You can use 100% sand if you want to, but I, I still prefer to add a bit of organic material to the soil whenever you are doing your top dressing. 70% is enough that it's gonna correct a lot of uneven areas in your lawn. Like it's gonna, it's gonna do a great job leveling it. And you're also in, 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 you know, introducing organic material. So there's no reason to not, to not do that. Uh, so 70-30, that is what I would recommend. And um, that's, that's, just, that's what I would go with. I've, I've had really good success with that. Um, and, but that said, I've done it both ways too. I've also gone, I've done 100% sand and that works, but given the choice, I would do, um, I would definitely uh, um, introduce, I would do a 70-30 blend. If you're only gonna do 100% sand, what I would do is this. I would, air, if you can aerate the lawn, are you gonna aerate it? Do you say that? You did not say, you just said you are, you aerated, yeah, you did aerate, okay. So if you aerated, what I would do, if you wanna use 100% sand, like you just you decide that's the way you wanna go, 100% sand is the way for you, I would go out and get some kind of a granular um, biostimulant, like, like, a, like a compost a compost um, biochar blend, something like Carbon Pro G or Essential G. Essential G, guys, by the way, uh, should be back in stock some, by, the, by early next week. So any of you guys have been signing up for the notifications on the golf course lawn store to sign up for that. And I will, I will let you guys know, I'll send an email out as well. And I'll post on YouTube when it's back in stock, but it'll be back in stock early next week. All right, Alex. But so if you are going to go hundred percent sand, what I would still do is get something again, like essential G or carbon pro G and go heavy. And when I say heavy, because you're not, you're not doing like a blend, like literally, you know, put like add it to your, to your compo, to your, your broadcast spreader and just run it wide open and just, you know, cover the cover, get as much of it down as you can as much as your budget will permit. And then if you do 100% sand on top of that, at least you've put some compost, some biochar, some organic material to help improve soil quality as part of your top dressing um, process. I would still say 70-30 is the way to go though. That is what I have done on my lawn more than anything else. And my lawn still looks good from that. You know, you don't need, you don't need to do 100% sand. All right, great question. Next up is uh, God is Love Bala says, how do you get rid of long weeds? So it depends on what the weed is, um, um, God is love, Bala. So really, um, the way you deal with long weeds is the same way you deal with like smaller weeds, short weeds, is once you identify the type of weed that it is, you find a herbicide that it, or weed killer that is um, designed to target that type of weed, but is also safe for your grass. So a good example, if you use something like, um, you have something like Bermuda, Right there are um, herbicides like uh, I'll show you here. We can go here and I go for a ride real quick, and I'll show you what I'm talking about. So if you go to the golf course lawn store and then you go to Weed Killer, right, and um, you have a couple of choices. So if Celsius is a very broad, um, it's a broad spectrum herbicide, meaning it kills a lot of different weeds. So if you want something and that that will that will kill most weeds in that are common to warm season grass. This is a good option. Also triad select, this three way, this broadleaf is also a good option. So the, which out of these you use, I mean, out of them, this will, this targets more stuff than this one. Um, and then these two you can mix together. So certainty and Celsius you can actually use together for a really good combination that covers a lot of weeds on warm season grass. So the 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 gist of what I'm trying what I'm trying to tell you is. First, the first thing, thing one, is to determine the weed that you have, and then select a herbicide that is going to injure and or kill that weed while still being safe for your grass. Once you apply the herbicide and you give it, you know, three days after application, if you want to mow the grass or mow the lawn or mow the weed, it's going, it's, by then it should have taken up most of the herbicide or really absorbed it. It should be in its, it's, in its system. Um, and then when you mow it, it's it's going to be a lot harder for it to grow back because the idea for the herbicide is to either kill it all together or to severely injure it to where now when you cut it, um, which is also a stressor for the weed, it's not gonna it's not gonna be able to grow back. Does that make sense? So um, hopefully that helps. Herbicides are is a, is one way of doing it. You can also just physically remove it. You can dig it out. That's an option. So it depends on how much how much um, how much weed you're dealing with and um, you know what your how comfortable you feel. Uh, using herbicides. So there's just lots of different ways to be able to uh, to fix that. But, it's, but the first thing it starts with is figuring out what kind of weed you're uh, you're dealing with in your grass. So hope that helps. Thanks for thanks for um, for chiming in, and I appreciate the question. 
All right. Uh, next is uh, Kenny Dunn. It says, hey, Ron, sprayed Celsius on my Bermuda uh, this week to kill a bunch of fescue mixed in. How long does Celsius take to start seeing results on fescue? I'm trying to think, if, 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 is Celsius labeled for fescue? I know it's, it'll do, do ryegrass, um, but it, will it, um, it, sh it, sh it should injure fescue, but as far as killing it, I don't know how quickly it's going to, um, it would work against that. But a uh, long short, um, Kenny, is if you applied it and you um, used surfactant along with it, I would imagine that within 10 days, you should start seeing the fescue discolor. I would imagine that. I know it's not safe to apply to fescue, but I, I don't know as far as far as how effective it is for um, actually getting rid of or killing uh, fescue. I know most people that use it um, for grasses is for like ryegrass. But let's see. Let me look at the label here really quick if I can tell you. Yes, yeah, it's tall. So tall fescue. Yeah. So depending on the ratio you use, it is on it is on the label, and it looks like if you use the medium rate, the medium rate. That is, which is um, uh, 2.4 grams per thousand square feet or 0.05 ounces. Just look at the measuring cup. It's on the measuring cup. Uh, if you use that rate, you should get a good result, a good response on, on fescue. So I'd give it, give it seven to 10 days. You should start seeing it discolor. And uh, if not, if it doesn't, or if it begins to fall off, you can always do a follow-up application, but just give it, give it some time. Give it some time. It should, should work, especially if you use surfactant with it. Okay, next up is uh, Thin Cut. He says, good evening, Ron. And everyone, don't forget to touch the like button ever so gently. Absolutely, man. Definitely touch that like button. Hit the like button ever so gently, guys. And uh, I, I really do appreciate it. It doesn't cost you guys anything. You don't have to join the channel membership. You don't have to go, you don't have to join the Golf Course Lawn Academy or shop at the Golf Course Lawn Store. It's completely free. And it's a way for you to support the channel. Okay, John Williams is back again. He says, odd question. But when I change my fish tank water, will throwing it on the lawn cause harm? I'm trying to add microorganisms to the centipede. That's one way to do it, I guess. What should I throw down for that, or should I get chickens? Uh, it depends what's in the, the water. I, I would not think that should cause a problem, John. I wouldn't think that what's in your fish tank should cause an issue, because if it's not killing the fish, it's, likely, it's highly unlikely to kill the grass. So you're probably going to be fine. You're probably going to be fine with that. I don't I think that's, that's going to be an issue. So as far as adding um, microorganisms or, or helping to increase micro, microbial activity, a great product for that, John, it's already, it's in the carbon kit, is a product called Biospectrum. I'll show you what I'm talking about here. So go to the Golf Course Lawn Store, and then you can either scroll down or just go to the, and look for here, Miramichi Green Biostimulants, or you can go up here at Shop and Miramichi Green Biostimulants. Either one of those will work. So click on that, and then what you're looking for is this guy here, which is Biospectrum, which is a product that is specifically designed to increase microbial activity. The entire, the whole purpose behind it is for what you are um, trying to do. Um, that's why this Biospectrum is part of the Golf Course Lawn Carbon Kit. So you can buy it here by itself. There's people that do that, especially if you have a bigger property, or you just want to use it more frequently than um, what's in the kit. Um, you can do that, or a way to get a bit of everything is to just do this, right? Because the carbon kit comes with, there's two different versions. There's one that comes with 901C, which is a fertilizer, or the fertilizer version of Release Zero. There's NutriKelp, which is a kelp product, and there's also Biospectrum included with it as well. So, and all of these are, are biostimulants. All of them are going to help improve, increase microbial activity uh, in your, your soil. So, a couple different ways to do that. Uh, that's how I go about doing it. Or to your point, you can also get chickens. That's an option. That's an option too. That's an option too. If you if you wanted chickens and now's a great time to to you know add them to your lawn if you want to go if to you know have them to your your property if you want to do that. Um, or you could just go with biospectrum by itself or get the carbon kit, which is what I do, and that's going to take care of you as far as uh, improving or helping this to stimulate more uh, microbial activity in the soil. John Sitter is next, and he says, "Hey, Ron." Uh, my lawn looks stressed due to hot weather, which is true for everyone right now. That's completely normal. Everyone's lawn is looking a bit stressed right now. He says, when I water it, it tends to go away for a couple of days, but comes back. Will the Super Sod um, mix make a huge difference? What else can I do? So will it make a difference? Yes. Will it make a huge difference? That's kind of subject subjective. It's going to be better than if you didn't do it. You know, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a combination of things, Jason. So top dressing, um, if you look at my lawn, which again, it doesn't look as good as it would look had we been getting rain, but I've been watering it. But if you look there, other than 
other than one area there out there by the rocks, like you're not really seeing a lot of heat stress in it. You know, the color isn't as vibrant, but overall the lawn still looks pretty good. So, but, but the question is, how do I get to that? So it's been top dressed several times with the leveling mix with like 70-30 blends. Um, I've also put hydrotain down, which helps keep moisture in the root zone, which, which is, you know, another thing you can, you can and should do as well. Um, and, and, and the, all those things all together help produce that result. So will the super sod leveling mix help? Yes, absolutely. But I would not only do that. I would, I would do that as well as, um, as also as well as do something like hydrotain as well in your lawn. If you've not aerated your lawn, now granted, you know, right now the turf is stressed and aerating it is going to stress it more. But as far as what we, we have coming, let's say you had not, um, you haven't aerated your lawn as yet, right? And let's say the weather is actually to be believed that we're going to get rain on Sunday. If you can get out and get an aerator tomorrow and aerate your lawn tomorrow, get some hydrotain down on it tomorrow, um, and then we're going to get a nice heavy shower, that's going to help things because aerating the lawn opens it up. It gets a lot of moisture, a lot of air down um, in the soil. All those things which help you know improve microbial activity, just helps improve um, the quality of the soil, helps reduce compaction. There's tons of benefits to doing it other than it's a lot of work. Um, and, and all those things together help produce a, 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 a turf that is more resilient to less water. You know what I mean? It's not just one thing. You know, like you can just do one thing and, and get the result. It's, it's multiple things over time. It's a program that helps your lawn weather, um, you know, um, um, not uh, like hot weather or drought conditions better than your neighbor's lawn will. But it's, it's a process to be able to do that. So hope that helps. It's, it's definitely not going to hurt to do it, but I would also do the other things that I mentioned as well too. Aerate it. If you have not considered um, uh, adding hydrotain, I would consider doing that too. Also, um, great things that really do help. All right. Next up is Nathan D. It says, um, for long stolons sticking up on the lawn and not rooted down, should I trim them back or allow them to keep growing? Either way, you can. if they're not really tacking down, you want to cut them, you can do that. It's not going to It's not gonna hurt anything. I mean, all it's going to do, you, you'll cut them and then it'll just start will start growing out again. It's 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 really your call. I mean, if it's if they're growing and they're kind of flopping and they kind of look a little bit unsightly, you can you can cut them off and um and just wait for it and, and just allow the lawn to grow back. It'll 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 grow another one. You know, you're not gonna you're not gonna do any any kind of permanent um any permanent damage. I've had that too where when I'm real mowing and if I have like one that's a little bit unsightly, like a little straggler that kind of sits on the top of the surface, kind of just flops around. Like I'll get out there and I'll just I'll grab it and I'll break it off or I'll cut it off and. I, so I, I completely do um, what you're uh, what you're talking um, about, Nathan. So yeah, you're not gonna hurt anything. It's your call. If it really bugs you, cut it off. If it doesn't bug you, leave it. Either either way will work. All right. Next is Robert Hathaway. He says, "What do you think about paver sand? Yeah, paver sand is a bit coarse, so that's a good option as far as uh, top dressing, as, as far as like a like a leveling um, a product. So as long as it's the big thing is as long as it's relatively clean, uh, Robert." So, you know, paver sand, masonry sand, similar things, um, river sand is what some people call it, but the idea is a coarser sand is what you're after. Uh, that that will work for a leveling mix. I think that's what you're, that's what you're asking me. You just said, what I think about paver sand, and I, I believe you're asking me in the context of leveling, uh, using it as a leveling, um, you know, medium for your lawn. If that's what it is, then yes, that can, that can work just fine, because that tends to be coarser, more coarse in nature. Okay, next up we have Robot. Robot. It says, can wild Bermuda be killed off in St. Augustine or do I just need to get new sod? I'm in Los Angeles. Uh, I do not know of a way to remove um, Bermuda from St. Augustine. I've heard of people, um, it's, you can do the other way around. Like if you have St. Augustine in Bermuda and you want the Bermuda, you want the St. Aug gone, that's an easier problem. But as far as getting rid of Bermuda in St. Aug, that is not... That is not as easy um, because you really can't mow it short because that's bad for the St. Augustine. The Bermuda likes that. It's it's really your call. I, I'd have to see. I'm, I'm not sure if you can you can try you can I mean you can try physically removing it, robot. But I mean it's just going to come back. It's just going to come back. Depending on how bad it is, you may you may be in for a renovation if it's bugging you that much and it's really you know if, it, if you really can't live. You know if you can't live with it, um, then. Then that's that's likely what you're you're looking at. I I I have not I don't know of a um of a of a good way to remove Bermuda 
in St. Augustine. I really don't. So, um, so yeah, sorry, I'm not more help on this one. And my first thing might be just to tell you, just mow it a lot, mow the lawn a lot, and maybe just live with it. I mean, perhaps you, maybe you're just the only the one that's going to notice it. And if you start mowing more regularly and, you know, even though it's a bit of a mutt lawn with Bermuda and St. Aug, perhaps you can, you can get used to it. But if you're, if it's bugging you that much, then you're probably going to end up just doing a renovation. So hope that helps. And, and the things you remember too, if you decide to go that route, you're going to, you're going to likely have to do a couple of rounds of grass killer, of non-selective uh, herbicide, like glyphosate or whatever you decide to use to get rid of it or to have, you never know, really get rid of Bermuda, but to, to reduce the amount of it that grows through whenever you put new saw down or whatever, you, whichever route you decide to go. So just, if you decide to go that route, know that a couple of rounds of, of grass killer is what you're gonna wanna do to, to get the best result with your new renovation project. Next up is volatility trading. Volatility, vol you know, every time I see volatility, there's actually a, um, you know, not that you guys care, but there's a a forensics tool uh, that call volatility. We use it for for memory forensics. So if you're like a Windows machine or a Linux machine, you're trying to like get like grab a memory snapshot and look for artifacts in memory. It's actually called volatility. So when I saw volatility, that's the thing that popped to mind. But obviously, you're talking about trading, not um, the memory forensics tool. All right. Anyway, it says hey, long time lurker. I have about half an acre with no irrigation in Maryland. Okay. I am working on ridding the weeds this summer for aeration and seeding in the fall. Best grass type for no irrigation? Um, that's a good question, man. I mean, for, it sounds like you are, you're, you're dealing with cool season grass volatility. I don't know. I mean, I know fescue requires a lot of water, at least around here anyway, but I don't know. But in Maryland, I don't know. That's a good question. I don't, I'm not, I'm not a cool season grass like expert. Um, so I don't know what cool season grass does not require a lot of water, um, you know, given given um, given that you have half an acre. I, I'll tell you this, you know, I I kind of do lean towards a fescue because it's used like there's along like the neighborhood that I live in along a lot of the um, like a lot of the common areas for whatever reason they didn't use Bermuda they actually put fescue down and that seems to that seems to do fairly well i mean they water it every now and then but they don't water it like how i would water it and it it seems it survives the heat here and it comes back every year not like they have a bunch of it that dies off or anything like that so a fescue might be an option for you especially given that your temperatures are going to be your summers to be a little bit milder than what we have here in georgia that's what i would lean towards there are other places around here too like some of the some of the big churches also use fescue um i don't know how rye no, actually i know rye rye will not do well without um without being watered. And Kentucky bluegrass also needs uh, irrigation, needs water as, as temps get, get hotter. So I would lean towards a fescue. Look at the fescues and see how that, um, if there's one that, that is more drought tolerant, that doesn't need a lot of water, uh, that is what I would lean towards. Again, I'm just, I'm just basing that off of what I see uh, on, the, on the few cool season grasses, like as far as fescues that I see being used around here that doesn't get watered a lot and it's it seems to do all right. So do some research into that. That is what I would recommend. But again, I'm not a cool season guy. So, um, you know, check out some of the other channels that, that specialize in that or do some more research and see which way, um, you know, which way to go. But start start looking into fescues and see if that if there's an option for that that will uh, will meet your needs. Great stuff. And I appreciate you being a viewer, even though you've been a long time lurker, you've come out of the lurking and look at that. You came out and I wasn't even able to give you a, a solid answer for your question, but hopefully, uh, hopefully it was still good enough to kind of put you on the right path, right? Okay, next up is Jonathan Daza. He's back here. He says, um, can I mix liquid fertilizer and liquid fungicide together? Are there any liquid lawn products that should not be mixed together? I would like to take advantage of watering once once um, instead of multiple times. So I've never done that, Jonathan. I've never mixed a fungicide with fertilizer. Can you do it? Uh, the way to find out is to do what's called a jar test. So let me show you guys humic max. Hey guys, actually this is gold. You can't even really get this right now because <laughs> it's sold out. But you take a masonry jar like this and you would put a, a lot of the labels will tell you how to do it, but a, a small amount um, of the fungicide in here a small amount of whatever else you want to mix with it. So a little bit of fertilizer, put that in there, add water, and then, you know, mix them and then just pay attention to it. See if it separates or does anything weird or if it begins to gel or just does, has any kind of weird interactions. That's a low risk way of determining if the fungicide and the, and the fert that you want to mix with it are going to play nicely together. You know what I mean? Um, I will tell you that liquid fertilizer, um, and plant growth regulator and biostimulants, at least the stuff that I use, all those mixed together very, very nicely. I've not done liquid fert and liquid fungicide 
to be able to tell you. And even if I even if I did, I don't know which liquid fertilizer you're using, and I don't know which fungicide you're talking about. So either way, the correct answer is to do a jar test. All right. So and the more than likely the fungicide, the fertilizer probably won't have it in this label, but the fungicide label should tell you that. If you're gonna mix this with anything else, do like what I've I've described. Get a get a mason jar and then small amount of each, you know, put them together, wait and see if you get any kind of odd uh, interactions after uh, after doing so. And then if they do, if they, if they play nicely together and, you know, then yeah, then you can absolutely, um, you absolutely can uh, put them down. You can actually put them down at the same time. A good example, so, so one thing I have done, right, is I have mixed a celeprin. One thing I have done is I have used a celeprin um, along with the carbon kit at the same time. Like, you know, I did, I, I have done that. You know, that's not, that's, that's not the, 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 like the generally the um, the most optimal way to use it, but I had a friend, a neighbor that wanted to have um, insect, wanted to have a celebrant put down, and I did it and the carbon kit. They mixed the they mixed nicely together. There was no issue. So for in that case, it was fine. But with fungicides, especially fungicides, you wanna you wanna do a jar test. So hope that helps. The way to find out if there's things that cannot be mixed, it, if the label says don't mix things with it, don't mix them obviously, and if it does not specify especially with fungicides, it will tell you to do a jar test, like what I just I just described. So hope that helps. If you need anything else, let me know. It's a great question. All right, next up is Demir. Devin is in the house. He says, nothing says 10 days to June like a snowstorm predicting over a foot of snow. Life in Colorado. You, you got, I got to see pictures. You got to say, picture, picture that didn't happen, uh, Devin. You're telling me that it, like right now, you guys are getting snow in Colorado? You need to move, man. I, I mean, I know you like it there, but it's just, that's just not, that's not good. I, I mean, that's, it, there's no reason it should be, no reason it should be still snowing in May. That's, that's a, that's crazy talk, man. Craziness, craziness. Well, ho hopefully if it is snowing, it's just like a dusting and it's not going to stick around and it's one of those freak things. But um, could you imagine if we got snow in Georgia in May? It'd be something else, man. It'd be terrible. It'd be terrible. And let's see what else we have here. Oh, look, a troll. Watch, watch this. We'll just skip over him. Next up is uh, Robert Rainey. He says another another thing I've I've noticed is that after top dressing, is to mow uh, when the grass is dry. So mow when the grass is dry. Okay, so you have to do that. Um, I noticed mowing in the mornings with the dew, the lovely mix would cake up on the roller and drum. That is a true thing. That is a true thing. So you are right. As from as from that standpoint, it is um it is better. It is better to mow. If, you, if that's what you care about, it is better to mow when it's dry. I still mow in the morning because that's I just like I like still get my stripes and whatever. But you are correct; like it will it will get tend to be tacky and build up on uh, on the the drum. But that should only be for the first day or so, you know. After you, um, um, you know, it should only be for the first day or so after you, um, you 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 finish leveling. In other words, the first the first couple of mows afterwards when you should experience that. And then it, and then it will um and then we'll go away. All right. Uh next up is um and Ripmaster, here's the thing. I see your comment, but I don't think you're really asking the question because you're really asking the question. You're just asking the question to be I don't know, whatever. So that's why I'm not I'm not gonna really I'm not gonna really take it. The long short of it is, I mean, the he's he's asking um why are some um what is what are some of the about around the cost of some of the products that you that um that one are in the st are in the store, and also just in general that YouTubers have, and the the big thing about that you have to realize is that for the liquids, um, for any of the products really, once you start shipping things, a lot of the cost is in shipping. Like when you look take like a bag of Essential G or a bag of fertilizer or even the liquids, a lot of what you're paying for is shipping the product. Is 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 literally that. Um, and then in the case of my store, the products that I use tend to be more expensive because I, I want to use the best products available for my lawn, right? Like the, the stuff that I use are, for the most part, all of them are, are used in the professional turf industry. That's why you see I use like the Syngenta um, insecticides and fungicides and even their growth regulator. You know, are there cheaper options? Yes, but there's a reason why the products that I use cost what they cost. They work, they perform well, and... I, my audience, I mean, I, I mean, I don't, I don't try to, I don't try to be all things for everyone. Like everyone has, you know, everyone has their audience. Everyone has a, um, you know, a, a segment that they're trying to reach. If you want a golf course lawn using, you know, professional level products, using the stuff that I use, then I'm your guy. If you don't like that, then I'm not your guy, but I'm not going to 
you know, use lesser products or use things or use things that, that are just strictly based on cost um, as a means to, to satisfy people that are probably not going to buy anything from me anyway. You know what I mean? So I, I have a certain audience I'm trying to serve and I'm doing a pretty good job at doing that. And that's what I intend to keep doing. So appreciate the question as, as disingenuous as it was, I'll address it anyway. All right. Next up, we have a, a super chat here from LG. And I will take that. Thank you so much, LG. Let's see here. Super chat received. He says, hey, Ron, thanks for the free Tango Bolero play. So when does the Alit arrive? Here's the thing. Why don't you guys reach out to Alit? Ask them. Tell them, hey, Ron needs Ron needs a mower, uh, and you guys should make that happen. You know, reach out to them and see what they tell you. They'll probably tell you to go pound sand, <laughs> but it can't hurt, right? He says, when are you building a shed for your war chest of lawn care goods? And finally... Are we in a bear market? Broad range of subjects, huh? Okay, so the first thing I already addressed, um, I'll put some some Tango Bolera on for you while I answer your questions, just because it's you, only because it's you, LG. Only because it's you. Um, the outlet, I've already talked about that. Keep calling them and asking them and see what they, uh, what they say. Um, and a shed, that's probably not gonna happen. I'll just make sure that I'm very efficient with what I keep in my lawn. And then are we in a bear market? Um, I mean, the, the market's falling, the market is, is bouncing back it's falling back a bit but it it kind of needs to right i mean if you think about the 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 financial markets they've been on a tear for the last four years i mean there's been little bumps here and there but, been, but they've been mainly going like this and that's nothing goes like that all the time so a little bit of pullback is um is expected and necessary life will go on i promise all right so i covered all your topics uh lg hopefully that helps and while I not while I'm trying to find the next question here, let's see where did I leave off. All right, uh, next is Tim A, not Tim B, but Tim A. He says, "Sorry, I messed up earlier, and I should have told you Kentucky bluegrass. I live way up north, but appreciate the tips about leveling and top dressing. Very, very welcome, Tim. Yeah, looking at it, it looks like rye or something. I could say K KBG, but rye just stripes like like craziness man it's it's unfair how nice ryegrass stripes so i i, I figured it wasn't bermuda uh, but uh i figured yeah well, i'm glad it was still helpful the the leveling advice that i give for bermuda for the most part it also applies towards leveling ryegrass and, and, and kbg as well you may not want to mow those quite as short if you're not you know real mowing them but the techniques are still the same you know put this up you know aerate if you can put this stuff down on the lawn spread it out water it in and wait and be patient. All right, Kevin Brewster says, great show, I'm gonna to top dress at, uh, let me tell you, a great show, I'm gonna to top dress at the end of the month and I'm skeptical about sand. I want to deal with compaction uh, first. Um, the lawn is very uneven. Suggestions calling from San Antonio, Texas. First of all, San Antonio, Texas is one of my, one of my most favorite cities in Texas, like the Riverwalk, assuming that's still a thing, is pretty awesome, really great food there. Okay, on to your question. Uh, as far as compaction, here's what I would do, Kevin. If you're going to go through through this 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 whole top dressing journey, and you want to do it the way I would recommend, it's more work, but you can get a better result. Is as part of your top dressing, aerate the lawn first. So this video that I will put in the chat for you now, I'll I'll see if I can find it. Maybe see if I can multitask here. The process that I like to do is I like to aerate. And then if there's anything you want to put down on the lawn, like if you have like your, your biostimulants or fertilizer or anything you want to use, that's the time to put that down after you aerate. And then top dress on top of that and then just water it in and wait for the lawn to recover. You know what I mean? That is what that is how I would uh, I'd recommend doing it. That's the way to deal with the compaction issue that you're talking about. And I would add actually a bit of sand. I would not, if your goal is to level the lawn, you're going to need a bit of sand. So using a 70-30 blend. If you can find that, you should be able to find that in your area somewhere in San Antonio, Texas. That is what I would go with because then you're getting really the best of both worlds. You're getting the sand for structure and you're also introducing some organic material from the compost or topsoil or whatever else you tend to mix with the sand, which is gonna overall get you the best result uh, for your lawn leveling project. And I've got a video here that I, I am finding right now and I will link in the chat for you. Let's see here, at Kevin... Brewster, if this works at Kevin, there we are, you're still here, and lawn leveling video. All right, and send. So once my browser catches up, you should see that, and you'll be able to, uh, you'll see the video that I'm um, that I'm talking about. And I'm gonna, once, it, once it 
paste, there we go, boom. All right, so check that out, Kevin. That video covers exactly what I'm talking about. And uh, if you need anything else, let me know. I would definitely do a bit of sand with your and your leveling project to get the best result. I really would. Um, but air it before and like, you know, watch that video. What I do with that video is what I would recommend. Other than the seeding part, you don't need to do that. You can omit that portion of it, but everything else, do that. All right, next up is Ben. He is back. He says, top dress to feed spot level for deeper spots. Um, both. So you can you can top. So if you're doing, again, what I recommend, the 70-30 blend, uh, Ben, you're doing both in one. You're, you're helping improve soil quality. So you're feeding the soil. That's what the compost portion is doing. And then the sand is for the structure part. That's going to help fill in those ruts, those bumpy areas. Like the video that I did last year on leveling ruts or leveling a bumpy areas in your lawn, um, that video shows what I am, um, I'm talking about as far as, um, as using a sand soil blend. So really that's, that's the benefit of doing that is that, you know, that blend works for both things. It works for adding structure and it also works for, um, for adding organic material as well to help, help feed the soil as well. And once I find the video here, I will send it to you if it shows up. Um, wow, I've been introducing some more videos. It's on page two now. All right, cool. Here you go, um, Ben. Watch this. If you've not seen it yet, you probably have because it's, it's one of my more popular videos. But if you've not seen this, watch this guy and it will, uh, it will give you everything. You'll see the process I'm talking about. All right. And it's entertaining to watch. It's a short video. But I totally went overboard on making that one, and it's it's fun to watch, even if you don't like top dressing. Okay, next up is Z Chen. He says, "Hi Ron, I applied too much liquid iron about a month ago, and it made the Bermuda look black greenish. Now it's yellow yellowish greenish. Any tips to help it recover? Just time, just time. It'll bounce back." Uh, Z, the thing I would say is, right for the time being, until it recovers, don't add any more iron. You know, let's not do any more. But it will it will um it'll recover from that. You know, I've not seen black green. I guess black greenish, kind of purplish. I've seen that. I've seen where, when you add iron um, and you go like a heavy iron app, what you'll find is you'll get the grass will turn like a really deep, deep, like super deep green. And then you're saying black greenish, but for me, it almost looks purplish. Like it goes to like this purplish color. And I've never, I've not experienced it where it turns yellow greenish. The yellow greenish almost sounds like it's, it's trying to recover. But um, but yeah, I just there's, just give it time. And if it's been a month, the yellow greenish sounds like that's the lawn beginning to come back to wait, you know, the way it should be. The black, which you talked about, the black greenish or purple uh, greenish, that is um, that's a telltale sign of a, of a very very high of a very heavy iron application. But normally within a couple of weeks, the, the lawn begins to recover from that. So the, given that it's been a month, I'd say you're you should be out of that out of the woods. I mean, I don't know how heavy you went. But um, it sounds like you've gone, you've gone through all the stage of too much iron applied to, uh, to the grass. Next up is Perpetual Student. It says, happy Friday, Ron. Good Friday. What's going on? Thanks, Perpetual. I, I appreciate you coming to hang out. Parker's Aquatics saying, hey, everyone. What's going on, Parker's Aquatics? I've answered your question, uh, Ben, about the introducing weeds and top dressing, so I won't do that again. And you also asked another question saying, will aeration pull up weed seeds? It might, it, it potentially can, but the big thing with aeration, again, I covered this in the video, but it's bears repeating now, is if you guys are renting an aerator, be sure to rinse it before you put it on the lawn. Devin, being the man to always, you know, give an even better answer, says if you're really trying to be a boss, um, get some bleach, like some be bleach in a spray bottle, and spray down the tines with bleach, and then rinse it, because that way you ensure there's no, there's there, you, you severely reduce the chance that you're going to introduce any fungus or you know um, or weeds or not weeds so much but, but any uh, fungus or disease or any problems from the lawn of where that aerator was into your lawn, you know what I mean? So um, so yeah, as far as pulling up weed seeds, it's possible if there's seeds you know deep in the soil, it could cause them to surface. But it's not it's not something that I would that would prevent me from aerating my lawn, Ben. I would still go forward with that. Uh, the only thing I'd say is if you're going to aerate, be sure to rinse it properly. You know, and if, if you're really trying to go all out, put a little bit of bleach on the tines to really clean it up. Because that's really one of the issues. You know, one, one, um, one thing you find, and it's, it, it, it's interesting how some viewers will tell me this. Viewers that have services that, um, to mow their lawns for them, not always, not always, right? Um, um, but those, those um, people tend to have more problems with weeds and more problems um, with 
or can have more problems with disease in their lawn because if that mower is it goes from lawn to lawn to lawn to lawn, they don't clean the mowers in between. They don't rinse them off in between. And again, it's not it's not like it's if you have a service come cut your lawn, this is definitely going to happen. But if the lawn, if that mower was used on a lawn where, there, where that had a lot of problems, the chances of that being transferred to your lawn goes up a lot um, because it's just kind of being passed all around. It's being used all on, on different types of lawns. So with aeration, especially given that you're also not just mowing, but you're actually you're actually punching cores, like you're getting down in the soil, you don't want to you don't want to put anything in the in the soil that you that you know other than. You're, what's already there. You don't want to bring any, any for, anything foreign into your lawn. So hope that helps, Ben. That's a, you didn't ask that question, but it's something that I wanted to talk about anyway because I know a lot of people are considering aerating their lawns this time of year and top dressing, and you really want to make sure that's a step you add to your process as far as making sure you clean up the equipment that you rent before you put it on your lawn. Robert Rainey says, my better half says I look like Ghostbusters when I'm out spraying in the yard. It does, it looks cool though. I mean, you're out there with your equipment, you got your gear on, you got your PPE on. It looks cool. You're out there in the lot. It makes you look like you're a pro, it makes you look like you're a pro man. You know, Robert, like you know what you're doing. Whenever, whenever, you, whenever your neighbors walk by, they see you out there spraying the lawn. That guy, he knows what he's doing. He's got his gear on, he's got his backpack spray on. There's a reason why your lawn looks the way it does, right? But, uh, but I get it. Ghostbusters, uh, I've not been called that one, but I can, I can see the resemblance. Especially if you have the wand still in the backpack sprayer as you're uh, as you're walking out there to start to start spraying. Okay, John Williams says, "Hey Ron, do you have any comparable products to Milo, and what are some of the advantages to what you carry?" So, um, do I have anything that's comparable to Milo? Mm, not really, not really. I don't have any organic fertilizers in the stores yet. It's something I'd like to add at some point, but I don't have anything that's organic uh, as far as like a granular product as yet. What are some of the advantages to what I carry? So if you go, we can we can we can dig into that really quick. So the biggest thing is that is the cost. Milo has gotten expensive over the uh, over the years, at least in my opinion, it has for given what it is. But if you take a bag of fertilizer, right? Like I would show you guys um, Cumic Max, but you can't get that right now, so I'm not going to like tease you with something that you can't get your hands on. So let's take another option, like say the flagship from Yard Mastery, right? Something like this. So one bag, one of these bags covers. Uh, 15,000 square feet, up to 15,000 square feet when applied at uh, the rate that they, that they say. And I think for all yard mastery for it's the, the rate's like three pounds per thousand square feet, right? So one bag of this stuff, if you get the 45 pound bag, you're looking at 67 to 68 dollars, the eight, the smaller bag, like 40 bucks. Um, like the cost per, per, per square foot covered is a lot more economical with a product like this versus um, versus something like uh, like Milo, because you figure one bag covers 15,000 square feet, one bag of Milo covers 2,500 square feet. And last time I saw it, Milo's around $17, they're about 17, between 17 and $18 with tax um, around here. So, you know, 17, $18 for 2,500 square feet, you know, if you go and you take that now and you, um, you what was it, multiply that by, by six, you know, let's do the math really quick. So we'll take 17 uh, times six. You're now at a hundred and, you know, you're $102, you know, for the same amount of coverage that you get out of a single bag of of, uh, of this product, out of Flagship. In addition, Flagship, I believe, and all of them, they also include um, micronutrients as well, right? So it has iron just like, just like um, the, uh, just like what Milo has. But you also get, if you look here, if you can see on the screen, it's, you may have to go to the store and see for yourself, but you also get um, boron, copper, iron, manganese, molybdenum, zinc. So you get an entire micronutrient stack as well. So it's it's another, in my opinion, it's another tier of product. It's, it looks like it's more expensive, but it's actually cheaper. It's actually much cheaper than using something like Milo when you compare, like you look at how much it covers and also what's included in it, right? So it covers more. Um, you're introducing more nitrogen, you're getting, you know, you're also getting some potassium in there and you're getting also getting uh, a full micronutrient stack as well when you use this product and you're not getting any of that with, um, with Milo. So it's just a different, it's different. You know what I mean? So hope that helps, John. Milo's still a great product. I'm not like throwing shade on Milo. Still, still love Milo. It's a great product. It's what I started with, but now it's just gotten too expensive to where it's not, it's not, like the the juice is the, the the you know the the juice isn't worth the squeeze in my opinion you know given what you're paying and given what you're getting to me to me if you have a smaller lawn and you still want to use it that's fine but if you have a larger property 
it's kind of hard to uh, to justify Milo when there are other options that, you know, per application are much cheaper and offer more at the same time. All right, next up is Huey Dewey and says, um, just discovered what I thought was a type of weed is actually Bermuda grass. Okay, Huey, is that nice? I mean, Bermuda is not a weed. If you want to call like St. Augustine a weed, I mean, arguments could be made for that, but not, we never, we never, never, ever referred to Bermuda as a weed, not on this channel anyway, but you know, we'll, we'll let it slide. So it's actually Bermuda. I recently overseeded with tall fescue seeds. Is one type going to choke out the other? Will the fescue grow at all? Um, so if the Bermuda was there first, it's unlikely that the fescue is gonna get rid of it. The thing is this, right? Bermuda can tolerate being cut taller and it really does well if it's cut shorter, whereas fescue really only does well when it's cut taller. So is the fescue gonna choke out the Bermuda? Kind of unlikely, kind of unlikely, especially if, it's, uh, if the Bermuda was already there. What I might tell you is if you want to injure the Bermuda, you can use like a product like, like Tenacity that is safe for your fescue, but will also damage the Bermuda. It's not gonna kill it, but if you want to start giving the, the fescue a competitive advantage, you can, you can do that. If there's also a way for you to physically remove it, so if it's only like a few clumps of Bermuda here and there throughout the lawn, if you can get out there and dig them out and like try to physically remove as much of it as you can, that's an option as well too. Um, but the whole idea of fescue choking out Bermuda is, is kind of unlikely to happen, really unlikely to happen, especially if that was there before you, uh, you put the fescue in, you know what I mean? So those are some options for you. You can use something like Tenacity to, to try, and, you know, try and injure the Bermuda to where it's less of a thing. You can physically remove it, which is kind of what I would lean towards. And, um, or you can just live with it. Or you can just live with it, you know what I mean? Grow the fescue nice and tall, get it nice and thick and make it healthy to where you don't notice the Bermuda as much. But uh, I don't believe that the fescue is gonna, is gonna do a pretty good job of choking the Bermuda out. Here's one scenario where it could do better, right? Let's say that the area that you seeded with the fescue was um, a, an area that uh, the, uh, it's shaded, right? So it's like, it's got a little more shade where fescue will tolerate shade better than Bermuda. In that situation, once you start introducing fescue and it starts growing taller, the fescue will likely do better than the Bermuda and it may eventually die off or fall off or become less of a thing. In those scenarios, fescue can begin to take over as a dominant grass. But if you've got equal sunlight, um, it's kind of unlikely. I'd say your best bet is to, you know, you can injure it with tenacity or physically remove it. That is what I would, the way that I would go, the route that I would, I would try and take for it. Um, and there's also, let me think, well, a fusillade, I believe might injure Bermuda. And look into a herbicide if you want, um, Huey, call fusillade, fusillade two. Uh, look into that, read the label for that and see if it is, um, if it's labeled for use on fescue for damaging Bermuda. That's, it's gonna be a bit more expensive product, but um, actually, if so I can get a link here and I can send it to you, that will, um, that will help. I don't, I, don't think I, I don't think I have one, but just, just look it up. Go to like Do My Own or whatever and see if you can find, uh, if you can find it. I don't think I have, um, I don't think I have that one handy. So just look it up. It's called Fusillade. Like just kind of how it sounds is how it's spelled. Fusillade. Um, all right, next up is Robert Mahores. He says, hey, Ron um, and all. So last 20 years of sand leveling took, took, it out, <laughs> took it out on me, but it really needs it again. What's the downside of waiting till next year? I pounced on the like gently. I'm not sure how you pounce on it a little gently, but we'll, we'll imagine that can happen, Robert. There's no downside. I mean, here's the thing, guys. You don't have to level your lawn every year. As a matter of fact, in some circles, in some circles, it would be considered craziness to level your lawn every single year. You know, you don't have to do that. It's not required. I mean, you know, my, my neighbors probably think I'm crazy when I tell them, oh, it's just not perfect yet. I'm trying to just fix a small area here. They think it looks great already. So I'd say most lawns will benefit, will, will, you'll get most of it, most of what you, you, the benefit from like two good top dressings. So one one, so the first one, and then the second one with a lot of spot top dressing to help fill in areas that you didn't, that you missed or that are uneven. And that's the majority of, of what you're gonna get um, out of it. You know, you're gonna get, that's the, best, that's the best benefit for the amount of work you're putting in. Can it get better? Yes, but it's just, but then you're, you're really getting into the law of diminishing returns really quickly when you start getting into doing this every year and multiple times, especially if, um, if it's just a lawn that you're just looking at. You know what I mean? If, you, if it's a lawn that is being heavily used, like you have kids or whatever, and they're always out there, they're, they're, they're beating it up, they're playing sports on it, and you know, it's just getting, it's getting beat up quite a bit. 
In that scenario, yeah, you can make the argument for leveling the lawn or doing some spot leveling every year, but if it's a lawn that's mainly ornamental, you're just it's just there to look really nice and cool, after two dot top dressings, you, you've gotten most of the benefits out of it. You know what I mean? I would just go just for spot top dressing at that point, unless you happen to be a YouTuber where you want to continue to make your content better and better, and every year people want to see leveling videos, so you find a way to either level your lawn or level a neighbor's lawn, and that kind of thing. So if you don't feel like doing it this year, Robert, you don't have to do it. We will not hate you for it. As a matter of fact, I'd almost cause it, call it a course of wisdom, given that your lawn already probably looks great. All right, next up is Joshua Gully. He's in the house. He says, I apologize for my tardiness. Well, we'll let it slide this time, Joshua, but don't make a habit out of it. Mm -hmm. it says, has anyone tried Green Brothers? They sell a 50-50 mix that is much cheaper than Super Sod. I don't, here's the thing, if, um, if they're the ones that use, that put peanut shells in their leveling mix, then I'm not a fan of it. If it's not them, then I can't comment. So I, I know there's, I, I thought it was them. I thought it was Green Brothers, but maybe I'm wrong. So Green Brothers, don't send me hate mail or don't, you know, don't send someone out to come yell at me or whatever if I'm, you know, if I'm slandering you guys. But I, I thought that for their organic material, they use um, peanut shells. If that's them, I am not a fan of that leveling mix because it's, it's a pain to get rid of that. So you have to get it, you get that stuff out of your, out of your lawn. It doesn't break down that quickly and um, it just kind of makes a bit of a mess. If it's if it's not them, I've never used a leveling mix, so I can't comment on it. But I, I I believe that's who you're who you're talking about. So if if that is them, like I would not compare that to the super sod leveling mix because literally when I did the video, the one that is linked in the chat, the uh, the leveling video, a leveling a bumpy lawn where I had the buckets of that stuff. That those those um those buckets were this mix that had a lot of these uh, those peanut shells in it. Um, and in that scenario, literally when I would when I would um, use that and do the spot top dressing, no joke, at least a quarter of the bucket was was like peanut shells. So I had some sand in there, some organic material, but like a quarter of it literally was peanut shells. And I went through and I would like get it up and 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 like rake it up and get it out of the lawn. I put it back in the bucket and that's what I was dealing with. So a lot of what you're paying for isn't stuff that is going to actually stay in the lawn if this is the one I'm talking about. But if it's not, completely ignore everything I'm saying. So hope that helps Joshua, but just ask them what do they use for their organic material and make sure it's not that because I am not, I am not a fan of that um, for top for leveling mixes. It just creates a big, a big mess. Next up is Clayton Wilson. He says, happy Friday, Ron. BYD is going to treat your lawn. Is BYD going to treat your lawn when you go on vacation? Next video. Great video. Uh, yeah, maybe. I'll break out the, I'll leave the, 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 I'll leave the keys to the greens master outside. He can start it up. And he can run the real mower on it. Here's the thing, though, with BYD. Assuming he's watching. I don't know if he is. Probably not. But uh, if he... I'm telling you something. If BYD ever, 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 ever makes a mistake of putting a real mower on his lawn, it's going to ruin him. It's going to absolutely ruin him. I'll say this. The first time, maybe not. But let's say he does it for... I'll say three weeks. Three weeks mowing twice a week with a real mower. He'll be done. He will be done. I think that's why he doesn't want to get one. He doesn't want, and also that's that's not you know that's not his thing, and he's the the audience that he serves don't really real mow, so I I, I get why he doesn't uh, go that route. But yeah, if he does, I'll throw him the keys to the uh, to the greens master, and he can absolutely lay some stripes on the lawn. It'd be cool to make that happen. All right, John Williams says share these videos, guys. Let's get some more people in here. I appreciate that, guys. Yeah, so that's that applies to all the content. Um, so you know not only the live streams, but also any of my content. If you guys share it, nothing says a stronger signal that you actually like a piece of content. Um, that, that you actually share it on other channels, you know, any Facebook groups or you're in, Reddit or wherever else you find, that, that really, really does help out uh, quite a bit. So if you watch my content and you liked it, share it. And uh, cause I'd, I'd appreciate it. It's a great way to uh, support the channel. Okay, next up is Carlos Bob. He says, I have a flooding issue in my backyard. My only option is to raise the area 15 square feet, one inch, but I'm not sure what kind of dirt to use. Eventually, I'd like to grow grass Bermuda there. Your thoughts. Okay, so, so it's one inch dip. So the thing, mm, it's probably more than an inch you need to raise it, Carlos. It may look like an inch, but it's, it's likely more than an inch, if I'm, if I'm being honest with you. Uh, so your options are, you can bring in um, like fill dirt, you know, you can bring in fill dirt and just do that and 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 build that area up. If that's just, if, if you're telling me that that section of your lawn is literally just a bowl, a small 15 square foot bowl, um, and you want to take the hit and just, you know, just bring 
fill dirt in to, to build that up and then have the grass, you know, either sod it or have the, or plug it and let the grass grow in and fill in. That is definitely an option. If you think one inch will do it. The one thing I might consider doing if you can, and I haven't seen the lawn, I don't know if this is even possible, but if you can figure out some way to contour the lawn of the where water actually drains from there, that would be a good thing to do as well. I'll tell you, like uh, one of the, you know, if we're talking about drainage, one of the best things that I did for my lawn was when I top, is top dressing it. Now it sounds like, you know, you guys would, would think that when you think about top dressing, you think about smooth lawn, you know, golf course lawn, real mowing really short. And yes, those are all the benefits. But the biggest benefit that I got out of doing that the, from the first time I did it was the ability of water to drain away from the surface of the lawn. Like it was, it made a, it made a night and day difference. So Yes, you can do that. You can use, you know, fill dirt or, you know, a soil sand blend or whatever you decide to go with to build that up. Um, but I, I'd also consider doing a good a good top dress. You know, in the in the process of doing this, here, here's what I would do. If you, if you are going to, if you're going to go this route, I would aerate that area. You know, I would aerate that area. I would open up the soil, the existing soil. And then if you're going to use uh, fill dirt, um, you know, put that down and then pack it down. If you have a way to roll it, you know, to, to, to really get it compacted, that would be good. And you're going you're gonna to likely have to do a couple of rounds of that because even though you think it's an inch, it's likely more than an inch. If it's, if it's, if water's pooling and staying there um, for any period of time, so you're probably looking at a, at a couple of different rounds of doing this to really get that area better. Um, if you can somehow, you know, like, I don't know if you can cut a channel or do something to allow that area to naturally drain. That is what I would, I would recommend. The next best thing would be to do what you're, what you're planning on doing. And I would use like a, a blend with some sand in it because that's going to help really pull water away from the surface, uh, whenever, whenever it rains. So hope that helps without having pictures. It's just really hard to say, yeah, I would do this or do that, but just, I'm just trying to picture a 15 square foot section in a lawn that's low and how I might fix it. And the first thing that comes to mind is I wanna fix the drainage. If I can't do that, then I'm thinking um, what I just described to you, which is aerate and then uh, you know top just with, with, with a material that has some sand in it, because that's gonna really help pull water away from the surface. Hope that helps. If you need anything else, let me know. And uh, and let me know how the the, the lawn, um, how, it, how it develops. How, whatever you decide to go, which way you, uh, what, what you, what you end up doing. All right, next up is Christopher Burkett. It says, my wife saw you comparing your True Cut and Toro. She asked why the Toro did such a better job. Great transition as to, <laughs> see, I'm trying to help you out, man. He says, great transition as to why I need to upgrade my McLean. It might happen now. Thank you, sir. Glad to help, sir. Glad to help. Glad to help. You know, it's a public service announcement. You know, she, I'm glad that she saw that, you know, the difference, there's a difference between the, the True Cut and what the Greens Master uh, lays down as far as the stripe action. And it's definitely going to be better than what the, um, the, uh, the McLean does. So yeah, I mean, it's, it's a, here's the thing you can, you can get to realize too, the greens master should cut better and it should lay better stripes because it's a lot more expensive mower. Like even though we can buy a greens master for, you know, $2,000, a thousand dollars, depending on what, you know, the condition it's in brand new, that's a 10, that's a five figure mower. It's like more than $10,000 brand new. Whereas a McLean or true cut brand new is like, Two thousand dollars or two to three thousand dollars, depending on what options you get, size of it, that kind of thing. So it's it's a different. It's designed to, to the level of cut is better because it's supposed to be better. The design is better as far as it holding um, uh, its settings better, and it's just it's just it's a better machine. It just costs a lot more, and it's designed to produce the best quality of cut, and it does a really good job at that. And I agree with you and wifey that you should consider uh, upgrading your McLean to a Greensmaster. You will not look back. Awesome mower. All right, next up, Chris Ferguson is in the house. He says, what is the best all around cool season weed killer? Something like Speed Zone or 2,4-D? Those are options as well. Um, what comes to mind for me is Tenacity. Tenacity works really well. Some people like Tenacity, some people hate Tenacity. Um, the, the, the friends of mine that have it and have used it, they, they tend to really like it. Um, the one thing I'll say is that the, to, to really get good results with Tenacity, you need to use surfactant with it. So the people that have used that and have had mixed results, Ten, I mean, not in all cases, but a lot of times they just they aren't applying it properly. They're not using, they're not applying it per uh, the recommendations in the label. So if you're looking for a great all-around uh, weed killer for cool season, I'll show you. We can go to the weed killer section of the Golf Horse Lawn Store, Mr. Chris Ferguson, and um, like you've got this broadleaf, this triad. This is um, good for cool and warm season grass. 
Um, but if you're looking for a good combination for both cool and for, for cool season grass, that's it's along the lines of like the Celsius certainty combination. Um, these two, you can do like tenacity and um, and sedge hammer. Like these two will play nicely together as far as cool season cool season lawns. Um, speed zone is an option too. There's people that'll take um, tenacity and mix it with speed zone. That's another option as well. So it just depends. It depends, like most things, what you're trying to target, like what weeds are you trying to get rid of, and that is that will really dictate what um, you know which herbicide you use. But if you're talking about like kind of like how I say Celsius is my go-to for warm season grass, if I could only have one herbicide, what would it be? And I'd say Celsius. If I had for cool season grass, if I could only have one herbicide, it would likely be Tenacity. So. Hope that helps, but those other ones are good too. You know, the ones you, the ones you put out there are also great options too, but tenacity is what I would uh, I would more lean towards. All right, let's see what else we have here. Um, Kumar says, hey Ron, what's your fertilizer of choice when your soil analysis says very low uh, phosphorus? I've heard of a uh, 0460 or triple 10 works, but not sure which to go with. Uh, it depends. I mean, if, you, if all you're trying to add is phosphorus, then the um then the 0460 is i mean it's going to have it's going to add a lot more of it the triple 10 will do it too um and as far as a more balanced option the triple 10 is not a bad way to go because yes it's going to take you longer to to build up the phosphorus levels but then you're able to use one product right like if you use like a 0460 you're going to have to use also something that has nitrogen and potassium in it, right? Because that is not, that's not feeding, it's not, it's not adding any nitrogen, not adding any potassium and your grass needs those as well. So it really depends on you. You could go, it's, it's your choice. The, the triple 10 or triple 12 or like some kind of a balanced fertilizer is a good option if you're just trying to do a one and done and just realize that it's going to take you a little bit longer to build the phosphorus levels up. Um, or if you just want to just focus on that and you don't mind applying multiple products, then you could do the zero zero the zero forty six zero. Um, it really depends on you. Either either strategy can work well. It just depends on how much time you have and what your preference is. What I might do, Kumar, is you might do. As I haven't seen your soil test results, so I, don't, I have no idea how low your phosphorus levels really are. But you might do a zero forty six zero one time, like do a single application of that. And then switch to a balanced fert, like the triple ten or a triple twelve, to feed the lawn, you know, over the growing season. That's that's a strategy that could work as well. So, hope that helps. But without seeing your soil test results, it's hard for me to give you a great answer. But that's just I'm just trying to give you the pros and cons of both of both ways. All right. Next up is Dennis Stazaki. It says, "I hey Ron, I am having trouble with keeping my Tiffany Bermuda looking healthy in this Texas heat." Um, my city only allows watering one day a week. Any tips for watering better or products like hydrotain? Yeah, so you already know, um, Dennis. So if you're only able to water once one day a week, then you can only water one day a week. You know, you don't want to get a fine or a ticket or anything like that. Um, and then hydrotain is a strategy or is a good product that will help. So what for those of you guys that know what, what, what um, Dennis is talking about, if you go to the Golf Course Lawn Store and then go to Shop, and then soil moisture management, you have hydrotain both in a granular and liquid form. You have like a, a three pound bag, 15 pound bag, and then you have multiple multiple options. The hose end sprayer is probably the easiest because it's got, you know, you literally attach it to your hose and then it, it just, you know, you're, you don't have to worry about mixing anything. It literally is just you need your hose to put it down, which is super easy. Um, uh, so it depends on which way you want to go, but this will help reduce or to reduce the watering requirements and will also reduce how quickly the lawn will go into stress due to lack of water, like what you're dealing with in Texas. The long short of it is, is Dennis, is that we also just need rainfall. You know what I mean? You need rainfall. You need to, you need to, you need to be able to water the lawn. And hydrotain is a great way to help take the edge off of the grass, not getting as much water as it really needs, you know? So if you're not doing that as yet, I would absolutely con I would consider adding that to your program. I, I started doing it last year and I haven't looked back. Like I've already got a hydrotain app down on my lawn already for the season. I will do another one probably the middle of June and that should cover me. That should carry me throughout the, at least the peak part, the, the hottest part of uh, this growing season. So you already know, just get some hydrotain, put that down. And that's going to, that's going to be the best you can do given what you have to work with, you know, hope that helps. Okay, Huey Dewey is back. He says, I performed a soil test last week and I put down fertilizer and lime. I want to do another soil test this weekend. If levels improved, 
a bit. Is it okay to add more fertilizer and lime? Okay, so it's not enough time, Huey. So if you did a soil test last week, I'm not, I'm not sure which soil test are you doing because I'm not, I mean, it really, um, here's the thing, regardless of soil test, which soil test you're doing, that's too soon. <laughs> that's too soon. Like if you, um, if you did a soil test, let's say at the beginning of May, right? And based on the soil test results, it says you need lime in your lawn. So you put down lime, you put down fertilizer. The soonest that I would do another soil test would be the end of this month. So right before June starts, that is as soon as I would do another soil test and I would make sure I do it before I do any more inputs to the to the lawn, to any more inputs to the soil. So it takes time, especially uh, lime. It takes time for lime to react with the soil and for you to see a difference for in the pH, for the pH to begin trending up. Uh, you know, if you're really trying to be um, picky, you know, you can look at, I would say, look at your soil test results in three month chunks. Any more than that, any sooner than that, and you're just going to be chasing your tail. I would say look look for trends over, say, a three-month period. So if you did a soil test in March then and June, that's when you would do another one to see if the inputs that you put in as far as your fertilizer, as far as your lime, hey, is my pH beginning to trend up? Is it beginning to move in the right direction? And that will let you know if you need to add more lime or you know, make adjustments at that point. But every, every week is definitely far too often. A month, every month is even that's too much. I would really do it uh, quarterly, quarterly at the at the absolute most is what I would would say, um, Huey. It it, it just takes longer than that. You know, you can't just put down a fertilizer and a week later do another pull another, pull more cores and expect that what you just did last week is going to be reflected um, in the results for this week because the, the, just the cycle of how fertilizer becomes available can take longer than that. Let's say you're using like a granular fert. Um, when you put a granular fert down. It takes a while for the microbes to break down that fertilizer and then release it in a format that's available to the grass for uptake. That could take, in most cases, that will take a week or longer. So, you know, it's a week is just way, way too soon. I would say if you're if you're doing a quarterly testing, most people would say is a lot. Like doing it four times a year, most people would say a lot. A month is way too much. So I would I would just um, you know, you did your results, you did your test a week ago. Let that ride and then test again would be in May, so June, July, August. So the end of July, early August, you can do you want to pull some more cores and, and run some tests, you could do that too. Hope that helps. I'm just trying to chase, I'm trying to prevent you from like driving yourself crazy by trying to do that every week. Because it, it, it doesn't work that way. It takes longer than that for the for the changes to be reflected. But good stuff. I'm glad that you're testing your soul. That's important. All right, next up is Justin Aguilar. He says, Hey, happy Friday, Ron. Is there anything I can do to help speed up recovery for spring dead spot in my Bermuda? I've aerated, and unfortunately, little rain in Texas. Not really. Uh, you know, you can. It's mainly just a time thing. Like I had um, an area with spring dead spot in my lawn that is already it's already filling in a lot better. Like it's it's filling in faster. It's already it's it's, it's recovering nicely. Um, it's just a time thing. If you want to put down like some compost in the area to kind of help encourage the grass to spread into that area, you can do that. But it really is just a time thing. Time mowing it, like like regular mowing. Like if you're real mowing your lawn, you're mowing it short. Mowing regularly is going to encourage that lateral growth. It's going to encourage the, the grass to fill in that area a bit faster. But it's mainly just a time thing, Justin. There's not there's not a, a ton of ways you can really do. Not a ton of things you can do to really accelerate that that process. I would not recommend throwing a lot of nitrogen at the lawn or anything like that to try and speed it up. Just give it time. Continue mowing it, and it, it will fill in. Uh, over the course of this growing season. Really, once it starts getting really hot here in the next week or two, um, you're going to be surprised how quickly the lawn fills in and really begins to thicken up, especially if you're mowing it regularly. All right, next up is Camaro 300, 630 horsepower HP. Is that wheel horsepower or crank horsepower? Are we talking about Camaro 630? I got to know. You putting it down at the tire? Or are we talking? Uh, are we are we doing like we doing like special? We do doing special dyno math to go up, come to that six hundred thirty horsepower number. I'm just giving you a hard time. You know that, right? Don't. And I know car guys. They they always want to say on this day, this humidity, this temperature, my car's making this much power. So, anyway, your question is: Hey, Ron, where are you getting your Verticutter rental? So if you if you call up the same people that I get my top dressing like kit rental from, the guys at Keystone. It's called Keystone Rental. They are in Duluth, Georgia. When you call there, ask for a guy named Dan, tell him I sent you. He'll probably charge you double because of that. Uh, but uh, but they have a verticutter that you can you can rent. And it, and it will fit, I, mean, I know this, I actually did it. It will fit in the back of a Highlander. So if you have like a, a, a larger SUV, 
You don't need a truck to get it home. It's actually fairly light. It's not as heavy as like an aerator is. You can actually get it in the back of an SUV. They have a loading dock to where you can literally back up um, to that and you can drive it right into the back of your SUV, assuming that it's a larger one uh, to get it home and back. So hope that helps. And that's only good for you if you're in the Northeast Georgia area. So, but yeah, Keystone rental in, in uh, they're off of, 120, like 120, the quick trip 120, they're right off of 120 um, and Petrie Industrial. They can, they can, they have that stuff. So hope that helps. If you need anything else, let me know. Chris or Chris Sean is back. He says, hey, Ron, been following for a while. First time chatting. Welcome. Thanks for coming to, and, uh, and, you know, coming out of the shadows and coming to say hi. I really do appreciate it. He says, what do you think about using only compost to level and top dress St. Augustine? I got clay and I stay in Houston. Help me out, please. So yeah, so for a top dressing material, I think it's great. As a way of like just feeding the soil and putting some, a lot of organic material down, getting the grass to just get nice and green and pop with a lot of great color. I think it's awesome. As a, as a use for leveling, not so good because that compost is gonna break down and it's just not gonna, it's just the wrong thing to do if, if your goal is to level the lawn. If you, if you want if you want to level the lawn and have it stay, have it stick, you want to use sand. You want to have a bit of sand in with the St. Augustine. Now, given that you have St. Aug, you're probably not mowing very short. So if you want to go a little bit heavier on the compost portion, so you go like a 50-50 blend or maybe like, I don't know, like mostly compost is maybe like say 60% compost or 70% compost and 30% sand, so you kind of flip it um, to where you get a little bit of leveling, a little bit of structure, that could be an option for you. But the, the fact that you have St. Augustine, you're not cutting it super short. Um, so you know the need for it to be you know, super level like we do with Bermuda really isn't as, um, as critical. So I, I would lean more towards the compost route, like what you're, like what you're doing. But just, just know that if you use compost, it's a great way to improve the quality of the soil and to get, you know, it's almost like a free fertilizer application, um, but it is not good for leveling. Like it's not like, you, even, if you, even if you level it, like a year, 18 months from now, you're gonna be pretty much back where you started. There's something to keep in mind as far as that goes. So I hope, hope that helps. Next up is Ray Skinner. Ray Skinner's in the house. He says, hey, Ron, do you recommend fertilizing before or after top dressing? I recommend fertilizing before top dressing. So I, I recommend doing it as part of the top dressing process. So the way, what I consider to be top dressing a lawn, right? If you're doing it, if you are leveling and doing everything like going like all out, you would aerate, you would fertilize, and then you would top dress. If you're not doing that, it doesn't really matter. You could still, you could fertilize first and then top dress on top of it. That, if I'm not aerating, that is like that is really what I would lean towards doing. I, I'm more a fan of getting the, fertili the, the fertilizer down before laying the leveling mix or top dressing material on top of it. But you can also do it afterwards too. It doesn't it doesn't really matter. It's not like you're you're committing some cardinal sin or it's just not it's not going to work if you fertilize after top dressing. But if you just think about it, Ray, uh, like fertilizer needs to get in the soil to work, right? That it needs to get in the soil so it can be broken down and become available to the grass and make the grass green and grow and do all the great things that fertilizer does for us, right? If we think about top dressing as soil, or at, you know, it's going to be part of our soil, it makes sense that why wouldn't we put down the thing that needs to get into the soil first, and then add soil on top of it? Because now the, the fertilizer doesn't have to get past the top dressing. You know, you're just you're just speeding up the process. So either way is going to work. It's not like it. You're you know, if you if you don't do that, you're not going to get a good result. But it just makes more sense to me to fertilize prior to top dressing. So hope that helps. Um, but again, it doesn't. It doesn't really matter either way. You're not really, um, you're not really, you know, you're really, you're really not. It's 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 six half a dozen, six half a dozen. But hopefully, my the reasoning by behind why I say what I say makes sense to you. All right. Next up is Grasshopper Lawn Care. Says Happy Friday, everyone. What's going on, Grasshopper? Hopefully, you're doing all right. And then next is Milnosh the Gamer. He says, "Got my soil test back. It shows high calcium and magnesium." My pH is also alkaline at 7.1. I mean, it's a little bit alkaline. It's not, I'm gonna call it like crazy alkaline. Um, what are some options for getting those down Those down in the range while not ignoring all the other micros, um, macros that are low? Okay, um, Milnosh, so what I would do is, you didn't tell me anything about um, your, your um, the macros, like what your um, nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium are like. Um, that's something I'd wanna know. 
Um, because here's the thing. Most fertilizers, the salts that are in, in most fertilizers, they tend to have like an acidif, uh, like they tend to have a lowering effect on pH over time. Like if you if you fertilize your lawn regularly, it tends to help the pH to trend a little bit lower just by the mere fact of doing that. The fact that you're at seven one, that is on the higher uh, end of the like the Goldilocks zone. You really want to like mid sixes, but just like five eight is is sort of okay, 7-1 is also okay, you know? So uh, the calcium and magnesium, I wouldn't do anything about those. Like, I mean, for the most part, those are those are pretty difficult to lower in your soil without also uh, throwing out, you know, micro, the, um, the macros as well. So uh, the, the strategy for lowering any of the levels in your soil would be bag all your clippings, don't return them to the soil, and over time you are gonna lower the levels of, uh, the nutrient levels in your soil. The problem with doing that is that you're doing it for everything. So you're not just gonna be just targeting calcium and magnesium, you're gonna be lowering your nitrogen, your, your phosphorus, your potassium, and also your micronutrients. So I don't, I'm not a fan of doing that. I would say just don't add um, any products or, or try and refrain from using products or fertilizers that have more calcium or have magnesium in them. So if you are adding, um, well, you wouldn't add lime because your pH is already high, but you, just, you, just, you would just stay away from adding more of those products to the soil feed your lawn over time, just keep feeding it over over time. Um, you can start using, you know, for, as a nitrogen source and as a way to help bring the pH down if you really want to do that, like uh, like citric acid or also like um, like a sulfate, like an elemental sulfate, like those will help bring pH down. And, and um, like the, the sulfates are, um, oh, they're like, they, they're like 21% nitrogen, I believe, in, is what you'll find in a lot of those products. So it's a way to, you know, get some N into the, the lawn as well, but uh, but yeah, and as far as your micros, just apply them. Like if you wanna, you can use a fertilizer that has micronutrients in them, like uh, like some of the Yard Mastery first that have them in the uh, in the granular, or you can spray your micronutrients using a product like, uh, like Nutrizolve. Like we have that in the, in the Golf Force Lawn Store. I think it's currently out of stock. It should be back in stock next week. I mean, everyone's been buying it up. But if you have a micronutrient that you like to use, you can spray that as an option as well. So hope that helps. And uh, I just, I really wouldn't worry about trying to lower the calcium and magnesium. Just don't, don't add any more. Great question. Next up is Frank Huang. He's back, he says, hey Ron, follow up on Celsius Certainty. I follow the rate specified in your video, only spotty yellow, not the whole yard. I spot treated some nuts edge. It's probably how I applied it, thanks. Yeah, so if you, if you went, if you did the back and forth, right? If you went the the mm -mm -mm route, you know, or like the mm -mm route, like in the back and forth, that's two apps. That's two applications. So uh, the rate that, like the way I show using it in the video is how you should spray it. Like literally just one nice, that like, gradual rate pass, just nice smooth pass and that's it. And the entire plant is not gonna be all soaking and dripping in the herbicide when you're done, but enough of the leaf's gonna be covered, enough that's gonna, it's gonna seriously injure it and or kill it. So you're using like more professional grade herbicides and you don't need to, you don't need to drench them. You know what I mean? So, uh, but, and, and, and it's a learning learning experience, Frank. The next time you do it, you'll just make one pass and then you're not gonna have that problem, right? So it will bounce back. You know, that's a, that's a good thing about those, that combination is that it is relatively um, easy on Bermuda. Had you done that with something like, uh, so like dismiss, ooh. You'd be telling me it wouldn't be spotty yellow. It'd be a lot. More, it'd be very, very yellow. So, uh, dismiss is a great product. I mean, if, you know, anyone that makes dismiss, don't get mad at me. It's a great product, but it is. It is going to discolor the lawn when you use it. So, all right. Next up is Tim Tio says, uh, "Hey Ron, what's going on, Tim? Thanks for coming to uh, hang out. <laughs> and then you're using the let's see the formula for converting um, Celsius to Fahrenheit." That's cool, Tim was cute, I, I like it, I, I dig it, it's fun, that's fun. All right, next up is Chris uh, Sob, uh, Sobsick, he says, hey Ron, can you apply Hydrotain, Carbon Pro-G, and Granular Fertilizer all on the same day? Yes, you absolutely can, Chris. Uh, the one thing I would say to this is, if you are doing, huh, if you are doing the Granular Hydrotain, this is easier to pull off. You know what I mean? If you're doing the granular hydrotain, this is easier to pull off because really the liquid, you need to water it in after application. So if you're doing granular hydrotain, which gives you a, a much bigger window, like a couple of days as far as when you have to water it to activate it, you can absolutely do hydrotain, carbon pro G, and granular fertilizer in the same day. As a matter of fact, I did that very thing last year in my major top dressing video on the back lawn. I did uh, hydrotain, I did carbon, I didn't do carbon pro G, I used essential G. 
I did uh, Essential G, I did Hydrotain, and I did a Granular Fertilizer, aka Humic Max, all on the same day, all within hours of each other, and got a great result. Uh, Ferro Bermuda is in the house. He says, yes, I'll set a photo of the 48-inch uh, R&R rake. Hope to have some content on the, sa on the sand leveling on Monday. Sir, thanks for everything. I want to look for it, man. Definitely let me know. I'll, uh, I will, uh, I'll look out for that, Daryl. You can't, you can't, all your videos, they get better every time. So keep doing what you're doing. All right, next up is Minister Murray says, what's up, my good brother? What's going on? I am doing well. Thanks for you coming to hang out. I really do appreciate it, guys. And I got to tell you guys, um, I, uh, as far as, you know, we no one's asked about, about PGR um, as yet, but I got to tell you, the whole idea of like doing the, like a lower rate a couple times per week, I'm really liking what I'm seeing on the lawn with that. Like as far as the tip burn, it's pr pretty much non-existent after application. And um, it just looks good. I mean, it, it, the lawn's not, it's not putting too much down and the, the grass seems to be tolerating it really well. So, you know, once I get through this in June, testing in mid-June, I'll probably make a video on it talking about how I use Primo and the rates that I use. I mean, you guys already know, as I told you. Uh, for doing like the the multiple like the the app every couple of weeks at a lower rate, but um, I'm confidence is high on that man. I'm really looking forward to how that how it's gonna do. All right, Furry Bermuda says hit the like button, Ron. Can you play some of that funk music, sir? I can, I can. Well, I'll take a sip of my lemonade. My throat's getting a little bit dry. I can absolutely do that. Can absolutely do that. My jam. One of my jams. So if you guys are watching or fans of the channel, which video, which recent video was this song in? It was a recent video, so it was, it was in my last five videos, this song is in it. Which one? Let's see how what, how which how hardcore you guys are as far as like Ron Henry YouTube viewers. Which which video was it in? All right, uh, thanks uh, thanks for that, uh, Daryl. I hope you enjoyed that, and I'm um, hopefully you guys touched the like button as well for me. I would appreciate it. The the I mean, this we're pretty good on likes, but if anyone has not hit that like button as yet, please do so. Please do so. And let's see, Malinois Nation says unless it's salt water, uh, yes, don't you don't put salt water on your lawn. That would not be good. Let's not do that. All right, Winchard is here. Short story says hello. Short story here. Essential G has the smell of success. I got a delivery from Amazon. Delivery guy walked up on my lawn. When he got to the back of his truck, he checked his shoes for poop. Uh, yeah, it does have it does have an OD, you know, essential G to it. It does it does have a little bit of a little bit of smell to it. But uh, hey, small success, man. What what can you do? It's a, it's a great product, and uh, whatever you get you get used to it. It's I, I don't know. I don't think it's as bad as Milo. I think Milo is worse. Milo is worse than ESG for sure. I think when What do you think? All right, wind chariots in the house. What's going on, Justin? The house is coming along really well. Speaking of houses, I keep following you on Instagram. It seems like you're doing really, really good stuff. It's gonna, it's gonna be pretty awesome when it's done. And for any of you guys that want to follow cool season content, and or right now these days, you can follow his Instagram and seeing how his house is done. Definitely check out the Lawn Whisperer. He's got lots of great content. Um, great YouTuber. Uh, check him out and uh, give him some love and support. Next is Cats Meow Twenty One says Bermuda is not holding the color. We have a problem. At the start of the season, the pH was at 6.7, having sample tested now, but does high or low pH cause color to not hold? Appears to be light green. No, um, not really, um, cats me out. So really, the, the big thing about pH, why it's so important, is that it really affects nutrient availability. So you think about like nitrogen, you know, phosphorus, potassium, like those being available for the plant um, and being, you know, being able to be taken up by the plant, it really works best whenever the pH of the soil is in the mid sixes. If you get really low, um, those the, the become become un unavailable, and when the pH gets really high, like take like some of your micronutrients like iron, they be, they get locked up to where the grass the the the, the soil the, the grass is not going to be able to take advantage of them. They're not going to be able to to access them. So pH really the big thing of why that's important is that it really affects you know the fertilizers that you're putting in your in your lawn that your ability of the grass to really take advantage of it. So that's so that's thing one. Six, seven is great. I wouldn't worry about it. You're in great shape. Things that can cause your, your lawn to not hold color, um, not enough water can do that, uh, not enough uh, nitrogen, not enough iron. So while you're looking at your soil test results, if you get recent ones, I'm not sure when your most recent one was, but when you get your soil sample back, 
Um, look at what it says for your nitrogen levels, your potassium, your phosphorus levels, and also for your iron levels. If those are low, that will cause the lawn to lose its color a bit. But in addition to that, if you happen to live in Georgia and we're going through a mild drought right now where we're not getting any water, that's also going to cause the lawn to be discolored a little bit, for it to be a little bit lighter, a lighter color. Um, so there's a combination of factors that can cause the lawn to not really pop. Inadequate water, like I said, inadequate fertilizer, um, you know, not enough nitrogen, not enough iron. So those are those are all those things, a com or combination of those things can cause what you are referring to. But your pH being at 6.7, that's not that's not a negative. It, you know, that that's actually that's great. I wouldn't I really wouldn't worry about that. So your pH is good. And that's the thing that's actually the hardest to change and uh, change quickly. All the other things you can fix a lot faster. So based on your soil test results when they come back. Um, you know, just uh, build your fertilization program over the next couple of months based on what those results tell you. So good stuff. Hope that helps. All right. Next up, Ben Raham says, everyone having bourbon flavored lemonade, give Ron the thumbs up. Can you imagine if I had bourbon flavored lemonade? That'd be interesting. All right. Next up here is a wind chair. It says Grand Marnier and a stogie. Yeah. Grand Marnier is, is a, it's just pretty good, man. It's a good, um, I know some people mix it, take it straight. How, what, what mixed drink did you, did you use? Uh, Grand Marnier. And it, back home, we use that in uh, pina coladas, which I don't know if that's, that's you guys probably get mad because it's, like, it's actually a really, it's, it's not an inexpensive um, uh, drink, but, it, but we actually put that in pina coladas back home. So fun fact. All right, next up is Jack Flash. He's in the house. Actually, wait, what am I doing? I guess some super stickers I haven't gotten to. Let me get those guys. I apologize. Let me see if there's anything else. I got one here from Melly Mel. Let me get this here first. Get take care of that. Super chat received. Super sticker from Melly Mel says, pair character lifting some weight saying, keep it up. I appreciate the support, Melly Mel. I apologize for not getting you to your super sticker earlier. I did not see it. So I, I apologize for that. So I appreciate the support. Thank you so much. Next up is Jack Flash. He says, about to rain five to seven days in a row. So you must be in Georgia. You must be in my neck of the woods. I'm mowing twice a week for the first time. How do you make this work? Mow wet or wait for or wait it out. So here's the thing, um, uh, Jack. It's unlikely that we're gonna have seven days of just straight rain. It could happen, but kind of unlikely. So when you get a little patch of dry weather when it's not raining, get out there and mow. Uh, you know, it's uh, the things you can do too to prevent you from having a big mess on your hands when you're able to get out. When you are able to get out and mow, is if you've not considered using growth regulator in your lawn. It's a good reason to do it. So the one that I, I mean, my lawn's already is in regulation and we'll stay that way throughout the rest of the season. But like something like Primo, uh, Primo Max, it's a great product, really easy to apply. And for a situation where you're not going to be able to mow the lawn for a couple of days because of you know a lot of rain or whatever, it's going to help slow down that top growth to where you're not going to have, you know, a two inch lawn by the end of this whole thing. But the, the long short to answer your question is it's unlikely to rain every day for five to seven days or for or to rain all day for five to seven days. You know, if you get like a, a few hours of um, of dry weather to where, and, and the lawn is not saturated, obviously, uh, then you can get out there and mow. So I, I'm pretty sure I'm still gonna be able to meet a, a lot of my mowing. I mean, I might have to change things up to where I'm not able to mow in the morning every single time. I'll have to mow around whenever there's rain in the forecast, uh, but you, you should still be able to get that done. Should be able to do that. I mean, it's possible, but kind of unlikely that it's going to be 100% rain for seven days. And if that were the case, you just got to wait and just mow at the end of the seven days after the lawn dries out a bit. All right, next up is RD. He says, hey, Ron, I have four septic leach lines in the front yard, each 50 feet and 50 and six feet apart. Makes the yard wavy as they sit three inch lower in the grade. If I level with a set with a 70, 30 compost sand mix, will it kill my Bermuda? Any advice? Lawn is in recovery mode from being neglected, got rid of weeds and grass is beginning, beginning to grow. Will it kill the Bermuda? No, but I'm trying to see the rest part of it. You said three, uh, three inches. Um, no, that's not enough to kill the Bermuda, but I still wouldn't do it all in one go. I really wouldn't. Uh, you know, I would I would do a couple of top dressings to build that area up. You know, do one now, end of um, June, do another one if you want, or maybe after the 4th of July, so the lawn is nice. After 4th of July, do another one. And then that should be enough to get you fairly close. And just do, do it over time. It's not going to kill the Bermuda. Bermuda is incredibly hard to kill, even when you want to kill it. Um, but I would take an approach of multiple top dressings to uh, to fix this versus trying to do it all in one go. I mean, three inches is quite a bit of material. Now, if it were three inches in like a, just a very 
narrow, like you have like a rut, right, in the lawn that is, you know, I don't know, four inches wide and it's like a straight line and you want to build that up. Sure. And that that's a scenario where, yeah, I could I could see doing that. But if it's a big area like, you know, I'm trying to imagine this, but if you're talking like a like a five or six foot wide section of the lawn, that's too much to do three inches all at once. You know what I mean? That's that's uh, that's too much. If you get any kind of any amount of appreciable rain, it's going to wash it out and make a big mess. So just take it take the approach of fixing it or building it up over time. It's not going to kill the Bermuda, but it, it will make a mess if you try and do it all in one go. Next is Clayton Wilson. He says, um, Ron, regarding the cost of products in the store, don't discount the expertise you advise for using the product properly. There's value in that. That's exactly it. You know what I mean? Have you guys ever seen that on the uh, that, that video, the guy on Instagram? You see people are using his voiceover all the time where it's um, like they show guys, people doing like woodworking or doing like masonry work where he's saying like, I don't have the best prices. I don't have the cheapest prices. If you know, if you... If you want the cheapest prices, I'm not your guy. You know, just that, and that, and that's really me. I'm not. I'm. I'm really not apologetic about it. Like, I, if you are looking for things at the absolute, the absolute cheapest products at the absolute cheapest prices, I am not your guy. But what you will, but it, but the one promise I will make to each and every one of you is whatever I recommend, it is it is the best that I know of within reason, and it's something that is going to produce good results. And in addition to what you're saying, Clayton. In addition to the product is you in cases where I can, there's going to be a video or lots of good documentation telling you exactly how to use it, which has value. I mean, also like you have the live stream, you can actually ask me questions about it, right? So all those things together have a lot of value. So really the price of the things in the store is a bargain when you, when you factor all that in. If you compare like the accessibility you guys have to me compared to other YouTubers in the lawn care space, it's a bargain. Paying a few dollars more for something on the store is a no-brainer. At least it would be for me anyway. All right. Next up are a couple of super chats. Let me run down here and grab them. One from Chris Dada. He says, "Super chat received." Thanks, Ron. Thanks for all you do. Does gypsum relieve compaction for clay soils? It is. It is said to do that. Yes. Um, my len. I'm sorry, I guess lawn. My lawn is hard as a rock, and trying to get this resolved asap. Okay. So, Chris, if your lawn is ro as hard as a rock, yes, adding gypsum can help. However. The best way to, re to relieve compaction in like hard as rock clay soil is to aerate it. Take a physical approach. So what I would say is, and again, that's more work, but get out if you can, like the day before, um, you may take a couple of waterings depending on how, how hard your soil is. Water it to kind of soften it up a little bit. Go out and run an aerator and then aerate it and make multiple passes. Like don't go light, like beat it up in multiple directions, like really try and open the lawn up. That's going to do a lot for helping compaction, helping relieve compaction. And given that you have a heavy clay soil, that's a situation where sweeping up or removing the cores makes a lot of sense. You know what I mean? Because I know there's, and that my level, my video on aeration, I specifically talk about that. Um, so if you have like a really hard compacted soil and the, you have heavy clay soil that when they get hard, they turn into like small little bricks. That's a scenario where once you finish aerating it, you can remove the, uh, remove the cores from the lawn. But to answer your question, gypsum, yes. But if you want to me, what I would do is I would aerate it and then I would add gypsum on top of that anyway. You know what I mean? Gypsum by itself is, um, while it, it is like a loosener, it will help. It's not going to beat like hollow tine aeration. It's just not like nothing, nothing really beats that. You know, nothing beats like literally removing plugs, creating voids all throughout the lawn. So the lawn has a place to kind of relax into, you know? So that's, that's what I would recommend. Also have a super sticker from RD with a thumbs up. Super chat received. I appreciate it, RD. Thank you so much for the love and support. I really do appreciate it. Let me find where I was and put some Tango Bolero on for LG while I scroll back up. Where am I? Where am I? Where am I? There we are. Okay. All right. Our next question is from RD. <laughs> he says, Bermuda, any advice? My mower scalps at the peaks. Lawn is in recovery mode from being neglected. Got rid of all the weeds. The grass is beginning to grow. Um, there we go. Yeah, so as far as it's scalping, you have two choices. You can either level the lawn um, to where it scalps less, or you can raise the height of cut up. So for most people, raising the height of cut up is the easier way to go as far as um, the way to, to do that, because you don't, want the lawn, you don't want the lawn to keep scalping in the same area over and over and over again. I would just raise the mower up one notch. That's a good way to get around it. Or the more the more involved route is you can level the lawn, which will help 
you know, will help um, smooth things out to where you're, you're, you're less prone to scalp at lower cutting heights. So hope that helps RD. That would be my advice. And just keep mowing it, man. Raise the how to cut up and just keep mowing. Mow, 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 and mow some more. And that's really gonna help the lawn really fill in and get, and get looking good. All right, Jeffrey Robinson is up next. He says, hey, Ron, it was great seeing you and BYD together on the lawn destroying the neighborhood competition. Ron Henry and BYD sounds like old school WWF uh, tag team champs. Yeah, man, it's like the Steiner Brothers or I'm trying to think, trying to go back real old school. The Steiner Brothers were my, were my guys whenever I was I was a kid and I used to watch wrestling. So, um, but yeah, yeah, it was it was fun. It was, it was cool collaborating with BYD. It was really generous of him for him to have me out. And you guys seem to like it. So we'll have to figure out a way to do it again uh, sometime soon. It's very cool. And Mel, I do appreciate the uh, the contribution. Thank you so much. I really do appreciate that. Uh, you know, it's a great great way to support the channel. And uh, thanks thanks for um, for the super chat or for the the uh, super sticker. All right. So Melly Mel is back and says my po <laughs> uh, po is still in my yard and it's shacking up with the grubs and we have a graduation party on the 29th. Okay. So what are we asking here? Are you asking how to clean a lot of that up? So the poa. Melly Mel should die off. The 29th, eh, well, it's nine days. Uh, the POA should die off or it will die off over time as it gets hotter. If you want to get rid of it, I mean, you can use certainty. Certainty will kill it and we'll get rid of it. That's a way to eliminate it. But if you, um, you can also just pull it. You know what I mean? That's another way. To, if you want to save money, you just want it gone and not wait for the herbic for a herbicide to work, you can just get out there and just, you know, just manually pull it and weed it. That's That's an option. That's an option too. So I might do that. I might get out there and just pull it and then start mowing and mowing and mowing and mowing and try and really encourage the Bermuda, the Bermuda to fill in and grow and would do that. As far as the grubs, what I would recommend for that is a good insecticide. Um, my favorite is one called a Celeprin, but I'll show you both options for that, Melly Mel. So this time of year, it's a great time to get down. Well, you can do it sooner, but now's a great time of year to get down your insecticide as well as a preventative fungicide. A Celeprin is is like your Cadillac um, insecticide. It's really, it's gonna be a bit more expensive, but as far as um, it covering more things, meaning it kills more stuff and it doesn't kill the stuff that we don't want dead. So as far as being very effective against grubs, um, army worms, which is really big, like last year, the, like a lot of the country got terrorized by army worms. A celeprin, both the granular and the liquid will do that. So either one of these will work. They're both equally effective. Uh, the liquid gives you more options as far as application rate. The granulars are a little bit easier to apply for a person that's not super comfortable using a backpack sprayer. So either one will work well, regardless of which, which way you want to go. Um, and then if you just want a combination product, when all in one, you could go with something like Caravan, which is a combination insecticide and fungicide, all in one product. The only negative to Caravan is that the the, uh, the insecticide does not target army worms. So if you have any concern about that, uh, then Caravan is not what you want to use. You want to use, in that case, a Celeprin and Headway. So th these two, like a Celeprin, either one of them, and Headway is like the best combination, but it's also the most expensive. If you want a more economical route, you can go Caravan and that's going to take care of our, um, our grubs. If all you care about are grubs in your lawn and you want a preventative fungicide, then Caravan is what I would recommend using. So there you have it. You got the more expensive option, but better. You have the less expensive option, but adequate, depending on what you are trying to target in uh, in your lawn. So Hope that helps, you know, get that down. That's regardless of, of the POA, that's something you should be doing on your lawn this time of year. It's a great idea. And you can get that, you can apply that before the graduation party, water it in and you'll be good to go. The POA, honestly, I would just probably pull it if it's just a little little bit here and there. But if it's too much and you really want it gone, certainty, certainty will do it. We have it at the store. That will absolutely get it done. Next up is Mr. McNasty Motorsports. Late arrival. Got in as soon as I could after the mill, but you, you you got in for a good reason, man. You know you're late, but we can we can we can give you a hall pass because you're out there getting the work done. Got to have that done. You're like, man, this Flex 21 is nice. I'm so glad I went this route. It's easily the best thing I ever did for my lawn, right? That's what I said. You know, it's funny. You know, it's it's um people talk about the cost. Not to go off on a tangent here, but people talk about the cost of a mower, right? They're saying, oh, you know, like a real mower is really expensive, or like a you know, they're super expensive products. I can just get go out and just get like a rotary or just do something else. Why do I spend all that money on a mower? If you think about it, the mower is the single piece of equipment that you use more, more than anything else, if you're doing it right. Like your backpack sprayer, like people get all wrapped around the axle about, about, about which backpack sprayer you use, which really doesn't really matter as long as you know how to use it properly. You can get a great result with any of them, right? But your mower, if you're doing it right, you're, you're at least a minimum 
twice a week you're out there cutting your grass, right? You're not spraying every week. You're not fertilizing every week. You're not, you know, you're not putting down fungicides or insecticides every week, but you're mowing every week. You're mowing at least once a week. And, and if you're doing it right, at least, I mean, twice a week or more, right? So it makes sense. And I, I kind of say this in the, in the, in the academy, I have an entire module all around, all around mowing that the thing that we do, the thing that you do most in the lawn, you want to ensure you're doing the most correct. You know what I mean? So that's why you hear me talk all the time about mowing all the time, the importance of mowing, the like mowing frequency, and also ensuring that the mowing equipment is sharp because it's not just good enough to use a mower on the lawn. You want to make sure it's sharp so that we, we minimize how much injury, injury we're doing to the grass. So the thing you use most, you want to make sure you optimize the most and do it the most correct. So the proper mower for the right grass type and keep it sharp. Like one of the best things you can do. And, I'm, and what you're seeing with the flex, I'm not surprised that you're you're enjoying it and that you're saying it's the best thing you ever did for your lawn. I agree. Mowers are super, super important. You know what? Either you're, you've only had it for a little while, we're going to clap it up anyway. We're going to do it. We're going to do it. It's got to happen. Next up is Luis Rodriguez saying, hey, Ron, what's going on, Luis? I appreciate you coming to hang out. And then next up is Eric B. He says, hey, Ron, no questions. Eric, this is this is rare for you, man. Normally you have questions. I'm not sure what's going on. Are you feeling okay? Get, take a, take a te I need a temperature. There's no questions today. I just want to give you your flowers. You are a great guy. Don't listen to the whiners about the price on your store. Your prices are comparable to the competition. Yeah, I don't I don't complain. I am not, I mean, I mean, my some of my prices are more expensive, some of my prices are less expensive. So I don't, you know, it's the people that complain about that are mo normally people that don't, that aren't really subscribers. They don't watch my content and they don't buy anything from the store. You know what I mean? So it's I don't, I don't really care. I'm not really apologetic over it because. I could, I could, I could discount everything and make everything cheaper, but then a year from now, I'm not going to be in business anymore and that's not going to help anybody. Right. So I cannot be all things to all people. Sorry. All right. Next up is Rusty's, Rusty's creations. He says, Ron, last week, a mentioned mowing six to eight weeks for applying hydrotain. Yep. I did. I did say that using liquid hydrotain. Do you still go with the label rate throughout the season? Nine ounces per thousand square feet. Label mentions five times app rate for a single use. Yeah, so I would still use label rate. I would just do it, you know, they say hydrogen will work for up to three months, right? Up to three months, that's in an ideal world, that, that that's what you're going to get out of it. But really, every two months is is a is a better plan. You know what I mean? It's not like you're going to, you're not going to damage the lawn by applying it every, every um you know, every eight weeks versus every, what is that, every 12 weeks. So uh, no, I would not go heavier on the rate. I would use the I would use the normal rate. I would just do it a little bit sooner. You know what I mean? I would just do it a bit like at the eight week interval instead of like doing it once at the beginning of the season and not putting any hydrotain down until the fall. Like I don't think that's a good plan. I would do it every you know six to eight weeks. If you're trying to save money, you can do it every eight weeks. Um, but the product works so well that I just really don't want the effects of it to to fall off, especially given that it looks like this year we're not going to have a bunch of rain. So you definitely want to keep the hydrotain in the soil if at all possible. So hope that helps, Rusty. What kind of mower you got there, man? It looks, I, I've not seen one of those before. It looks like a big, bat. is it a battery powered? I don't know. It's kind of cool looking. Okay, next is uh, John Williams. He says, sorry, I should have said if you had a compare, if you had comparable to Milo, what would be the benefit of using the other? I was thinking you had a similar product to Milo, just a different name. Thanks. Yeah, no, no worries. I don't have anything comparable to Milo. Not yet anyway. I'd like to get a, a great organic fur. I mean, it would be cool to continue to be able to do my liquid program. Like, because I really like my liquid program. I love it. Love the results I get with that. And the people that also use my liquid program have a great results with it as well. So that is pretty dialed in. Love that. Um, it would be interesting to, to, to see about changing as far as granular first, perhaps doing um, you know more, a more organic route to see how that how that would work, how, what kind of result what kind of results I could get with that. The thing with or um, I say or granular, I mean organic. The, 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 the thing with organic first is that the application rates or the coverage you get tends to be less, tends to be lower than what you get with synthetic fertilizers, right? So. It just depends on that. It'll be interesting to see when, if and whenever I'm able to get one, you know, bring one to market for you guys or get make one available to you guys, um, how that works out. But um, but yeah, at this point, this time, I don't have uh, I don't have anything. Uh, not yet, anyway. And John Williams says, I pick quality any day. Yep, that's me, man. I, I totally agree with you. You know, that's that the thing is, um, and again, not to belabor the point, but that more than anything else, 
I value my time more than anything else because it, it sounds, um, it sounds a bit flippant, but like mo- anyone, any of us, right? Any of us can make more money. You can always, you can always figure out a way to engineer and make more money. Tonight, right now, 10, 13 p.m. and 40 seconds, that is gone and it will never, ever, ever return for all of us, right? So time you can never get back. So, so if I'm able to trade time for products and services or an equipment that works better and, and makes, me, makes me get a better result with less headache, less hassle, all day long, I'm doing that. I just don't. I don't like hassles. I'm like. I don't like headaches. I don't like problems. That's why, I like, I don't. I don't bother like back back lapping my mower. One because I don't have the tools to do it. I don't have the equipment to do it to do it properly. And there's people that make their entire living keeping equipment sharp that can do that for me. So I let them take care of it. You know what I mean? So uh, I'm with you, John. Quality over over. Um, you know, quality every day long. If the only thing people have to complain about me is the cost of some of the products, then I'm good with that. Now, if you tell me you use the products and they're not good or you're not getting good results, that is something I will listen to and I really do care about. But pricing, eh. All right, next up is Rio the Hitman. He says, sup, Ron? Thanks for everything you do. I appreciate it, Rio. Thank you for hanging out in the live stream talking about turf grass on a Friday night. I do appreciate it, as always. Next up is Dwayne Hopkins. He says, hey, Ron, happy Friday. We're definitely heating up in SoCal. Expecting a couple days in the hundreds. Woo, that's not nice. We don't want that much heat. Bermuda is going to be on fire. It'll be interesting, Dwayne. You got to let me know what you guys do as far as irrigation, like watering to uh, to keep the Bermuda looking nice with those types of temps. I imagine it's similar to what Arizona does, but if you if you can, uh, you know, I know you and I email back and forth sometimes, so it'd be interesting to let me know what kind of um, what you do as far as um, watering. Dwayne says, with those temps, should I be worried about liquid fertilizer? Should I back the rate down? I do not. So even when it gets to be in the 90s here in Georgia, and I realize the 90s aren't 100, I do not change the rates that I use on my liquid ferts. But keep in mind, I don't apply my stuff heavy. Like the liquid, for, the rates that I use for um, uh, for 901C and even last year Turfplex is like a tenth of a pound of nitrogen per thousand square feet. So it's not very much. I, I use like the low rate the, on the bottle, the lowest of the la- that the label calls for. That's what I use. You know, so I've never experienced issues with burning the grass regardless of the temperatures that I, I apply it at. Now, if I went for one of the higher rates, like I think some of the higher rates um, for Turfplex call for as much as like 15 ounces per thousand square feet, which is definitely getting up there, that you might you might run into some issues with potentially, you know, burning the lawn if you're not careful with that, with that application. But I've never applied it that heavy to be able to know. But I can tell you that for mid 90s, um, there's no there's no problem whatsoever. Again, because again, I, I go light like like less more frequently better than like super heavy less i mean you know less freak like in other words a little bit more often is better than um a whole lot and not very often kind of like mowing like mowing your lawn mowing your lawn uh, taking off a little bit of grass every few days is better than letting the grass get really tall and then hacking it all down in one one go you know what i mean same same kind of thing when it comes to your fertilizer applications all right next up is um, Wilson Miranda says, hey Ron, is there an abrasive you would recommend for backlapping? I mowed my lawn in the last minute of light, heavy rain, LOL. Yeah, so you know who you'd ask about that? The guys at Real Rollers. I know they have an 80 grit compound and I believe also a 120 grit compound. Uh, for them, they tell me that the, the 80 grit is gonna get you the fastest results and most people again, and you're probably, you might be the exception. You, might, you probably are the exception. Most people are not um, diligent enough to adjust the mower to really be able to take advantage of the 120 grit. So, you, you know, a strategy is you could do an 80 grit first and then go to 120 grit and to really get things really dialed in. Uh, call call Real Rollers, talk to Lee or, um, or Andrew or Eric, and I think what they're going to tell you is that the 80 grit is going to be just fine. For most people, 80 grit is going gonna, is gonna to get it done faster and you're going to get a good result with it. So it really depends on you and how picky you want to be. 120 grit is going to take you a lot longer, or it's going to take you, it's going to take you longer, not a ton longer, but it's going to take you longer than 80 grit. So hope that helps. Um, and again, real rollers would be the ones I would talk to on that because that's, they do backlapping a lot more than I do, which is pretty much not at all. All right. Next up is Daniel Ferris, or Ferreras. He says, Hey y'all, I am back. Ron, I dug a six uh, seven foot tree out today and fill the hole left with a 50-50 mix of play sand and potting mix. Four foot ring. How many weeks do you think it'll take for the Bermuda to start filling in? Uh, it's, I mean, it's starting to fill in right away, right? So 
it, it's I don't know. It's, it's hard to say. You said, let me see, uh, six, seven foot tree, so four foot ring. I mean, by the end of the season, you know, let me see, what are we in May? I mean, it, again, assuming that the, the soil is in great shape, it's nice and healthy, you got plenty of nutrients, you're mowing properly, there's no other shade problems, which I don't imagine there's going to be because you eliminated the tree. J late July, that should be fairly filled in, maybe a bit sooner. But yeah, it's, I mean, it, it's, it'll, it'll begin to take off and really begin to fill in. Uh, something you can do with that, uh, uh, Daniel, is your mowing, like your regular mowing is going to encourage the grass to grow and it's going to encourage that lateral growth and help it fill in a bit faster. If you want to speed up the process, what you can do too, is if you have a plugger, like get a pro plugger and transfer some cores into the, uh, the area where the tree used to be, that will also speed up how quickly it recovers. But I imagine by getting towards the, towards the middle, towards the more the end of the growing season, like late July, you should be looking a lot better than you are now. So hope that helps. Um, it's hard to, set, to give you an exact date, but I mean, Bermuda grows really aggressively with heat and a lot of sunshine. And given that you don't have shade anymore, you're gonna have you can have a whole lot of that, so it should uh, bounce back really quick. All right, next is volatility trading. He says I had to put the kids down and went back to my answer slash question. Thanks for the answer, even though it wasn't an answer. <laughs> Haha, I appreciate all you do. Keep up, keep it up. Yeah, man, volatility. I'm sorry. I mean, I I know some about cool season grass, but I'm not as far as like knowing what was gonna work over an acre and you're not gonna water it. I lean towards a fescue, but um, you have to do some research, man. I don't want to give you bad advice. All right, next up is R. Reed. He says, hey, Ron, what's up, man? I aerated my front yard today, and I topped just one portion of the yard. It is no joke. It's not. I mean, on the video, here's the thing. The videos, I make it look easy, right? Because all you see is, you know, the time lapse of me, like, I'm talking, I'm doing a little bit while I'm talking, and then I go to time lapse, and then, like, you know, Thanos snap, and boom, like, you know, a few minutes later, after, like, some video and things spun up, the lawn is magically top dressed, and it looks great. But in between there, there is a lot of work. It's a lot of work. It's, there's a reason why companies that do this and do a good job of it charge quite a bit because it's, it's a ton of work to do it properly. But it also makes your lawn look awesome, right? And it's also got a lot of benefits to the soil and drainage and everything else. So you're doing the good thing. You're gonna, your, your soil will thank you for it. Your lawn's going to thank you for it. And once it's done, it's done, you know? So you only have to do it once or twice, and you're going to get a great result from that. Okay, next up is um, Tom V. He says... Hey, hey, all. Uh, curious if soil testing is done periodically uh, throughout the season. Do golf courses do this? Uh, do golf courses uh, soil test? Yes. How often they do it? I don't know. It probably varies from the from the course. Is how do you know the fertilizer treatments are moving the numbers in the right direction? So that's a great point, Tom. So, at a minimum, I am a fan of to of um stop dressing of soil testing twice in a season, um once at the beginning of the season and then once at the end of the season. Reason for the for that is this, right? The beginning of the season, um, and I'm talking about Bermuda for the most part here, but the same applies to cool season grass. Beginning of the season, your soil test is going to tell you, hey, where are all the deficiencies in my soil? What fertilizer should I be using so that you can make an informed, cho informed choice of as far as what you're putting into the lawn? So you do that's that's why the first test of the season is important. So you do that, you fertilize your lawn, your you know, happy days, you're mowing, enjoying the lawn, top dressing, having a great time, making all the neighbors envious, you know, barbecuing, all this great stuff. And then we get to the end of the season, like, you know, September, October timeframe. Makes sense to me to do another soil test because then we can see all the work that we did throughout the season. How did the soil test, how did the soil change over the course of that season? Um, the big thing that you really look for in the fall soil test that I look for is not really the macronutrient level so much, but more so pH, right? What I'm looking for in the fall so soil test is, is my soil trending more acidic? Is the pH level going down? Because then that tells me, hey, do I need to do a lime application this fall? Um, and if so, how heavy? Uh, because if you only soil test once a year, what will happen is you'll wait, you'll you'll wrap all the way around till next spring. Your pH is going to be low, and you're going to be behind the eight ball. Whereas if you test it in the fall and you saw that yeah things are trending lower, my soil is trending more acidic, you can get your lime down, and that gives you you know three, four, five months for that to begin to begin moving your soil pH back in a in a better in a better direction. So the fall soil testing for me anyway is less about macro levels and more about pH. So twice per season is what I recommend. That's what, you know, the minimum I think is, is a good number. Um, but I don't know how often golf courses do it. I know they do I know they do, do it, but I don't know how often they um, they do that. So hope that helps. And hopefully the logic, what I'm like, what I explained, like the logic behind it makes sense to you is why I say like twice a season, spring and fall makes sense. And the my soul ones are the one that I recommend. The reason being is I'll show you why I say these guys are the ones you should go with if you have no preference. If, you're, if you have a preference and keep doing what you're doing, 
But if you don't have a preference, I like the MISO ones for this reason that I will show you now, now that I'm logged in, is, is that you have the historical data. So once you start using these set sole test kits, it doesn't cost you any more money. You get this as part as like being in their ecosystem, right? Is all your sole tests are all stored together. So if I wanna look at say Alex's lawn from like the 2020 and look at it, this, this is um, one that was done in the summer of 2020. And if I wanna see what Alex's soil looked like in the fall of 2020, so kind of like what I'm talking about here, right? Just as an example, I can take those two samples and compare them and say, huh, what's going on with Alex's soil? How are the nutrient levels trending? For the most part, you can see that his, um, all the fertilization we did over the season did, you know, see all his levels went up because we started fertilizing in his lawn based on the soil test results we got from the June one. And we can also see his pH levels were also trending a little bit south too. So we may need to do a lime app in like late 2020. And we, we ended up doing that. So that's the beauty of these. That's why I like these. One, they're easy to use, easy to understand. And this is an awesome tool for being able to say, hey, what, you know, how are my, from a trending standpoint, what are, what's my pH doing? What are my nutrient levels doing? And then you don't need to reach out to someone like me. You don't need to email me and say, hey, Ron, what should I be doing for my soil? You know, what, you know, what, what should I what should I apply? Because in addition to getting all this cool stuff, you, they also give you recommendations of what to apply to help fix your soil. So there, there you go. I'm off my soapbox now on why I like my soil tests and why soil testing is awesome and why you should do it. And I hope that helps, Tom. All right, next is R. Reed. It says, oh, did my soil test, back on the topic of soil testing, I did my soil test and the recommendation for the fertilizer is a 20, uh, 27 five. That's down. That sounds like a Scott's starter fert. I think so. I might be right on that. I used to remember. I used to remember a lot of the Scott's uh, starter fert numbers. I think that's a, that sounds like a Scott starter fert to me. I says okay at three point seven pounds per thousand square feet, and the bag is thirty five dollars uh, um, for eighteen pounds. Is there something you'd recommend with similar numbers? Um, not without seeing your soil test results. Not really. I mean, based on what you're telling me. You're looking at that the recommendation. I imagine your phosphorus is low, your nitrogen, your nitrogen is probably a little bit low, and your potassium's okay. That's the that's, that's what I'm seeing. Um, if that's the case, then that that fertilizer is a great choice. You know, that's a great choice. If all your levels are low, then a starter for it's a good choice. I, I can't really answer it without without seeing your soil test results on um, R read. You can go to the golf course lawn store. You can see some of the fertilizers that we have there and see how those match up based on what the soil test results are saying, um, you know, where, like where your macro levels are and what needs to be brought up and see if something fits. Um, but if we don't carry anything, then that fertilizer is the one you should go with. You know what I mean? Like the, that, that's, the, that's the benefit of soil testing is that it's not necessarily saying, hey, that whatever, you know, I carry on the store is with something you got to buy and just make it fit. Like really, you want to select a fertilizer that fits the results. So if the results say that's what you should use, that's what you should use. And then once the levels all get better, you can switch off and you can transition to one of my fertilizers if you want to as well at that point. So like like follow the test results and, and adjust the soil based on that. Good stuff. All right, next up is No Name. He says, um, hey, Ron, if you use a liquid hydrotain, version of hydrotain, how long do you have to water it in? It's definitely more cost effective but I don't want to have issues as I have an 8,000 square foot lawn lay down. I don't use the liquid. I don't use the liquid version um, for the reasons that you're talking about, because I don't want to, I don't want to have to like, like apply it to a zone and then run irrigation on it on that zone right afterwards and then move on to the next one and, and so on and so forth. So I use the granular uh, for that reason, but you're right. The liquid is a lot more cost effective. The granular is more expensive than, uh, than the liquid version it is so i'd say as long as you water it in within an hour or so you're good to go really you want to do it you want to do it right after application but if you you know if you could if you do the entire lawn and you're able to if you get if you're able to get the entire application down and you're able to get the entire lawn watered within an hour you're probably you're, you're likely going to be fine or another option for you to no name is to go with the liquid and i got this i'm not taking credit for this i actually got this from alan uh, lawn care uh, the lawn care nut is Get the um, get the the hose end sprayer version of hydrotain, and then also get your gallon jug. And for the first time you do it, get the hose end sprayer and just use that. And then when it goes empty, refill it from the gallon jug. Like that's a way to to make sure that you're doing it right because the hose end is putting down plenty of water to ensure that it's going down. It's getting watered in um, just by just 
um, as a as a function of the volume of water that goes out when you use the hose end sprayer versus like a backpack sprayer. And then that's kind of the best of both worlds, right? So you've got a, an easy way to apply it where you know you're going to get a good result and you've got a way to refill that system once it's empty. So you end up buying two things. You end up buying the one gallon, you end up buying the um, the hose end sprayer, but you only have to do that one time as far as the hose end sprayer. So that's that's an option too if you're really worried about it. That ensures you're going you're gonna to get a good result with the liquid. So hope that helps. If you have any other questions, let me know. I can't really come in on the liquid, like I said, though, because I don't I don't use the liquid. I use granular. All right, next up is R. Reed. He says, is it okay to put down a synthetic fertilizer and then throw organic on top of it? Uh, I guess technically, yes, but uh, my, my reason would be why, right? So it's, um, the, the, the whole idea is if the synthetic fert is, is, is what your soil needs, like it meets the requirements, uh, like why add uh, organic on top of that? So here's what you could do, right? Let's say you have an organic fertilizer that you just you just absolutely love, right? Let's say it's malorganite. And you can you want to use your synthetic to, for do, doing a lot of the heavy lifting, but you want to use the organic because you just like it and you want to put it down. You can do that, but what I would do is I would I would back off the rate on the synthetic just a little bit to account for the extra nutrient that we're putting in the soil from the organic. So what I would not do is do the organic at full, or sorry, the, the synthetic at full bag rate, and then the organic at full bag rate, because that's too much. So if you're gonna do that, you know, back this, the rate on the synthetic down just a little bit, apply it a little bit lighter, and then apply your organic, and then, you know, assuming that the formulations are somewhat similar, you're gonna end up with a, with a decent result. So it's, it's, it sounds like a lot more work to me, but if you wanna do that, you can. Just make sure you're not over applying, you know, you know the um, especially nitrogen, uh, by doing that. So hope that helps R. Reed. Let me know which way you end up deciding to go with that. Tom V is back and has a question saying, is it possible to perform spoon feeding through granular applica applications or is it liquid or nothing? No, you could do it with, through granular too. I mean, you could you could technically say that what I do on my lawn is, is spoon feeding of both of them. You know, there's a lot of people that will buy a fertilizer and they'll apply it one at the beginning of the season and they may and they'll apply maybe like they'll let it ride out for two or three months and they'll do another application like three months later like with the what i do in my program where i fertilize monthly is is definitely not the norm for what most people a lot of people do in their lawns and then for the liquid i do that every couple of weeks to help supplement that so yes you can do granular spoon feeding the thing with granular well i will say with this is if you're going to do granular spoon feeding tom is I find it helpful to use a, a, a granular fertilizer that has a bit of, that's, that's gonna release a little bit faster. What you would not wanna do is get like a, a very slow release fertilizer or fertilizer with most of the nitrogen is slow release and try and spoon feed with that every, you know, every couple of weeks or every month because by design, that fertilizer is designed to be put down one time and it's designed to slowly break down and feed over the course of a long period of time. So the fertilizer that you choose matters if you are gonna do what you're describing, like a granular feeding program, right? So a, a faster or a quicker release fertilizer is what you're gonna to wanna to go with if you're trying to feed the lawn monthly or a couple times per month. So hope that helps. Um, I do both, I do granular and liquid, so great question. Next up is Steve and actually let me get down here and get a super chat real quick. I got two of them. Actually, no, I got one of them. One from T1000. Let me get that real quick. I appreciate that, T1000. He says, applied hydrotain uh, and fungicide on the lawn same day, watered before and after applying. Okay, that's good. Bermuda grass now yellowing. Will ironite resolve? I can send picks. Any advice? Okay, so let's see. So the Bermuda grass yellowing like in other words, those two might not they might not might not be linked is what I'm trying saying um, uh, T1000. So if you did your um, hydrotain and fungicide application, I don't know, like last week, and now today you're seeing that the lawn is yellowing, especially if you live in Georgia, it's likely has nothing to do with either of those. It's more the fact that we haven't had rain in I don't know how long. You know, we've just the lawn is just dry. So if you've not been watering, you know. Maybe I put some more water on it, or if you're in my area here soon, we're supposed to get some rain anyway, so it should become a non-issue. So I don't, I don't think that what you're seeing is the cause of um, of the fungicide and the hydrogen, especially if you apply them at the proper rates, right? They shouldn't, they shouldn't, um, shouldn't cause yellowing uh, in the lawn. Should not cause yellowing in the lawn. 
Okay, next up is Steve N. He says, I live in uh, in Michigan. Can I real mow Kentucky bluegrass at like one inch? Can I go low with it? Or is that more for certain types? Yeah, so KBG can be load, can, can be load. <laughs> it can be mowed shorter. Uh, an inch is doable. It depends on the grass, on the version of Kentucky bluegrass you have. But if you're real mowing it, you absolutely can get down uh, to one inch with um, KBG. That is absolutely doable. Absolutely doable, Steve. And next up is Dominic D. He says, hey, Ron, just bought a house. Congrats on the house. I have a salad bar lawn and just yeeted Bermuda grass seed on my relative established lawn to see what happens, okay? Uh, how, would you, how would you establish Bermuda without an entire lawn wipe? Okay, so if the lawn has Bermuda in it already, but you said you've got a salad bar, we, the, kind of like what I have in my infographic, the first thing is let's get rid of the salad bar. So what I would use to clean that up um, is at a minimum Celsius, but if you can, do Celsius and certainty. So let me show you really quick. We will go for a ride. Go for a ride with me to the Golf Course Lawn Store. Which tab was that? It is right here. Okay, so go to the Golf Course Lawn Store, go to Shop, and then go to Weed Killer. Um, as far as, you know, a, a the combination, in my opinion, to rule them all, like these two together are a great combination for eliminating, to use your words, a salad bar lawn where the underlying grass is Bermuda. So you can do Celsius and certainty together. If you only want to do one, you could do Celsius. Like that's a that's a great option, but really these two are a great combination because if there's any sedges in the lawn, like any Kalinga or you know yellow or, pur or, or, or um, purple nut sedge, uh, the certainty will absolutely get rid of that. So you can do these two. Um, I have a kit that has all of them together. So you have both the Celsius and Certainty and Surfactant and Marker Dye, which is a great way to save time and money because you just get them all together and it's a little bit cheaper than buying them individually. Um, but yeah, that is what I would go with. The benefit of those two as well, Dominic, is that as temps get a bit warmer, they are less likely to injure your Bermuda than other options that are a little bit less expensive. So, and they also work, I mean, you have Bermuda, so it doesn't really matter, but the reason why I like that combination too is that it works on all warm season grass types other than Bahia. Uh, certainty you can spray on Bahia, but Celsius you cannot. So that's why I just say don't spray on Bahia. So hope that helps. Yeah, by doing that and then getting your soil test done and fertilizing a certain of those soil test results and then also getting up with your mowing. So, you know, once you spray the weeds, give it, you know, you know, three days or so for it to really to don't disturb the lawn and allow the weeds to, to, to take in all that herbicide, then get out there and just start mowing it and feeding the lawn. And what you're going to find is the weeds will begin falling off and the Bermuda will start doing better. So that is how I would go about it, especially if you don't want to do an entire uh, lawn renovation. That's a good way to, to accomplish that. All right, Chris Ferguson said, what is the best lawn leveling rake? Um, depends on who you ask. I like the R&R products rake and I like the standard golf rake. So those two rakes are, are, are great options, either R&R or uh, the standard golf. Either one of those are, um, are, good, are good leveling rakes. They are, they are ones that as long as you don't, I mean, they should serve you for, you know, you should never replace them is just what I'm trying to say. You know, a, a cheaping out on a leveling rake is, makes no sense to me because it's a tool that you really need to rely on. And if your leveling rake breaks, think about it. When is, it, when is a leveling rig going to break on you? It's going to break on you when you're out leveling the lawn, right? And the, the last time when you want that to happen is when you've got like, you know, two, three, four, five yards of sand sitting on your driveway, and now you've got a broken rake and you can't really spread the stuff and get it down properly. So like, don't, I, I'd say spend a little bit more. I mean, an R&R &R rake, I think it's like 150 bucks, an R&R &R rake or, or the standard golf rake. Let's see, what are those going for these days? I can tell you, they're like... um. You know, they're not they're not crazy expensive. I think those are like 110 on Amazon right now. They're not not expensive. They're not too bad. Um, let's see. Leveling rake. I can show you guys right here. Let's see. The standard golf right now is going for $134, right? So the, the cheaper leveling rakes that you can find, they are going to be like 100, 110 bucks. So you're saving $20. And I can I can promise you if it breaks. Or when it breaks, when you're out there leveling the lawn, you're gonna you're gonna pay a hundred dollars to have a rake that that would have that would not do that. So, I would um you know R and R or the uh, the standard golf rake. I, I've not gotten complaints from um, either of those to people that I've I've recommended it to. So that's 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 Ron Henry's take on uh, on leveling rakes. And if you are in the market for a leveling rake and you want the standard golf one, I will put a link in the chat for you, Chris. 
for you to pick that up. So Chris, there's a bunch of Chris's in here tonight. So Chris Ferguson, you find the right Chris. There we go, that's you. And uh, leveling rake. And there you go. So hope this helps. Once ever, whenever my browser catches up and this, and there you go. All right, cool. So that's the rake that I'd recommend. It's a standard golf one and it's like 130 bucks and you'll buy it. And it's gonna be the last leveling rake that you buy. Next up is Cool Monster. He says, hey, Ron, should I core aerate before top dressing? I like to do it. I like. To, I recommend it. And here's why. If you aerate, you're opening up, you're relieving compaction, and you're creating all these nice little beautiful voids all throughout the lawn. That way, whenever we put our leveling mix, whether it be straight sand or it be a combination of sand and compost, you're making it easier for that leveling mix to integrate with the existing soil. So I'm a huge fan of doing that. It's also a great way to get your, um, your biostimulants like Essential G and or your fertilizer into the soil so they're working faster. So yes, I'm a huge fan of aerating before top dressing. Do you absolutely have to do it? No, but it is better if you can. Next up is Ben White, White Chert. He says, hey Ron, great content. Always learn something from your videos. I appreciate that, Ben. Appreciate the, the, the feedback and the support. Really does mean a lot to know that you are watching the content and uh, appreciate you letting me know. Always good. All right, next up is Dalvin Larry. He says, hey Ron, I sent you an email, but I'll ask again, would PGR help or stall the grass growth over my irrigation scars? I'm thinking about, I'm thinking the horizontal growth would help cover the trenches, trench marks, or am I wrong? Um, no, here's the thing. If you are trying to fill in a bare spot in a lawn, so it sounds like you got the lawn trenched and you want to fill in faster, it will fill in faster if there's not growth regulator on the lawn. Like if, if, you, if you top dress it, it's gonna fill in faster if you don't have, there's no PGR. And if you're trying to fill in a bare spot, it will fill in faster if there's not PGR on it. Having said that, if you, if it's easy enough to do PGR everywhere else and just limit, limit spraying the area that got trenched, you know what I mean? And just the thing that's gonna help the lawn to spread and fill in that area faster is mowing. So just get out there and just mow it regularly. If you can get there and mow twice a week, good. If you can mow every other day, even better. Like mowing is gonna stimulate growth and that's gonna help that area to, the grass to creep over and fill in uh, that area that got trenched uh, that much faster. So that was what I'd really recommend, um, Dalvin. I would still do PGR over the rest of the lawn, but just the areas where you know, you're know you worried about it, don't you know just abstain from putting it there. Or if you don't really care, you can just do PGR over the entire lawn, just knowing that it's gonna take a little bit longer for it to fill in. So hope that helps. Um, it's not gonna make it happen faster. I guess if that's what you're asking me, the answer to that would be no. It's not gonna, it's not gonna make it happen faster. All right, next is uh, Ben, he's back here about Bermuda. He says, have common Bermuda, but like the look of the blade of hybrids. What are your thoughts on overseeding with a hybrid seed, seed varieties? Um, will the hybrid take over? Or will I have a strange looking mix? So most of the hybrids, you can't really get in a seed. Like Arden 15, they say, they call it a hybrid. Um, they call it a hybrid, but I think technically it's really more of an improved common. Um, Cause again, most hybrids, they don't want to, they don't want you to be able to get it from seed. Uh, you just can't, you can't do them from seed. Most of those only come from sod. So that's thing one. Um, as far as mixing a hybrid with common, depends on who you ask, man. In most cases, I don't recommend doing it. I will tell you that Tiffway, and which is a hybrid, and then Arden 15, which is its own thing. Really, you could say it's improved common, or you could say that it's, they, I mean, they call it a hybrid, but it's really, it's probably really more improved, improved common Bermuda. Those two together look nice. Like whenever you look at my lawn, I think anyway, this probably might disagree with me, but when you look at this lawn, what you are seeing is a combination of high, of a Tiffway 419 and Arden 15. That's what you're looking at when you look at that lawn, okay? Um, those two look reasonably good together. Uh, I don't know what, in Arden 15, you can't really get it anymore, right? But remember, I am going from where the, the base lawn is Tiffway is a hybrid, and then I did Arden 15 on top of that. Um, I don't know what common, which is with a lawn that's primarily common Bermuda, how that's gonna look if you try and introduce something else to it. It's, it's really hard to say. And it's one of those things that once you do it, you really can't get rid of it easily. I'd say if you really, if hybrids are really for you, right? If you really like the look of a hybrid and that's the look that you want, as painful as it is, I would, I would probably get rid of the common, like try and kill off the common 
and then resod with the with the grass that you really like. If you're trying to do them both together, what you're going to end up with is a mutt lawn that is going to be a combination of hybrid and common, and it's going to look depending on which hybrid you get, they're going to it's going to look it's going to look like two different grasses. It might look okay, or it might look not so not so okay, right? So so the surefire way to get what you're after, which I really think is not common Bermuda and really the look of a hybrid lawn is to get a hybrid lawn, which is kill off the common and then put down sod. There's a lot of great Bermuda sods. There's Tiffway, there's Tiff Tough. Um, there is that new one though that the lawn tools are using, the Tahoma 31. Everyone that has that seems to you know call it the second coming of Bermuda. It's like the, the greatest since, since sliced bread. So there's a lot of really great sod options for Bermuda that you'll really like. But I, I don't know that I would go through all the trouble of doing that if I'm gonna mix it with common. I would just do one or the other. Next up is Jennifer Hayes. She says, are you in Georgia? I am in Georgia, Jennifer. I am in Northeast Georgia, Gainesville area. So I am in Georgia. And then Daniel Ferrer Fer says, pina colada cognac mix is amazing. Yeah, man, we um, we know how to mix that stuff. So that's, that's, that's how we do it, you know, back home. So I don't know what they put in pina coladas here. All right, next up is Dwayne Hopkins. He says, Ron, have you calibrated your spreader? Curious how necessary you feel it is, or going on, is going on the rates on the product label good enough? I, for my Earthway, it's been good enough. So like my Earthway that I had before, that was mm, three years old or so. Let me see, I got it in 2018. I gave it to Alex last year. So what is that? Uh, yeah, three years. Three years, I'll come up on four years. So that sprayer, which was three years, coming up on four years, the same rates that I use on that, sp oh, let's say sprayer, spreader. The same rates that I use on that spreader, that broadcast spreader, when I got a brand new Earthway, the same model number, uh, again, last year, I used the exact same spreader settings and the product still worked the same way. So I think the quality of the spreader that you're using does have a bearing on that. I, there's, I, have, I don't have anything against the Scott spreaders, but I will tell you that like, if you, you want to see an exercise, go to Home Depot and pull out like, like three or four Scott spreaders and put them all to the same setting and then open the little, little spring-loaded thingy that, that causes the hopper to, to open and look at the sizes. And at least on when I did this, they were different. You know, they were they're they were, they were different enough that I wouldn't be able to say that, yeah, that that, that I'd, I'd feel confident going from one calibration from one spreader to another being exactly the same. So I think it really depends on the spreader that you're using, Dwayne. Like the like the like the nicer Lesco's, um, like the spikers, like this, the more commercial grade, the more expensive spreaders, kind of like anything else in life, the more you pay for a tool, the better it's gonna work, the more repeatable the results tend to be with it. And I find this to be the same thing with um with spreaders. Now I have not checked the the Scott's Elite. I know that's one of their nicer ones, and maybe that one, maybe between those units from unit to unit they are more comparable. But for the more, for the less expensive ones, like the little the, the, the deluxe and also the mini, like those ones, especially when I looked at the settings, they were, they were all over the place. So hope that helps. Um, I don't find it to be necessary because my Earthway tends to be consistent. All right, next up is a John Williams. He says, what's an example of a commercial grade insect killer for roaches? Please help um, me. Any advice on options? These roaches must die. So I'll give you an option that is commercial grade, but is also non-toxic. That's very good against roaches, which I think meets both your, um, meets all your requirements is the Miramichi green, um, pest control, John. So this is a great option for Miramichi green. That is a, um, it's an insecticide that is non-toxic, meaning that you can spray this often in places where roaches will show up, right? So if you're out, if you, you know, anywhere where you have like lawn pat patio furniture outside, the deck outside, on shrubs, on flower beds, on plants, you can spray this on all that stuff. You can spray it on the lawn. Um, literally, um, you know, the, the as far as indoors, it's not labeled for use indoors, but if you want to put it, and the reason for that is that there are soaps in here and oils in here that when they dry could could be a slipping hazard, right? So it's, it's labeled for use outside, but it's not like there's anything in here that makes it toxic for use indoors. Um, so this, if you're looking for something to eliminate roaches that they also can't form a resistance to, this is a great option. You know, everyone that's um, that's picked that up, that's picked up the pest control um, has, I've gotten really good feedback about that, about that product. So it's good for roaches, it's good for um, uh, gnats, white flies, um, a bunch of different stuff um, that's, that's on there. So it's a, it's a great product for 
for roaches. That is what I would recommend. I believe Ad there's also a version of Advion, not the Fire Ant Bait, because there's two different Advions. There's Advion Fire Ant Bait, which is more expensive. The carriers in it are different. The ingredients are different. It's a lot more expensive product. And there's just regular Advion. That is also labeled for roaches as well, too. Um, but if you're looking, but if you have a chance to use a product that's non-toxic, especially since it's going to be in an area where you're going to you're going to spend time, like out on the patio, lawn furniture, that type of thing. Like this stuff, this you can spray on all that stuff. You can spray it on tables, your lawn furniture. Once it dries, you're right, right back out there. You know. Whereas with some of the, um, I don't know, the more the more toxic um, insecticides, those you got to be a lot more careful where you apply them and how you apply them and that type of thing. So if you're asking me. That is what I would recommend. The Miramichi Green Pest Control. We got it in stock at the Golf Force Lawn Store. And um, again, I've gotten really good feedback from people that have used it. Next up is Brusky523. He says, I have a ton of high and low areas in my, my backyard with varying height differences. What would be the best course of action to get rid of giant dips in hills? So if they're giant dips and giant hills, like getting it regraded, if you really want it to be like smooth, you're looking at a regrade. What I might recommend you doing, and again, I haven't seen it, I haven't seen the pictures, and so what I'm saying might not be good advice, but um, what I would lean more towards, Brusky, is instead of trying to get it completely smooth, I would level it to where whenever you're mowing, like those dips and the little hills that are on your lawn, that they become more rolling hills and rolling dips to where your chances of scalping goes down. So when I say leveling the lawn, it isn't, I don't mean like making it pool table, like, a, like you know, where it's not like a, there's no angles to it anymore. What you want to do is take out all the harshness, like all the, 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 the harsh dips or the harsh, you know, rises that cause the mower to scalp whenever you mow over it. Um, that's, um, that is what I would try and lean you or try and, try and sway you towards. I haven't seen the property, so it might be terrible advice, right? Uh, but, but if it's, if it's, way worse to where that's not an option. That's when like actually paying a, a contract or someone to come in and literally regrade it is probably what you're looking for. Like that's going to be difficult to solve with, um, with top dressing, you know what I mean? But top dressing can make it to where you can mow that lawn, like what you're describing without doing damage to it from scalping, um, after, if you do a good job at it. So hope that helps. It's kind of a difficult question to answer without pictures, but hopefully like what I'm saying is making sense to you, like what I'm trying to get to. All right, great stuff. Next up is Jennifer Hay. She says, is it okay for, is it okay to water at night? It's hard for me to water in the morning. I'm not a fan of watering at night, Jennifer. There are people that do it. If you can water, uh, it sounds like you probably don't have irrigation, so you're doing it manually. But if you can water early in the morning, like early in the morning, I mean between like 4 a.m. and 6 a.m., that is that's a, that's a good time to do that because it, it's the wind tends to be lower then. It's not hot, so it gives the water enough time to soak into the soil. Um, and it's not sitting on the lawn all night to where if your lawn is prone to have fungus or disease issues, you're not creating conditions where they, you're allowing it to really take off, right? Um, so I'm a more, I'm more of a fan of mowing or mowing of watering in the morning or early morning hours than I am at night for those reasons. Uh, but if you're only able to water, I, mean, I don't know. I mean, I'm, if you're only able to water in the evenings, I mean, I guess you, I guess you can, but I, for me, I'm not a huge fan of doing that for the reasons that I, uh, that I just described to you. If you're going to do evening watering, maybe like go a, li a bit lighter on your watering. So you're not really soaking the lawn and you know, you're not, you know, you're just not, um, you're not allowing a lot of water to pool and sit on the lawn overnight. So the, the, the best option to me is to water early morning. That's what, that's what I like, you know, early morning, or even like, if you want to do it like late afternoon, but, but watering at like, say 8 PM heavily and having water sit on the lawn all until, you know, eight, nine, 10 o'clock in the morning when the sun come, you know, comes up and it starts evaporating and burns it off that just it's that's that's going to cause that eventually could lead to problems I'm not saying it's going to but it could lead to issues more so than watering at say four to six a.m um would cause so hope that helps um at the end of the day it makes sense to get water on your lawn so if watering at night is the only time you can do it it's better than not watering your lawn but i'm just trying to help you realize the reason why doing it in the morning in my opinion is a bit more optimal great question uh, Dwayne is in the house with another point here. He says, Hey Ron, on the topic of watering, although you don't want to overwater, is it better to feed more water than the recommended one inch 
um, meaning my grass will look better with 1.5 inches versus one inch. Yeah, I mean, if you want to put down more than, than an inch, if you think that's what your, if your lawn looks better with that and you want to you put a bit more water down, you, you can, but really that inch rule should be enough, Dwayne. You know, between getting a, getting rain now and then and then running your irrigation to supplement, an inch of water per week should be good for Bermuda. Now, if you live in SoCal or Arizona or somewhere where it gets really hot, that's a situation where adding more than an inch per week is likely going to be good because that inch of water isn't really hanging around for very long. You know, the, when it gets hot, a lot of that's going to get evaporated. It gets going to get pulled out of the soil. So in that situation, you know, putting down more, do, running a heavier irrigation cycle could make more sense. But it's not because you're really trying to get an inch, in, um, you know, you're trying to get more than uh, an inch of water into the lawn. Is that that the because of the conditions that you live in? It's not, some of it's going to be given up to the atmosphere. Some of it's just going to evaporate out. Does that make sense? So it's really your call. Give the lawn what it, what it wants. You can, if you're watering a little bit heavier allows us to look better and you want to do that, that's fine. But Bermuda really only needs an inch or so of water per per week. And especially if you're using hydrotain, there's really not a reason to go a whole lot heavier than that. Okay, so I got you covered on that. And Huey is back. He says, I'm going to seed some fescue in the back since there's a lot of shade and no grass. I have Georgia clay to deal with. Should I aerate the Georgia clay or just put topsoil on it and then seed? I would aerate. I would aerate. I would water it to soften it, aerate it, then put your topsoil down and then seed. I absolutely would aerate. I, I am a fan of doing that. So you can help that topsoil that you're about to put down for your, for your fescue to integrate better with your existing clay soil. That is what I would do this. All right, next, uh, let's see here. Um, let's see what else we have here. Um, uh, let's see, Andrew's like, I can't believe I'm asking, uh, should I, moving over to a top soil bags or lows? I'm not sure. He says, um, let's see what he says here. Andrew Buck says, I can't believe I'm asking this. Keep in mind, I don't have a truck, but a sedan. I have, um, I have to, I've had Mason sand delivered but the shipping is not cheap. Should I just consider moving over to topsoil bags at Lowe's? Um, yes. Um, so, so Andrew, I guess, what are, you, what are you asking about? If you're trying to get like sand or soil or sand delivered locally, that is going to be cheap, I mean, by volume anyway, that's going to be cheaper than buying it in bags already at like one of the big box stores. I can almost, I can, I can almost guarantee that that's going to be the case. Um, so... I'm not sure exactly what you're asking. So you don't have a truck, you have a sedan, and you but the shipping is not cheap. Okay, so you're saying the, so the delivery fee for um, the sand is not inexpensive. I mean, do the math on it. Even with the delivery fee, it should be cheaper again by volume than what you get from you know from a from like a one of the big boxers. Put it to you this way, like a a single like a, a one yard of say sand, right? Um, let's say it weighs two tons. It weighs weighs um, two thousand pounds. It takes a whole lot of 50 pound bags to get to 2000 pounds. Um, and the cost of doing that is going to be way, you know, it's going to be, it's going to be off the charts different as far as what the, what the, 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 the pre-bagged um, sand and 50 pound, you know, and 50 pound quantities is going to cost you versus having it delivered. So I would just double check the math on that double you know, crunch your numbers and really make sure that the, um, that, that, you know, going getting it from the big box store is cheaper. Now, here's the thing: if you have a small area to do, even though it's cheaper, it's probably more convenient. So in that situation, I could see you just going out, picking up, you know, you know, three, four, five bags of sand, or and getting you can take taking care of the spot that you're trying to level. But if you're doing a big project, it's it's almost always cheaper. As a matter of fact, I can't see a scenario where it would not be cheaper to um, get it, it delivered in bulk. Even like with some of the stuff that we we carry on the golf course lawns, are a perfect example, right? Take a look at um, like Miramichi Green, like the uh, like the Super Sacks, right? So we have uh, Central G and Carbonized PN. They're also available in Super Sacks that are two thousand pounds. Like if you do the math on what it takes to get you know to to get two thousand pounds of of Essential G, like take this number and multiply that, like it's almost three thousand dollars. It's really expensive compared to a Super Sack, and it, and this is and for most people, this isn't even the price you'll pay because in here, I tell you, like email me and give me your address because then I can get like an actual shipping quote. And in most cases, the price is less than that. So you can pay, you can get 50, 50 bags or you can get one of these. And in most cases, the price is half, half or, or less than half. 
You know what I mean? So that's I, I would I would just double check your numbers is what I'm trying to say. It, it should be cheaper to get delivered in bulk than buying it in bags. All right. Next up is Victor Malpica. He says, hey, Ron, love your videos. Um, thanks for that. What are your thoughts on leveling with engineered topsoil? I'm not sure what you mean by engineered topsoil, but if it's clean, rich soil, there's not any trash in it and you want to, I mean, for leveling, no, because soil isn't, I mean, it's not a great, it's not great for leveling a lawn. You really want to have some sand in there if you're really, if leveling is your primary goal. If you're, if you just want to top dress and just add organic material and just want to, you know, just feed the soil, then yeah, then using just engineered topsoil is fine, but you really want to have some sand component if your goal is to level the lawn. The, the, the sand will do a better job of adding structure uh, versus just a, a compost or a topsoil. All right, Grant Gary is here, says, good evening. How can I help my Bermuda spread quicker? Uh, so a couple of things, Grant. Um, one is, a lot of it really comes down to mowing. So assuming that you are, um, you have enough nutrient in the soil, meaning you've got enough nitrogen, like that you're feeding the grass, it's giving it what it needs from a nutrient standpoint. The way to know if you are is to get a soil test done. This will tell you what fertilizer you should be using on your lawn. Uh, with that covered, then the more you mow, the faster it's going to fill in. You know, it sounds kind of counterintuitive. Counter, counter you think if I mow the grass more, I'm cutting it off. Why would that help it fill in faster? But actually, what mowing is going to help stimulate growth, right? So, um, you know, make sure your mower is nice and sharp. Have a good sharp blade on it. Um, if you're using a real mower, then make sure you're real and bed for sharp. But if you're a rotary, which I'm, I'm guessing is probably what you have, make sure it's nice and sharp and then pick up your mowing frequency. Mowing at least twice a week is what it takes to have a really good lawn. And that is going to help the lawn fill in and spread faster. Okay, next is Robert Mahoras. He says, um, hey, Ron, uh, enjoy listening and answering your questions. See you next Friday. I appreciate it, Robert. I know it's getting late. I am trying to wrap this up, but I want to answer the last few questions here, and then we will call it a night, guys. We're not going to go to midnight tonight, so yay for that. Uh, next up is Heartful Fashion. He says, I'm late, but I'm here. Tomorrow is a big day. Super sod sand leveling. Thanks for everything, Ron. I will be praying for you, um, Heartful Fashion. I don't envy what you're going to be doing, but I'm sure you're going to like the results that you get. All right. And then McNasty, you're very, very welcome for the clap and um, the clap, um, the acknowledgement. And then Heartful Fashion says, thanks for everything today. I pre-prepped by putting down Carbon Pro G and a high-end fertilizer. Anything else before tomorrow? Not really. He says, I got my Gorilla Cart, r, &R leveling rake, and a regular rake. Uh, not a whole lot other than that. Um, no, man. Just, you know what you do. You watch the videos. Go nice and, you know, a nice light coat. And don't like, don't bury the entire lawn in sand. And um, just enjoy the process as, as enjoyable as you can make it. Not really, not much else. Not much else, else other than that heartfelt. I would say... Um, uh, work, maybe work from the furthest part of the lawn closest to yourself. So you're not walking, you're not, you're not trying, you're not you know, taking the gorilla cart or running it through the area you just leveled. That might be a tip, but outside of that, you know what to do, man. Just, uh, just get out there and, and, and get her done, get her done. Uh, Heartfelt Fashion says, what's your routine when you open the bag, uh, stating to spread on your lawn? I don't know. I'm not sure if I understand the question. What's your routine when you open the bag? Oh, oh to okay, the, the super sod. Yeah. So I, kind of what I just said. Uh, the only thing you didn't mention that you didn't do is I would aerate if I can. Um, but then I would start from the furthest part and work myself, work my way towards. Reason for why I just I just explained it to you is that if you start top dressing like right where the where the leveling mix is, like and you're working your way out is you're literally going to be walking all over your work with a, with a heavy cart full of sand every single time. You know what I mean? So like start from the furthest part and then just work your way back to yourself. That way, whatever you just finished leveling is going to stay level because you're not going to be running the leveling, you know, your, your gorilla cart through it the entire time. So that's the only tip I tell you. Does it really matter if you do it the opposite? No, but I'm just trying to help you to save you from doing um, extra work. Stephanie um, Patco says, how do I get the Kentucky bluegrass on the shaded part of the north side of my house to pop? It's always lacking in strength and many advice is appreciated. So KBG does need sunlight, not as much as Bermuda, um, Stephanie, uh, or, St or Stefan, I'm call sorry for calling you Stephanie. I don't know why I call you Stephanie. Steph Stephen or Stefan. Uh, if there's anything you can do to increase sunlight, so if the, if the shade is from your house, not a whole lot you can do. But if there are any neighboring trees or shrubs or anything you can cut back to allow more direct sunlight to get down to your KBG, that is going to help it to do better. It sounds like 
that the lawn or the grass in that part of the lawn is just not getting enough sunlight in comparison to the rest of the lawn, which is why it's not popping. It's just a little bit thin and just, just struggling a little bit. So more sun. That's I don't have a better answer for you. And again, I'm answering this assuming that there's not like a nutrient deficiency in that part of the lawn. There's not you know any disease or anything going on in that area of the lawn. I'm assuming that overall the soil is healthy and everything is good, right? The only thing different is that this one area has more shade than the areas that's doing better. And the way to fix that is to eliminate or reduce the shade as much as possible. That's going to help the Kentucky bluegrass do better. So hope that helps. I'm not sure there's easy and actually a way to do it. But um, I don't want you to get out there and start chasing like fertilizer products and all kinds of other things when really sunlight is what the grass is uh, is asking for. Greg is saying, I can't find peat moss locally. What's my next uh, choice for leveling? I would not use peat moss for leveling your lawn anyway, Greg, so it's kind of a benefit. I would use a mixture of sand. Some, if, if Again, if the word leveling is in your program, is what, is what you're trying to do, I am a fan of having some sand as being part of the blend. So sand and compost or sand and topsoil, those two, like that, those mix in a ratio. I like a 70-30 ratio. That will work well for leveling your lawn. So call around, like do a Google search in your area for leveling mix or top dressing mix. Um, and then that will be, you know, you'll be able to find someone that can get get material delivered that will that you can use for uh, for top dressing and for leveling uh, your lawn. So hope that helps. Mm-hmm. You're very, very welcome, Brisky. No problem at all. And then uh, John Williams says, top soil from big box stores is our trash. Do not do it. I agree. Like the, the, the one time I actually tried that, like I got more bark and leaves and twigs and stuff than I did actual soil. So I, I mean, there might be some screen top soil there, but again, even if you can find it, it's going to be expensive. You're going to be paying a lot for that. So it's fine if you're doing a small area, but for top dressing an entire lawn, having it delivered in bulk makes more sense to me. All right, let's see what else, guys. And Wise Guy says, um, Ron, at 10 p.m., you're extending. Yeah, it's, 10, it's actually 11. <laughs> so, well, 10 p.m. where you are, but it's 11, 11 where I am. So, so yeah, all right. Well, guys, I think that's it. I think, I think I've covered it all. We're getting done an hour earlier tonight, which is good, right? I'm not on up until midnight, which is nice because that's kind of late. And I uh, hope you guys got a lot of value out of the show. Got lots of great questions around top dressing, around leveling. Again, the Golf Course Lawn Store is open and live. If you're looking for your fungicides, insecticides, feel free to support us that way. It, it, one of the best things you can do for your lawn as far as having it really pop and have great color and reducing mowing at the same time, especially for shorter cut turf, is to incorporate plant growth regulator. Primo Max is um, in stock. We just got more in stock. We're running kind of low on inventory. We got more in stock, so you guys are covered there. Uh, you know, it incorporates the measuring cup, so you know it's really easy to apply. We've got plenty of videos that are telling you how to get a lot out of this product. And that is all I have, guys. You know, if you guys also are enjoying the products, please feel free to leave a review both of the product and of the store. It really does help me out. And I think that's pretty much it. I really do really appreciate you guys for everything that you guys do. And I will see you all next week. Little funky music to take you out. Get out there and top dress.